Hi everyone. Good evening. Good evening everyone. Am I audible, visible? Yes. Am I perfectly audible and visible to you all? Do let me know in the chat section. I hope I am. So hi everyone, welcome to an academy in English. Do let me know that I am perfectly, whether I'm perfectly audible or, or not. Hi, good evening, good evening, good evening everyone. Welcome to the session, Dharani, Ayanya, Ganeshwari, Sausi. Thank you so much, Sausi, for such wonderful comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Good evening everyone, what's up? How are you people doing? Are you excited for starting the genetics? Yes. Are you all excited to start the genetics? Let's finish one more chapter. Yes, but as we have committed that in 75 days, we are going to finish your syllabus. Syllabus of physics, chemistry and biology. So we are fulfilling that thing, right? We are present every day. Every day we are teaching you. Sometimes you have physics classes, chemistry classes and the biology classes. So after evolution, this is the next chapter that we are going to start and we are going to finish as well. So guys, quickly share the session link with your friends and let them know that ma'am has started the class. So it's time to join the session. What say people? Yes. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for being so regular. Thank you so much for being so enthusiastic. Welcome to the class. Welcome Kiki, Hema Kumar, Raghvi, Prashu, Spandana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today uh, the session will be for 7 hours or for 8 hours. Okay, because it's a lengthy chapter and it is one of the most important chapters and we cannot leave anything, not even a single line from NCERT. Okay, so we have to, we have to be consistent, we have to be focused, right Bache? So open up your NCERT and your notebook, so we will make this chapter very easy for you. What say? Right? So excited? So yeah, I need your 7 to 8 hours. We'll try my best to finish it within 7 hours. But still, still, okay, okay, so let's start the class, Bache. let's start the, the wonderful chapter, right, principles of inheritance and variation. And do you know why do I call it as a wonderful chapter? Because in this particular chapter, if you understand it once, if you know the logic behind the things, okay, then, then there is no need to cram the things again and again. Right. It depends upon your understanding. If your concepts are clear, then you can solve any question of this chapter. Same for the molecular basis, same for the biotechnology. So I really love this. Right. I really, really, really love this chapter. What about you? Do you like this? Yes. Do you love it? Do you love this chapter? I hope you all do. Okay, so let's start the class students, let's start the class, but before that just have a look. So the team Avengers, now you know we have two more members here, uh, oh basically three members, okay. Okay, so we have Pankhudi ma'am, right, she's going to, she is teaching you the botany and you know that she is amazing. We have Yava sir, we have Kala sir for the physics as well. So basically you have duo for all the three subjects and trust me this team is mind blowing. Just imagine one thing students, if on YouTube right where you are paying nothing to us literally you are not even paying a single penny to us right still we are so enthusiastic still we are so dedicated for our work every day we take the classes no matter what like if I give you one example today I traveled for around uh, from last night I'm traveling so basically still today I'm taking your class right why because even we are focused Right, we know that we have committed something and we have to fulfill. So imagine if you will be the part of our batch, how are we going to teach you people? Right, and no doubt, you must be thinking that ma'am on YouTube also, you are providing us the content, right? In our batch also, you are going to provide us the same content. So what is the difference? But there is a, di a difference. See, on YouTube, even if I'm teaching you everything, right? Still that class decorum is not there. Still that, that vibe is not there, right? Still you feel like that something is missing. Right, you might realize it, right? So, but here in this batch, because now you have paid for it. And when we pay for something now, automatically we feel that thing. That no, no, uh, now uh, I have to attend the classes because I have paid for that, right? Even you will be sincere. And moreover, here in this batch, the batch 
the session plan is uh, as per your ncrt of course and the session plan is very smooth okay we have picked up the most important chapters as well right we know the difficulty level we know the concepts that we have to give you so it's not just about the quality content it's also about the right content in this time span because we do not have one year where we can focus on each and everything no no right now we need the smart work students right 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 now we need to focus on the most important things by which we can score right 650 plus marks in our neat examination and this batch is going to be the perfect batch for that right bache you are going to complete your physics chemistry biology syllabus with question practice with doubt sessions right bache regular practice sessions will be there and moreover you can we are we are trying right we are trying so that we will be available for you all the time so you can ask your doubts as well right there will be a personal connect here there will be a personal connect here you are going to talk to us directly for your doubts as well so please be ready because it is a uh, christmas special offer so you people are going to get this batch at a price of 4999 and this is the coupon code that you have to use for this particular batch so i want to see maximum students here in this batch and trust me it is going to boost your need preparation right and you are going to ensure 650 plus marks if you people are consistent enough so tell me are you focused yes are you focused so let's finish the chapter principles of inheritance and variation today and tomorrow at 11 a.m as usual there will be a practice class as well okay so here you can see right just subscribe to my profile go to the free classes even for joining the classes here now you need to use the coupon code ambika 10 okay and here you are going to find my classes fine here you people are going to find my classes as well okay so see you all there so let's start the class and let's start the principles of inheritance and variation and we are strictly going to follow the ncrt with obviously some extra topics as well so guys quickly share the session link with your friends let's make the live viewer strength more than 250 right isn't it so ma'am, you will miss some topics. No, 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 Madhuri, I'm not going to miss anything. We are going to discuss each and everything in detail. Thank you so much, Saucy. Thank you so much. Okay, so share the session link with your friends and let them know that ma'am has started the session and this session is worth watching because in detail we will cover everything. So here you people can see the chapter is principles of inheritance and variation. So the most important thing is Mendelism. Okay, obviously we need to talk about Mr. Mend. You know, the father of genetics. Grieger, John, Mendel. Okay, so firstly, we are going to start with the Mendelism. Mendel's law of inheritance. One question will definitely come from this part. Then, bache, inheritance of one gene, inheritance of two genes, where we will be discussing the crosses. Okay, and today I am going to give you the short tricks as well. That how to check the ratios, right? But it's not always uh, important to cram the things. Sometimes we just need to understand few things. Okay, so that's what we are going to learn here in this particular chapter and then we'll be talking about the post Mendelian inheritance okay firstly Mendel then post Mendelian inheritance the uh, inheritance pattern where Mendel's rules are not followed okay bachi. and after that the sex determination mutation genetic disorder another important topic so here see you can see total six subtopics are there isn't it isn't it how many subtopics are there students how many subtopics are there six right am i right six subtopics are there so definitely from each and every subtopic you can expect one question so your six right your six questions are fixed isn't it isn't it your six questions are fixed for sure you people are going to get six questions so let's start with the introduction and the basic term that we need to understand is that what exactly is the genetics yes so everything that you are watching here no so it is as per ncrt so don't worry about that so minimum six question that's not maximum minimum six questions so don't you think that this chapter is worth giving time what say chetu classy gm ready ramesh Tell me, Leharika. Thank you so much, Pache. Don't you think so? So I want the same energy here because now I'm going to start the class. 
I am going to start the class. So everyone, show that energy here in the chat section, that fire emojis. And share the session link with your friends. And if you're new to our channel, you know what you have to do. Hit the subscribe button. And smash the like button as well. Okay, ready? Chalo. So share the link with your friends as well. Everyone, quickly, just share the session link with your friends right now. Quick. Quick. Okay. So the word is genetics. Okay, so when you talk about the genetics, okay, the principles of inheritance and variation and molecular basis of inheritance, these two chapters we are going to cover. And evolution part we have already covered, right, Bachi? So now you all have seen, if you talk about the do uh, dogs, obviously if you look at their progeny, their next generation, their offsprings, they are going to be the dogs, right? Like the starting part of the NCRT, the introductory part of the NCRT, what that part used to say, like begets like, isn't it? like begets like like elephant is going to give birth to elephants only humans are going to give birth to humans only right snake is going to give birth to snakes only why is it so even if you are talking about the plants right when they are going to form the seeds their seeds are going to right when you are going to grow that seeds right unless or until there is a mutation otherwise it is basically the same plant the same species is there isn't it isn't it that's what we know but why why is it so obviously the answer is hidden here in this word and that is your genetics okay the answer is hidden here in this word mr awkward potato that is genetics so when you talk about the genetics it deals with the inheritance as well as variation of characters see focus on these two words students right it deals with what it deals with the inheritance as as well as variation of the characters from parents to offspring right from parents to offsprings isn't it isn't it so basically these are the two important words that we need to understand and even if you look at the title it's principles of inheritance and variation isn't it so we should know the meaning of inheritance we should know the meaning of variation so basically in this chapter we are going to talk about the rules right that will be followed when characters they pass from parents to the offspring is that clear so inheritance and variation these are our two keywords so now what is written here that what exactly is the inheritance see bache there are two words and many times we confuse these two words isn't it one word is heredity another word is inheritance isn't it we have these two words one word is heredity and another word is neharika it is inheritance so what is heredity heredity is the transmission right what is heredity it is the transmission of yes which it is the transmission of characters from parents to offsprings it is the transmission of characters from parents to offsprings that is what heredity is and now when you talk about the inheritance inheritance is just like a process like in simple words if i have to explain you this like you are saying that i'm going from point a to b okay heredity how are you going like are you using a bicycle or the car or whatever it is right that is something how can you relate it subhashini it is inheritance isn't it pallavi priya vijay it is inheritance i'm repeating this again what am i saying i'm talking about two words we use them many times we use them interchangeably one is heredity another is inheritance so when you people talk about the heredity it is the transmission of characters from parent to offspring the characters they will pass from the parents to the offspring why why do we look like our parents or our grandparents right like in my case i always used to give this example i'm more like my father okay okay and you tell me about yourself people yes lehareka pallavi you are more like your mother father or grandmother grandfather or any other family member yes you also please tell me why why is it so because of these genes you belong to the same family right more you are like your parents right right parents they are getting their genes from their parents so basically that is the same generation that is basically the progeny isn't it that is basically the progeny isn't it so when it is just the transmission of characters from parents to offspring that is the heredity but when you people talk about the inheritance when the word is 
inheritance then what are you going to say that it is the process okay it is even written here it is given in ncrt that it is the yes students what is it what is it it is the process by which characters are passed on from parent to progeny it is the basis of heredity okay that's what you need to remember right that's what you need to remember this is from ncrt so definitely one question can can be framed right so what is inheritance it is actually the process by which by which characters are passed yes but characters are passed from parents to progeny okay from parents to progeny and what is the most important line here that you all need to mark that it is actually the basis of heredity sometimes we miss such lines such points bache and mcqs they come from such lines from such points do you know that do you know that right do you focus on such lines it is the basis of heredity like if someone will ask you what is the basis of heredity you will be blank either you are going to say gene or you are going to say factors am i right am i right varsha subhashini radhika nandini yes vijay kruthika this is what you people are going to say are ma'am uh, in a heredity nahi 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 ma'am nahi ma'am actually the basis of heredity na it is the gene no the basis of heredity is your inheritance the gene is the basic unit of inheritance gene is what it is the basic unit of inheritance so it's all about the language that we need to understand okay ncrt itself is not difficult but we have to understand the language and accordingly we have to answer the question is that clear any doubt yes bachche any doubt so heredity and inheritance clear now the next word is variation see it is written here no next word is what it is variation can you tell me the meaning of variation here yes can you just tell me the meaning of variation here in very simple words what do you understand by variation like leharika is saying differences okay see we belong to same species but still we are not same we have the differences that differences are what that are the variations that degree of difference we are not ditto same we are not identical okay we have the differences that degree of differences is variation that degree of differences is variation everyone everyone just write down it in the chat section very good i like such people i like interactive classes excellent students excellent okay so individual of same species they have some difference and the differences are the differences are known as variation i'm writing it here that individuals of same species they have differences right and that differences are variations clear bachche so if i have to define genetics so what what is it genetics is equals to heredity plus variation and what is inheritance it is the basis of heredity never ever forget this line okay never ever forget this line so genetics is equals to heredity plus variation everyone write it down in the chat section quickly so tell me who is the father of genetics who is the father of genetics i know you know the answer who is the father of genetics but before that tell me who coined the term genetics do you know that who coined the term genetics w watson means william watson watson clear he coined the term genetics so when it comes to the father of genetics we all know the answer we have even studied that in class 10th also isn't it students yes very good excellent so the answer here is yes bachche the answer here is griger john mendel so our mendel uncle he is the father of genetics right 
our Mendel uncle, he is the father of genetics, isn't it? Right Abhanya, right Vijay, right Keetana, Madhushri, yes. So the next point, who is the father of experimental genetics? Please include that in your notes, it's important. Who is the father of experimental genetics? Of course, very simple, that's Thomas Hunt Morgan. Okay, that's Thomas Hunt Morgan. So these names are important. Okay, these names are important. And who's the father of modern genetics? Again, William Webbs. Okay, who is the father of modern genetics? And again, as I said, the name is same, William Webbs. Okay, so please note down. That's important. Then, Bache. So now, if you have to understand the genetics, no doubt I can directly start Mendelism. But before that, I would like to explain few terms. Right? Let's start with some general terms. Right? Some basic terms. That's what we are going to start. Okay, some basic terms and that terms if you will understand them then it will help you out to understand the genetics in a better way so these are terms which are related to what obviously they are related to the genetics clear bache? they are related to the genetics you might have noticed that i have used the word character okay so i'm not going to write it properly like proper definition or something no i will explain it okay and you please listen to me you understand it isn't it? You understand it. You don't focus on, uh, you know, uh, writing it down or something. No, I will share the PDF with you people. I'll provide you the notes. So today, your main focus is to understand the topic and you can highlight everything on your NCRT as well. So very first term is, see, I've used the word character. Isn't it? Can you define this? This is the word that I have used, the character. Can you just try to define it? Yes, what do you understand by the word character? Yes, Neharika, Pallavi, Varsha, Subandhana, Vijay, Harshi, Neet Aspirin. Tell me, what do you understand by this term, the character? Character in journal, in very simple way, it is the feature of an individual. Right, it is the feature of an individual. Now, ma'am, what is the meaning of this thing? That it is the feature of an individual. See, it's very simple. Like even if you talk about the humans, we talk about the height. That person is tall. That person is having short height. Or even in the case of plants, same things we discuss. We talk about in the case of humans, we even talk about the eye color. Right? We even talk, talk about the skin tone. We even talk about the hair color. What are these things? These, are, these things are the characters. These things are the feature of that individual. Okay, they are what? They are the features of that individual. In the case of plants, you can talk about flower color, you can talk about the height, you can talk about flower position. What are they? They are the characters, Priya. Right? These are the features of an individual. Now, if I take the example of height, yes, students, if I take the example of height, as I said, it is a it is what? Yes, Yambache, it is what? Expression, it is the feature. Right? So height is a character. Am I right? Height is a character. Am I right? Now, when you talk about the height, right, what do we say? What do we say? We used to say, let's take it in the case of plants. They are tall. They are dwarf. That's what we used to say. They are tall. They are dwarf. Right? These are the two variants of the character. Understand this thing. These are the two variants of a character, two alternative forms of a character. Right? It's something a detectable variant. Like if I'm using this not tall and dwarf. So these are the variants. These are detectable variants that you can detect, that you can notice. Right? Right? Even if you go to buy some phone or something, we have different variants, no? Right? Related to its storage, sometimes related to the color. Okay. Okay. So height is a height is a character. But when you are saying tall or dwarf, the variants they are. The alternative form of this character they are. And for them, we use the word trait. Many times I have seen students, they don't even understand the meaning and the difference in the word character or the trait. They don't even understand the difference. 
right so character height is a character the feature of an individual and the alternative features they are detectable variant of that feature it is the trait okay the detectable variant of that feature it is the trait is that clear yes everyone is that clear now what we have seen in a population yes but what what do we generally observe in a population like sometimes we used to say let's say there is a population where short people they are too much okay okay if someone will be taller there we will notice that thing immediately isn't it let's say neharika some people are living in a particular area okay see if it is a population are we going to consider the individuals of same species or the different one yes answer my question everyone if if it is about the population then what are we going to consider are we going to consider the individual of same species or the different species those who are saying different one they really need to attend my classes daily right they they really need to attend my classes daily without even missing it for one minute right bachche population the word is population right so when you people talk about the population so you have to consider the individual of same species individual of same species they are living in a particular area right bachche those who are inhabiting a particular area at a particular time they are considered as what they are considered as yes bachche they are considered as the population of that particular area please keep it in your mind students okay please keep it in your mind clear bachche understood yes understood so character the feature of an individual height which is showing the character these two are the alternative forms these two are the variants okay so now why am i giving you the example of the area why am i talking about the population so i want to i want to bring your attention to one thing like i just said that some people they are let's say even if you are talking about the plants right some plants they are maximum plants majority of plants right let's say they are taller okay and the few plants they are dwarf sometimes these are the things that we notice isn't it nandini even if you are talking about the height students right you notice that many people they are taller some people they are smaller they are shorter rather okay even if you are talking about the plants let's say you are looking here and there and you are observing that in the case of pea plant are many flowers are having the violet color but very less number of flowers very less number of plants they are having the white color so what am i trying to say that there are certain characters right or the traits right bachche right bachche when you talk about the characters as i said about the alternate forms like if i am talking about the tallness and dwarfness so i have seen that majority of plants they are tall they are showing that particular character so the character that we see in majority of people right the character that we see in majority of people the character which is it, it this character this trait is actually the dominant one what is it what is it it is going to be the dominant one so what is the meaning of a dominant trait the trait which is expressing itself in that population it is something which is going to express itself it will always mark its presence dominant character and whenever we have to express whenever we have to denote any dominant character or the dominant trait will be the appropriate word here so for that we have to use the capital letter what we need to do we have to use the capital letter okay so now what is recessive which is which is not seen so frequently in that population right right it is not seen so frequently in that population it is not able to express itself too much so let's take the example of a population to understand it in a better way that something which is expressing itself more dominant which is not that is recessive so recessive you will denote with small letter capital letter is used for the dominant trait understood now the next question mark is okay ma'am fine this concept is interesting hai na this concept is interesting ki there is something called character it is having alternative form that is trait and uh, some traits they are very expressive they are dominant some are not they are recessive fine but who is going to control that who is going to control that what is the science behind it what is the thing behind it so now comes a word that is known as gene right and our mendel uncle he used to call it as factors right he didn't use the word gene we will discuss it in mendelism 
right we are going to discuss it in mendelism our mendel uncle he didn't use the word gene rather than he used the word factors and who gave who called these factors as gene jonasson jonasson okay he called these factors as gene he gave this term gene understood understood so what are these genes or the factors what are they they are the basic unit of inheritance what are these students they are the basic unit of inheritance isn't it even if you are talking about the factor or you are talking about the gene they are the basic unit of inheritance they are the one that are controlling these characters character is something that you can see some visible thing like some students were talking about the morphological things morphological appearance right that that's how you were relating it isn't it people and i'm very happy to see that that my students they are capable enough of relating such things right they can observe such things that they are understanding this concept so very good student this one is for you right so any so any emo that you like most you can send it here right it is not for your teacher it is not for our channel right it is for you people tell me very good very good the way you people are answering the way you people are interacting uh, interacting very good excellent i want such type of crowd even if we have lesser number of students but if you are here you are here to learn something new isn't it wow very good excellent quick 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 i want to see you all sending the emo the one you like the most because it is for you people only it is not for me it is for it is for my students okay it is for my students very good so 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 proud excellent okay so if you are new you know what you have to do quickly hit the subscribe button as well now come back to the class so mr jonasson gave the term gene he called these factors as the gene and what i just said that this is the basic unit of inheritance it is something which is going to control the character right bache it is something which is going to control the character clear bache like for an example if i'll give you very simple example here you know that you are going to eat the food that food will be digested isn't it priya darshini dr strange yes bachche isn't it thank you so much madhira thank you so much so you are going to eat the food and that food will be digested in your body who's going to digest that of course enzymes who's going to digest that of course enzymes they are going to digest that particular food okay that's what we know isn't it that's what we know now now same way we know about the character we know that it is a feature of the individual it is something which we will see right but who is going to control that character the gene the gene the gene is responsible for any of the character that we see are you getting this point students yes as i said it is the basic unit of inheritance it is the basic unit of heredity right bachche or for the appearance of a character clear bachche clear bachche for the appearance of a character so this gene is going to control the character okay so now when you talk about this gene this gene is also having the alternative forms okay this gene yes this gene is also having the alternative forms and we used to call it as alleles we used to call it as alleles now students i will explain one concept here you know when uh, mendel started studying all these things at that time these things were not so clear right even many years after the mendel's discovery even many years after the rediscovery of mendel's work many people they were not aware of these things about the chromosome and something so in this chapter we even discuss chromosomal theory of inheritance right that explains us that how these gene and the chromosome their behavior is interrelated isn't it so i'm going to use that example here one thing that we all know that we have 46 chromosomes right it was a question in my class 10th board how many chromosomes are there in human beings 46 chromosomes right 46 but let me tell you honestly in my exam in my final board exam instead of 46 i wrote the 45 there okay imagine imagine this is what i have done 
okay so 46 chromosomes are there right means 23 pairs we have so we discuss it in the form of pairs so we know that here in this pair 23 chromosomes they will be provided by mother 23 by father 23 by mother 23 by father i hope you understand these signs this sign is for the female okay students this sign is for the male clear so basically even our chromosomes are also in pair isn't it even our chromosomes are also in pair right so basically let's say if you have one pair of homologous chromosome one is from as i said mother another is from father so in this so when you talk about these homologous pair of chromosome again i'm mentioning this thing i am explaining some terms which you really need to understand if you actually want to understand genetics but when mendel was studying all that things he was not aware of all that things right right he was not aware of all such things at that time there was no clarity about the chromosomes about uh, about the correlation between gene and chromosomes right are you getting it so if there is a homologous pair of chromosome what is a homologous pair of chromosome having same size having same shape same centromere position same type of genes are there isn't it so basically let's say this is a chromosome and here a gene a is present a gene a is present so but actually the position of gene on a chromosome it is known as locus okay mr dr strange Yes, Bachi Madhushri. So basically, the position of a gene on a chromosome, it is known as locus and loci is the plural here. Loci is what? Loci is the plural here. Understood? Locus is the position of gene on chromosome. Loci is what? It is the plural there. I hope it is clear to you. Now, I am giving you the example of homologous pair of chromosome. I am saying that our chromosomes are in pair. Okay, that chromosomes are going to have the genes okay so if it is a homologous chromosome it will have same gene but the different alternative form of a gene can be there right so from this part this is what you need to understand that basically our genes they are also in pair like you you are going to have it in the form of pair why because our chromosomes are also in pair okay so here if this is a mother's chromosome and here you have the gene a so if you will look at the father's chromosome at the same position on this chromosome at the same locus you will find the same gene it's not like that at this point you will find another gene like b or c or d no no you will find the a only right but as i said that alternative forms of a gene they are known as allele they are known as allele so one thing that you need to know is that gene it exists in pair okay okay so the other important thing is it is something which is going to control the character right and the another important thing is that it is having the alternative forms right alternative forms or you can say that contrasting forms and we used to call it as allele we used to call it as allele as you know right as you know see i took the example of height right height is what a character so i gave two alternate forms here right i wrote two alternative forms here tallness and dwarfness these two were the variants Yes, but Priya, these two are the variants. Height is a character, tallness and dwarfness. These two are the traits. So I told you one is going to be the dominant, another is going to be the recessive. So what is this capital T, small t? But this capital T, small t, they are the alleles. They are the alleles because these are the variant of that gene. These are what? These are the variant of that gene. So height is controlled by gene, right, which is a pair of allele. And when you talk about the individual variants, that is your traits, they are controlled by these alleles. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So what possibility can be there, Subhashini? What possibility can be there? It can be capital T, capital T. Like in this pair, that is also the positively, uh, sorry, that is also the uh, possibility, right? That both are, both are dominant. So now, basically, right see even if you talk about the zygote zygote is having 46 chromosomes in the case of human zygote is also deployed means pair of chromosomes 23 pairs of chromosomes are there so same way right if you look at the gene gene is also present on the chromosome right the position of gene on the chromosome is locus so it is also existing as a pair so whenever you talk about the homologous chromosome right if here it is the a here also you are going to get the a 
it can be capital a it can be small a but definitely here it will be the a only right it is in the pair that's why in this zygote right we say na homozygous dominant homozygous recessive this is the term that we use so what is the meaning of homo yes students what is the meaning of homo homo means same zygous in zygotic condition obviously right in zygotic condition obviously right so homozygous is the word so homozygous dominant right when both are capital t capital t you know that i uh, ayana priya madhushri you people know that if both right if both are capital even if there is single capital capital means dominant trait is going to express itself right even if there is single capital leharika it simply mean that the dominant trait is going to right bachche the dominant trait is going to express itself so homo means same same homozygous means in that zygotic condition both the alleles are same right so if it is small t small t means it is going to be recessive so recessive character is the one which will only express when dominant is absent so basically when both recessives are in pair right they will express this that individual will be that plant will be dwarf and one another condition is capital t small t so capital t small t are they same student yes akankhya are they same of course not so homo is not the word that we are going to write here it is going to be hetero so heterozygous but it is dominant why why heterozygous is always dominant why heterozygous saucy sayed batu prithi why heterozygous is always dominant right because bachche it's very simple hetero means different and even if there is the presence of right one dominant allele definitely the dominant character the dominant trait will express itself that's why the word is heterozygous dominant clear that's why the word is heterozygous dominant understood clear bachche so homozygous heterozygous dominant recessive gene allele is that clear is that clear now the question is how these alleles they form isn't it so when in a gene in any particular gene in different directions when there are mutations you know na mutations the sudden changes we have discussed that in the chapter evolution right we have even covered that in chapter evolution and today also in detail we will discuss about the mutations the mutagens yes which do you remember that yes do you remember that mutation the sudden changes which are responsible for variation crossing over recombination is also responsible for variation and mutations are also responsible for variation so mutation the term is given by hugo de vries i at de vries or i hope you remember so in the gene there will be the mutations there will be the sudden change so in different different mutations occur so they are responsible for the formation of you know some different forms of this particular gene and we used to call it as allele isn't it we used to call it as allele understood understood so gene and allele clear homozygous heterozygous clear i hope it is so just one thing although in chromosomal theory of inheritance i'm going to form that but i can i i know you people make mistake here look at this right it is also a homologous pair of chromosome it is also a homologous pair of chromosome yes bachche sayed right it is also a homologous pair of chromosome it is also a homologous pair of chromosome you can look at the centromere also isn't it you can just look at the centromere also isn't it so let's say here a gene is present right gene a is present let's say both are capital a capital a right in both the chromosome capital a capital a is there so obviously that individual is homozygous dominant let's talk about some another gene let's say here you have capital c here you have small c 
that individual will have this pair right so even this is also the homologous pair of chromosome but after s phase right if you have if you know about the cell cycle and cell division very good otherwise on this channel there is a one shot of cell cycle and cell division available okay i have taken the class on that particular topic okay so here you people can see this is also the homologous pair of chromosome many times you make the mistake but it is after s phase of course right it is after dna duplication so here 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 it will be let's say capital a here also it is capital a because it is just the this dna is just the duplication okay and here 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 also it is capital a now if you are talking about the c this chromosome is having capital c capital c this chromosome is having small c small c okay so do not confuse this part do not confuse this part so after s phase the dna got duplicated isn't it okay okay so this is the homologous pair so these two sister chromatids they are going to have same allele okay so that's what you need to understand please do not make the mistake here so the next term that you need to understand is genotype and the phenotype do you know anything related to this word phenotype and genotype yes phenotype and genotype what is phenotype and what is genotype i'll give you very simple exp, uh, example here ph from this ph you have to remember physical appearance right what you need to remember people you need to remember physical appearance uh, for an example you are looking at a plant right this is a plant that we have so we can just look at this plant and we can say that it is tall or dwarf am i right by just looking at a plant we can simply say that that plant is tall or it is dwarf obviously let's say i am saying that this plant is tall right so i am talking about what i am talking about its physical appearance its morphological appearance isn't it what am i talking what am i discussing bachche it is the external and morphological appearance for a particular character right it is the external and morphological it is the external and morphological appearance for a for the expression of a particular character yes but so it is external and morphological appearance for the expression of a particular character what's that that is the phenotype you are right it is something which we can observe right it is something which we can observe now this is about the phenotype now but i want to say whether this no doubt i know the phenotype i know this plant is tall but what type of tall it is like is it homozygous dominant that's why it is tall is it homozygous dominant or is it heterozygous dominant is it homozygous dominant or is it heterozygous dominant so when we discuss such things that whether it is capital t capital t or capital t small t then we are talking about its genotype then we are talking about what leharika we are talking about its genotype yes you people are right genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism for a particular character right it is the genetic makeup or genetic constitution of an organism for a particular character isn't it for what for a particular character that is what genotype is isn't it that is what a genotype is and students whenever you talk about the phenotype always remember phenotype is the result of genotype okay whatever genotype we have accordingly the phenotype will be and yes and it is also influenced by environment you cannot say that influence uh, environment is having no influence on it no it is also influenced by environment fine so that is what phenotype is understood so these are the few basic terms so can we just recall it then we'll start the proper mendelism 
can we just recall can we just uh, yes can we just revise it so so we started the story with the basic introduction here you people can see we started the story with the genetics so the term genetics was given by the term genetics was given by william wetterson so what is this genetics it is the it is basically heredity plus variation right in simple words what is it it is heredity plus variation so what is the heredity it is the process it is a process of transmission of characters from parents to offsprings right bache and when we talk about the inheritance inheritance is the basis of heredity it is the process of transmission right it is the process heredity is simply in general you are talking about transmission you are saying characters will transfer from parents to offspring that is what that is what inheritance is sorry that is what heredity is but when you talk about the process when you are so specific you are even talking about the process then it is what it is the heredity sorry uh, when it is the process it is the inheritance got it so it is the process by which characters are passed on from parents to progeny got it and what is ramya what is the variation variation is the degree of difference in between the individual of the same species so heredity and variation these two things we have to study here in the genetics and this is general things father of genetics father of experimental genetics father of modern genetics that's what we have covered so so far so we even started the story with the character okay that what exactly is the character what exactly is the trait then we talked about the dominant and the recessive trait then we talked about the gene right and then we talked about the alleles right about the phenotype about the genotype and finally we are going to start the mendelism we are going to talk about the mendel right right so in 1822 right bache right bache in a peasant family was born a boy named john mendel okay the name john mendel clear bache okay and you know that he is the father of genetics so now we are going to talk about mendel's life fine this is what we need to discuss we are going to talk about the mendel's life if you like if you really want to know right obviously you can just check it out and even uh, you know i taught this chapter in parts also there also you can check it is something general like might be you will find it uh, motivational as well that it's not like that that mendel belonged to a very sound family no it was not like that right his family even they were right since his childhood he was he was he was in touch with the nature he was in touch with the nature right so like their family they used to take care of the farm and all so he used to go there he used to observe the things it is also the part of his story and moreover he wanted to be a teacher by then okay but he wasn't able to qualify some exam so he opted the other studies as well right and what's the most beautiful thing about mendel is that at this time at that time at that particular time he mixed up the biology and mathematics okay okay he mixed up the biology and the mathematics that is something really amazing right no one if was no one was capable enough to think about it right they were people were not happy to accept that that we can do something like that okay that we can do something like that that how can someone use uh, mathematics right the statistical approaches in the biology it is not possible so whenever you you have something different no people are going to oppose it right with time when you will prove your point then people will realize okay that is something good or doable fine 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 so that's what you need to understand so in detail if i have to tell you that you know that is how he started his his journey then he went to a monastery right he got the title of that father there also the grieger john mendel the title this is the title he got there he was a priest so you know about it so now directly come to the point right the points from the ncert so grieger mendel he conducted hybridization experiments right so they can even give you the statement based question so you need to uh, the you need to read the ncert line by line okay line by line clear bache so grieger mendel conducted what type of experiments hybridization experiment on garden peas basically your pisum sativum right your pisum sativum and for how many years for 7 years another important thing for mcq was there from this part okay so he from 1856 to 1863 even this year is important bache it's a previous year question 
okay so from 1856 to 1863 he experimented on garden pea right he conducted hybridization experiment and then what he gave he proposed the laws of inheritance and living organism right so it was not a uh, hard work of one year or two years right it was a hard work of seven years for seven years he conducted many experiments and imagine imagine even he used to feel like that i'm a failure i'm not getting good results or something like that right but he kept trying and today you know that right even mendel is not aware of it you never know now mendel now mendel is somewhere here in india right right and he is also learning about mendel and he is thinking yaar why 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 you discovered such things hai yeah, na maybe after his rebirth okay he is in india somewhere in you can consider any part and now he is also reading about mendel and he is like why mendel why why you spoiled our lives hai yeah, na we have to talk about you we have to remember all that laws even this can also happen na this can also happen ha now maybe he is preparing for the neat ki acha and he is hating imagine just imagine it right our imagination is beyond anything na we can imagine anything we can imagine whatever we want you can even imagine that i'm flying here right that i'm a little angel and i'm flying here and i'm writing all the things here imagine whatever you want to imagine but yeah please good imaginations should be there exactly so imagine even he is preparing for need and he is like why yaar why i used to hate genetics who discovered it exactly so imagine for 7 years he worked and he didn't get recognition let me tell you after his death he got the recognition so we use the word posthumously okay means after his death he got the recognition for his work right so maybe he he was also thinking yaar i wasted my life i wasted my years people they don't even understand that how biology and maths they are related people they don't even understand the concept of probability okay so whenever you feel demotivated right it can be because of any subject because of biology physics or chemistry and that i have seen you people don't read biology right you are taking biology as yaar theek hai we'll do it later we'll wake up and we'll do it later in the month of february in the month of march this is what i'm feeling this is this, these are the kind of vibes i'm getting from my uh, channel the sun academy need english ki they are just after physics or chemistry they are not interested in reading biology and let me tell you biology is making 50% of your syllabus okay and you have to revise it properly see i've shared a list here okay see this video i don't know whether you have seen it or not top 50 most important topics of biology do check it out right and if there is something which you are not aware of right and you want me to teach that topic just let me know in the comment section i will make another video for that and tomorrow also i'll be posting one another video that how to complete your syllabus okay how to complete your syllabus theek hai bachche so take biology seriously as well fine so yes let's come back to mendel so see he worked for 7 years but after his death he got the recognition so you can work for right for coming 4 months what do you say hai na what do you say i think this this much you can do for your dream for your neat examination that yes ma'am for upcoming 4 months we can prepare we can give our best right we can give our best what say hai na so you have to stay with me with the same energy till the end right and let's finish this chapter so we were talking about the mendel for 7 years he worked on pisum sativum he uh, conducted many hybridization experiments so you have to remember the year as well and yes one most important point bachche that results were the the results of mendel's experiment they were published in 1865 so do not get confused here he worked from 18 yes which he worked from 1856 to 1863 but his work got published in 1865 okay in 1865 right bachche so so as i said no one was able to understand right no one was able to understand his work and the the main point was that they were not capable enough to understand that how someone can use maths right that how someone can use mathematics in biology and at that time bachche the you know these days publicity is very easy okay it's very easy but by then it was not like that 
okay so he didn't get the proper publicity for his work as well the proper no doubt at that time also he published a paper but it was not in the reach of many 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 people there okay so this is what you need to remember so his work it was not understandable at that time that's why he didn't get the he didn't get the recognition so as saucy saying less communication was there people were not capable enough to understand such things so these are the points right but so three scientists in 1900 three scientists they rediscovered mendel's work you know that three scientists they rediscovered mendel's work the name of that three scientists is carl corinth right uh, your eric von schemach hugo de vries okay carl corinth eric von schemach and hugo de vries so here you can see independently they worked on different different things it's not like that they were working together and then they you know explained it here a r mendel someone mendel was there okay no 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 so carl corens he was experimenting on maize hugo de vries he was experimenting on evening prime rose and eric von schemach he was experimenting on different flowering positions and all of them they came to the same conclusion right they you know when they were uh, working on it when they checked the paper when they checked the literature so they got to know that many years back right a scientist he has given his everything right right and he gave the laws clear bache he gave the laws of inheritance the basic laws of inheritance no vijay there is no code for it you can just revise it very quickly right these are just three simple names you can save your parents or your friends name with uh, uh, names like this or you can right you can just cram it simple fine so that's what you need to remember all the years they are important so what are the reasons for the mendel success let me tell you one very important thing was the selection of the material right literally the selection of the material what see he worked on pea plants right and the characters that he selected now the all the characters they were controlled by obviously by the gene and that genes were located on different chromosomes so he didn't face the issues like you know the linkage or incomplete dominance or co-dominance he didn't face the issues like that right so his selection of material was also good so there are some points that we need to remember so first thing is the statics uh, the statistical analysis right and the mathematical logic were applied uh, applied to the problems in biology that's what he has done and whatever he experiments right he conducted his sampling size was more right it was not like that he conducted the experiment on two to three people or two to three plants and he were like okay, okay these are the laws no his sampling size it was large you need to remember this right the sampling size it was large just say during elections we used to see that exit poll and everything now exit poll and everything now what is that that are that are also the statistical approaches right many news channels they used to say that as per the uh, like uh, in that particular area there are chances that this particular government will come like this why why because they talk to the people there right there are many tests in stat right we have studied that in msc or something okay so basically let's say uh, let's say i i decided that i want to give that exit poll of a particular place okay and i'm talking to two to three people only might be they are obviously they are having they are having their own opinion okay they'll tell me okay this party a will win here so i cannot just simply say okay, okay i talk to three people and they are like party a so obviously the in this entire area party a will win no no obviously i have to increase my sampling size i have to talk many as many as possible right i, I have to talk many people many people as many as possible isn't it the same is the case here so because his sampling size it was large he got the good result yes am i audible Am I audible? I think now it's fine. Is it fine? Okay. So, but basically, his predecessors, okay, they they were also some people, some scientists there. They were also studying the genetics, right? They were also trying to understand this mechanism, but they were working on many characters at a time. So what Mendel did, right? What Mendel did, he studied the inheritance of one or two characters at a time. So Mendel quantitatively analyzed 
the inheritance of these qualitative characters. So he selected few characters, but because of large sampling size, he got better data. So that's why we are saying that he quantitatively analyzed the inheritance of these qualitative characters. Clear, bache? qualitative character so these are the reasons for Mendel's success and as I said the selection of material which is something very important so in the need examination also they can ask you the question from these points they can even ask you that why pea plant why pea plant is better okay so garden pea the pison sativum you can have a look here so it is an annual plant bache. right what type of plant it is what type of plant it is bache Vijay? it is an annual plant with a very short life cycle of two to three months only okay its life cycle is short it is annual its life cycle is short for two to three months right it used to produce so many seeds so many seeds means large number of offsprings can be analyzed within a short period of time is it clear next right it has many contrasting traits so look at the language here right now i hope you know what is the character what is the trait so we are saying the contrasting trait it is having very visible right visible or you can say that very contrasting traits like we can easily see that some uh, you know that most of the pea plants they are having violet color but some of them they are having white color so it is very detectable change okay okay that's why he selected it and then but change natural self-pollination was there in the pea plant pea plant is basically bisexual right for bisexual you know that this is the sign that we use bisexual flower means that it is having the do you remember my trick for bisexual it's b m h right it's b m h so b means bisexual okay m means monoecious b means bisexual m means monoecious h means hermaphrodite okay so bisexual flower means that flower is having both male and the female part so obviously self pollination was possible but still we can use pea plant for the cross pollination also right how can that be done with the help of hybridization uh, in the hybridization experiments this is what we can do like you know that if a flower is bisexual and if we want to promote cross pollination cross pollination is just like arranged marriage what is cross pollination leharika it is just like arranged marriage like parents are saying that even even if you have if you have boyfriend or girlfriend we are not going to approve that right we have selected someone and you have to marry with that person only and here what are we doing in cross pollination we are like bisexual flower it's okay fine you are interested in self pollination but this is not that we want Hana, we are going to kill the male partner so if it is a bisexual flower what will they do emasculation so this term is very important emasculation what is emasculation students what is emasculation it is the removal of male part it is the removal of anther from that bisexual flower right right it is a removal of anther from that bisexual flower the male typical typical bollywood movie right either they are going to thread the heroine that we are going to kill your partner or they are like or they will kill it hey na? you might have seen that bollywood movies the typical bollywood movies okay the very old one of course so emasculation means removal of anther means male partner they are going to kill then there will be the bagging right now let's say this is a pea plant i have removed the anther now i'm going to cover it with the bag why because i don't want even with the air you know that air is also used for the transmission air is also used for the pollination so i don't want that particular stigma to receive any other pollen grain so the bagging will be done so basically if you have to relate it with the uh, bollywood movie so what you can think that parents they have killed the uh, partner and now they have uh, you know they are basically uh, abandoned that female that she is not allowed to go anywhere she has to stay in a room she is not allowed to meet with anyone not even with the friends hey na? Ha, typical moe moe okay then what will they do now they have selected a partner okay and then their marriage their marriage will be there the marriage is arranged already same is the case here so firstly we will do the bagging and uh, uh, then uh, you know we will realize that stigma is mature then what will be done we are going to select the the pea plant the pollen grains of the pea plants that we want right because we want the cross hybridization now so that selected pollen dust it will be sprayed here then obviously you know that for the you you have already read the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants pollen tube will form further mating will be there development will be there right simple as that 
simple as that so this is the this cross this cross pollination or that hybridization experiment i consider them as the arranged marriage forced arranged marriage raki is saying what is hermaphrodite that's what i have mentioned the trick bmh bmh bisexual monoecious hermaphrodite bisexual monoecious hermaphrodite okay done so cross pollination can be performed in it artificially so hybridization can be made possible and pea plant is very easy to cultivate so these are the reasons to select the pea plant understood these are the reasons to select the pea plant so now let's talk about the contrasting character the another famous the another famous question from this part so here you guys can see that steps in the cross pollination it is actually that forced arranged marriage see bisexual flower right removal of anther emasculation favorite question right so see this is the parent plant now it is only having the female part so the pollen grains from the desired plant they will be transferred here further you know that further that process will occur finally the seeds will be there and this is we are, what we are going to see okay okay you know na, in typical bollywood movies even after the forced marriages after some time the female is okay theek hai now this is my destiny right this is my destiny mera pati mera devta hai story over fine so i hope i hope you understood so now let's move to the next part okay so mendel conducted such artificial pollination or the cross pollination experiments using several true breeding pea lines now the important thing that we need to understand here is what is true breeding but it true breeding they are also known as pure lines now what is the meaning of these pure lines see when mendel was conducting the experiment obviously in the progeny of the pea plant he has observed these characters that pea plant is showing very different type of characters right and he he promoted the cross pollination as well even the self pollination now when i'm saying the pure lines right when i'm using the word pure lines or the true breeding I'm i am talking about the homozygous individual i told you this thing very clearly in the starting itself students that right in the starting itself i told you this thing very clearly that what was the, the what was the most important thing for the mendel that he studied the inheritance of one character and two characters at a time right but his predecessors right his predecessors what they used to do they used to study the inheritance of many characters at that time so they didn't get the good result but he got the good results right so basically when it comes to the pure line means homozygous for a particular trait let's say mendel was observing the population of the pea plant he were observing many they were imagine yourself as mendel that you are looking here and there in the field okay you are looking here and there in the field clear bachche clear bachche and uh, what you are seeing that many plants they are tall some are dwarf so you decided that firstly let's you know even he conducted the experiment he grew the seeds and he observed that yeah many are tall but some are also the dwarf so he conducted many self pollination uh, he conducted the self pollination for many generations and he formed the homozygous right jaise let's say if it is about the height so homozygous tall homozygous tall homozygous tall means that will be the genotype capital t capital t so such such plants you are going to call them as pure lines right even the homozygous dwarf small t small t it is also pure line because it is pure for that particular character both the alleles are same okay right right both the alleles are same are you getting it so and a true breeding line is one that that having undergone continuous self pollination right so remember it is because of continuous self pollination not the cross pollination so do not make the mistake here question can come from this part as well right so and it shows the stable trait inheritance and expression for several generations see the language is not so difficult so simply when you are talking about a pure line when you will you know it is the it is formed because of the self pollination and when you will uh, see their generation they will also show the same character right so basically that particular character is stable there you will see it for many generations right so the stable trait inheritance and expression for several generation is that clear is that clear so mendel selected this this is important 14 true breeding pea plant variety what he just said 14 true breeding true breeding pea plant varieties the word is 14 
सी बच्चे फोर्टीन टू ब्रीडिंग मीन सेवन पेयर ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स ही हा सेलेक्टेड राइट सी वाई एम आई सेंग सेवन पेयर ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स ही बेसिकली ही सेलेक्टेड सेवन कैरेक्टर्स राइट ही बेसिकली सेलेक्टेड वॉट ही सेलेक्टेड सेवन कैरेक्टर्स बट ही सेलेक्टेड देअर ऑल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म्स एज वेल लाइक इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट हाइट सो ही सेलेक्टेड द प्लांट्स विच आर प्योरली टॉल एंड विच आर प्योरली डॉफ एज वेल right which are homozygous tall and homozygous dwarf as well so obviously he selected seven characters but if in terms of trait i have to define it so what will i say 14 traits right this is the language of ncert you people make mistake here that's why i'm telling you seven characters or you can say that seven characters he has selected right but he selected the contrasting characters contrasting characters means 14 traits right 14 traits are you getting this right are you getting this so just look at this particular table it is something very beautiful right please take the screenshot as well so these are the seven characters he selected right so seven characters or you can say that seven pair right seven pairs he has selected seven pairs of contrasting trait this contrasting character this is the word that you can use or you can simply say 14 14 yes traits okay seven characters 14 traits that's what you need to know fine so the difference between character and trait should be clear so he selected the stem height the flower color the flower position pod shape pod color seed shape seed color so even in the paper they can even ask you that among the seven selected characters of the mandel how many characters were based on the color how many characters were based on the shape so you even need to remember that okay you even need to remember that so stem height flower color flower position pod shape pod color flower color flower position okay so these are the seven characters and he selected their alternative forms right so if it is the height tall and dwarf so here you can see capital letter is showing the dominant trait small letter is showing the recessive trait so flower color which flower color is dominant even it can be asked as the mcq violet which is recessive white which flower position the dominant trait exile the recessive is the the recessive is the terminal okay the pod shape inflated right inflated means like this constricted means like this okay and you know that we have noticed the the inflated pod shape okay okay pod color is green which is dominant recessive is yellow seed shape is round seed shape is wrinkled seed color is yellow which is dominant and recessive is green so do not get confused with the seed color and the pod color that's a request okay and here you people can also see the chromosome number that's important so see the characters that he has selected they were present on different chromosome so that's why he didn't uh, face the issues like incomplete dominance co dominance or pleiotropy or this and that okay okay so you should remember the chromosome numbers as well bachche so stem height chromosome number 4 flower color chromosome number 1 flower position 4 so basically 1 4 5 and 7 these four chromosomes they were containing all the seven characters these chromosomes they were containing all the seven characters clear bachche so this is your homework you have to remember it are you ready right i challenge you people to remember this yes i challenge you people to remember this are you people ready tell me tell me tell me tell me quick yes bachche because it is the dominant one anita it is the dominant one ah that acha you are asking about the letter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter nandini
what are you talking are you talking about the letter that doesn't matter right it is just to show you here even if you want to write it like small b that's fine that's simply okay okay they have used the letters here so see this is from ncrt i hope it is clear to you all right so here you can see the dominant as the recessive trait so is it okay done okay so now what's the next part so obviously now we are going to talk about the crosses so firstly we need to know about the punnett square okay i know you people will be thinking that when are you going to get the break so let's finish the mendelian inheritance or some post mendelian inheritance part then we will go for the break right so next chapter is going to be very easy because now you know the basic terms you know what was there in mendel's head you know mendel used the word factors he didn't use the word gene right and i'll tell you about the crosses and on the basis of crosses he observed things he brought some conclusions and on the basis of that conclusion he gave the laws fine he gave the laws clear so before that we need to understand the punnett square okay see bachche punnett square it was developed by a british geneticist reginald c punnett another important mcq clear another important mcq and let me tell you students thank you vijay let me tell you students right see if you will attend this lecture after this lecture you just need to read the ncrt even i am going to see these lines are from ncrt we will read ncrt here in this lecture as well all i need is your support okay all i need is your support fine so be regular be consistent be enthusiastic don't worry you will get breaks in middle okay but let's revise it and the points that i have highlighted please please make the short notes as well i know i'll share the pdf with you people but if you will make short notes that will be very good for your revision okay every time you revise a chapter it can be anything even for the physics or chemistry also whenever you revise something now always write make it a habit okay make it a habit that you are also writing things with uh, things to okay because that will be good for your revision you retain more in that way like let's say now i'm teaching you this you can just note down the name of the genetics uh, genet uh, geneticist fine fine you can you revise it fine so punnett square you know about that square now that we used to draw this square i'm talking about okay so what is this it is the punnett square it was developed by british genet uh, geneticist clear bachche so what is this actually it is a graphical representation it is the graphical representation to calculate what the probability the probability of all the possible genotypes of of, of an offspring in a genetic cross fine in a genetic cross so the possible gametes are written on two sides usually the top row and the left column usually the top row and the left column and bachche all possible combinations they are represented in these boxes below in the squares which generates a square output form so it is from ncert this language is from mr oxytocin it is from ncert so we need to understand that okay so read this line again which i read this line again all possible combinations they are represented in boxes below in the squares which generates a square output form right square output form so pay attention please pay attention here that is the that is the punnett square so let's start the story with the mono hybrid cross okay let's start the story with the mono hybrid cross okay then i will tell you about the conclusion and then about the laws then there will be a break so the word is mono hybrid cross so first of all we know about the pure lines isn't it yes ma'am we all know about the we all know about the pure lines pure lines means homozygous for a trait right so firstly mendel form pure lines okay so when it is a mono hybrid cross mono means a single single okay so here right we are going to select the two parent plants which are having same character but only one character it varies means let's say let's say you are taking you are taking two parents right you are taking two parents okay they they are having same character same flower position same flower color same pod shape everything is same but they are just they are just different they, they just have one character different okay they just have one character different yes vijay it is the inheritance of one character that we are studying 
right what are we studying bache it is the inheritance of one character so when we study the inheritance of one character we we'll, we are going to draw some conclusions and that that conclusions are going to explain that conclusions are going to explain the law of dominance as well as law of segregation clear bache so in mono hybrid cross when you are taking two parents plant they are all same the only difference is the only difference is that they they will just vary right they they just have one different character right right so like here the height is different but when you are starting it bache see you are going to start with the pure lines so that is homozygous tall another parent is homozygous dwarf so this is p1 means parent generation so now bache i told you about the punnett square in general no doubt during first generation we do not make the punnett square we simply write it ki are this is what we are going to get but it let's say if there is any you know new student or any student that belongs to that is in class 11th so that's why i'm showing it see basically what is going to happen students always remember this thing when you talk about the parents and then you show the next generation ultimately you know that it's all about the sexual reproduction isn't it isn't it kruthika leharika yes bache it's all about the sexual reproduction right so during sexual reproduction firstly the gamete formation will be there and that gametes they form they fuse during fertilization and then the zygote is going to grow right so whenever you talk about these crosses even the mono hybrid the di hybrid the tri hybrid right in general because we know that thing right that's why we simply write that okay capital d capital d small t small t so f1 will be sorry yes so f1 will be this right f1 matlab first filial generation it is given in ncert na it is first filial generation what is f1 students it is first filial generation you are talking about the first generation here so no doubt when you know you are going to hybridize when you are going to cross homozygous tall homozygous a dwarf you will get heterozygous dominant but how you can for this also you can draw the punnett square so on one side you have to write the gametes of one parent on another side you have to write the gametes of another parent so this is what you people are going to get right this is what you people are going to get so all are going to be in f1 generation all are tall so this tallness is what it is the phenotype so if i'm writing all are heterozygous dominant i'm talking about the genotype what am i talking bachche i'm talking about the genotype and then what mendel did he right for the second generation he hybridized he has done the selfing that is the language which is written in ncert na the selfing of f1 generation right priya darshini the selfing of f1 generation means the hybridization of f1 individual so f1 individual they are having a genotype of this right capital t small t capital t small t now we have to we have to show the show we have to show all the possible genotypes and you know that for showing all the possible genotypes for to check that probability what are we going to do bache we will draw the punnett square right what are we going to do madhushree we are going to draw the punnett square right so no doubt now this parent which gametes will be there capital t small t and this parent is also going to give us capital t small t as of now in a very simple way you are writing it right but in the di hybrid cross you people get confused that how to uh, you know how to make that gametes so i will tell you right when we will start the law of segregation as of now is it clear is it clear so the selfing of f1 generation is there right the hybridization of f1 individual is there okay now one more thing right you know that on one side there will be the one parents gamete on another side there will be another parents gamete but let me tell you right so it is just like that see this is vertical this is horizontal isn't it so horizontally you write male gametes right horizontally we write male gametes and vertically we write female gametes clear bache clear bache understood understood so now or check all the possible genotypes so here it is going to be yes bache capital t capital t here it is going to be capital t small t here it is going to be capital t small t here it is going to be small t small t these are the possible genotypes these are the possible genotypes so first of all let's talk about the phenotype here let's talk about the phenotype here as per phenotype 
what are we going to get we will we'll get tall plant this one is also tall this one is also tall this one is dwarf isn't it so can i say that three tall one dwarf that's why the ratio here is three is to one okay and when you are talking about the genotype right students when you people are talking about the genotype so just look at the genotype one is homozygous tall two are heterozygous tall one is homozygous dwarf so it is going to be one is two two is to one phenotypic ratio of the mono hybrid cross three is to one the genotypic ratio of mono has a mono hybrid cross is one is two two is to one is that clear it's one is two two is to one right this is what he checked he conducted the experiment he observed these things right he checked all the progeny he applied the statistical approach and that's the conclusion right that's the conclusion of that approach are you getting my point that is the that is the conclusion of that particular cross understood sure yes kirti are you sure about it right so on the basis of this cross he gave some postulates and that postulate explains the law this is what we need to discuss now right so this part clear are you sure about it do you have the clarity of the mono hybrid cross do you have the clarity of the punnett square do you have the clarity of the ratios yes bachche are you sure fine one is to two is to one all clear na all clear so now uh, i hope you all know about it it's very simple mathematical approach a is equals to b whole square is equals to a square plus b square plus 2ab right even in that uh, uh hardy wingwer equilibrium we discussed that na p plus q whole square is equals to p square plus q square plus 2pq remember this remember this this is that binomial expression or what what is it tell me what is it right so if you look at it capital t capital t two allele it is showing the pair capital t capital t small t small t right and when we say when we say that 2 pq or 2 ab we are talking about this heterozygous tall see it is the line written there na all the possible combination are represented in boxes below in the squares which generates a square output form which generates a square output form form so that's what i am trying to explain here understood okay so this is as per ncrt just quick revision of this theory part like right let's have a quick revision of this theory part bachche are you ready for this samiksha and bachche number of likes they are quite less please like the video as well like the video as well and you know that if you are new you what you have to do you have to subscribe our channel okay done so see this is what written in the ncrt let us take the example of one such hybridization carried out by mandel right bachche he collected seeds produced as a result of this cross grew them to generate plants of the first hybrid generation means f1 first filial generation he observed that all the f1 plants they were tall like one of its parent none were dwarf okay he made similar observation for other pairs of traits as well he found that f1 is always resembled either one of the parents right bachche f1 is always resembling either one of the parent right and that the trait of other parent was not seen in them so in general even when i was in school this is what i used to ask my teacher that why do we always consider f2 hai na hai na yes or no yes or no even i used to ask my teacher that why is it so why do we take the ratio of the f2 generation why can't we take the ratio of the f1 generation because whenever we see the f1 generation we always see that it is showing us one of the parent character isn't it it used to show us one of the parent character isn't it right we are only we we, we can only see one right one of the characters from that parents but when we take the ratio of f2 in f2 whenever we consider the second filial generation we even see the we even see the character of another parent just to make sure that so basically it's not like that that mendel was aware of it no he took many experiments he got failed many times and then he drew that con conclusion right that we should take the f2 ratio because in f2 ra ratio if if 
other parent is also having another trait that will be expressed there right and after it he he gave that things right the dominant or the recessive character part okay the dominant and the recessive character part but why are you here today in my class why you people are here in my class thank you hsp sir welcome to the session hi sir long time no see so why are you here in this particular class everyone say hi to hsp sir he is such a sincere teacher he is such a lovable teacher he loves chemistry no doubt va wow, see sir very good guys very good very good very good okay so my question is that why are you here to attend this class do you are saying to learn to do this to do that no there are many teachers who are teaching genetics right but why are you here because you trust me you know that ambika ma'am is going to teach us in a very simple way or in a in a very interesting way or she is going to make our ncert easy right that is the confidence that you people are having isn't it that is the confidence that you people are showing me that yes ma'am we trust you we know about you we know our ma'am is here she is going to support us isn't it so basically the point here is bache the point here is why am i telling you this i am not here just to read the ncert whenever it comes to ncert reading teachers they explain like they are like this is the line this is the meaning it's not english to hindi translation it's actually you need to understand the meaning of that particular line the particular paragraph here in this chapter right when you talk about this particular chapter in this particular chapter even in evolution even in biomolecules the language given is little complicated or you know the chapter that is jumbled it is not clearly present there right it is not just like that in a very easy way in a very smooth flow they are explaining you the things no no thank you so much vardhan bachche the things are mixed so i am here to make your ncert easy and interesting as well right you should understand the hidden meanings also ncert you have to you should know how to decode it right you people should know how to decode it clear bachche so you have to pick up each and every line very wisely when you read the ncert whenever you read the ncert please stop multitasking right do not do that multitasking thing like you are watching tv and you are just reading your ncert no you are using your phone you are scrolling something and you are reading your ncert no whenever you read ncert please sit in an isolated room please do not do anything else right please read each and every line properly right and consider yourself as an examiner that you people are the examiner you know what type of question can come in paper and if you will be the examiner what kind of question you guys are going to ask in that way you will master your ncert vijay if music helps then go for it i'll suggest instrumental music okay so now see now for you it is something very ordinary that f1 always re resembled either one of the parents but sometimes right when we get such lines in our questions we are not able to decode it so understand this okay okay so the trait of other parent it was not seen in them this is what mendel observed so mendel that's why he self pollinated f1 plants to check whether in f2 generation he is getting the second parent trait or not but and he got it right so the proportion of plants that were dwarf it was 1 by 4th okay that is only 25% isn't it and the f2 plants uh, while 3/4 of the f2 plants they were tall okay 7 isn't it 75% they were tall 25% they were dwarf okay so this is about the phenotype if you talk about the genotype how are you going to consider that right that homozygous tall is 1 by 4 isn't it isn't it your homo heterozygous tall is 1 by 2 your homozygous dwarf is 1 by 4 like this isn't it like this because here you are having po four possible genotypes the four zygotes here okay so that's how you check the probability fine so similar so see the tall dwarf traits were identical to their parental type they did not show any blending blending means mixing that is all the offsprings were either tall they were dwarf right this is what he observed tall or dwarf i told you na he was lucky as well the characters he selected they were located on different chromosomes right bachche right bachche that's why he didn't experience things like incomplete dominance okay okay so that's why he said that gene the alleles 
right he used the use uh, he used the word factor so he simply said that these traits they are not showing the blending right they are not showing the mixing okay all the offsprings were either tall or dwarf none were of in between height so similar results were obtained with the other traits that he studied so only only one of the parental trait was expressed in f1 while at f2 both the traits were expressed that's why bache we go for the f2 generations ratio so the contrasting traits did not show any blending either at f1 or f2 so i can ask i can frame assertion and reason type of question from such statements if i'll be the examiner vardhan i'll be asking assertion and reason based question from such terms right from uh, from such such lines here so see what are they saying the contrasting traits they are not showing even true and false kind of questions can also come they are not showing any blending at either at f1 or at the f2 understood everyone understood everyone thank you so much bacha thank you vardhan right so please highlight this line so this is the conclusion of the mono hybrid cross fine this is the conclusion that based on these observation mendel proposed that something was being stably passed down that there is something right there is something which is stably which is stable right see he used the word factors so can i say that that he is saying factors are stable yes this is what i'm asking you people yes indu because he used the term factors so can i say that he said factors are stable factors are stable so based on these observation mendel proposed that something was being stably passed down it is unchanged unchanged focus on each and every word factors they are stable they are unchanged from parents to offsprings through the gametes over successive generation like one after another right they these these stable things they will pass from one generation to another and they are unchanged that's what mendel has used this is your ncrt language okay so he called these things as factors so now we call them as genes you know why because jonathan gave the term gene jonathan gave the term gave the term gene so genes are the units of inheritance they are what they are the units of inheritance so they contain the information which is required to express a particular trait is it clear kruthika vijay leharika sayed guys quickly answer it so he called it as factor but now we know it as genes who gave the term gene jonathan so these genes are responsible for controlling the characters these genes are responsible for controlling a particular trait in an organism so genes which code for a pair of contrasting traits they are known as alleles genes that are going to code for a pair of contrasting traits they are known as alleles they are slightly different forms of the same gene so what is an allele it is a slightly different form of same gene which is formed due to mutation so they are in pair so they code for the pair of contrasting traits right so whenever you get confused here in this language remember the example of high tallness dwarfness capital t small t that is the allele understood understood so as i said on the basis of this mono hybrid cross he gave on the basis of these conclusion he gave the laws so firstly let's talk about the law of dominance so characters are controlled by discrete units called factors why are we using the word discrete discrete you know na what is the meaning of discrete yes bache samiksha indu vijay akankhya what is the meaning of discrete what is the meaning of discrete different separate distinct hai na jyotika means separate means distinct isn't it that is the meaning of discrete so characters are controlled by discrete units the separate unit called factors why are we using the word discrete you must be thinking it is not given in ncert why are you using it in ncert it is clearly written that these stable things they are not showing blending something is not showing mixing means they are different but they are present in a pair right so that's why we are saying characters are controlled by discrete unit called factors these factors they occur in pairs and next is in a dissimilar pair of factors means if one is capital d another is small t one member of the pair dominant that is the dominant one and another is the recessive so that's how he explained the law of dominance so law of dominance is used to explain the expression of only one of the parental character in mono hybrid cross because in mono hybrid cross in f1 generation it was heterozygous dominant 
so basically what are we saying in law of dominance that factors they will occur in pair they are the discrete units right right so whenever that pair it is having different factors the one is going to express itself and the one which expresses itself it is the dominant one so in the presence of dominant the recessive will not express clear which clear which so for seeing both the so both the alleles they'll give their expression in f2 okay f2 this is the law of dominance next is the law of segregation bache which is also known as the law of purity of gametes okay it is also known as the law of purity of gametes but before that let me tell you law of dominance it is not universally acceptable what is the meaning of being universally acceptable means it is having an exception right so we will discuss that exceptions after this mendelian inheritance like you will be talking about co dominance okay we will be talking about incomplete dominance especially the incomplete dominance right that explains this fine so there are the exceptions for this law as well there are the exceptions for this law as well now when you move to the law of segregation as i said it is also known as law of purity of gametes what is the law of segregation everyone yes write it down in the chat section what is the law of segregation it is the law of purity of gametes and let me tell you it is a it is the universal law right it is always it will be always followed okay right universal law it is always acceptable right like because of mutations whenever we will see disjunction right disjunction is kind of exception and disjunction is not something normal it is basically because of the mutations right so it is the law of purity of gametes now in simple words firstly let me explain you that so obviously bachche this is the case that we have you can take capital t capital t also you can take capital t small t you can take small t small t whatever it is i told you whatever we are discussing it is related to sexual reproduction it is related to sexual reproduction by then also people they were aware that that variations right they are because of that sexual reproduction this is what they have observed that this variation kind of thing it is related to the sexual reproduction okay so now you know that when it is the sexual reproduction there will be the gamete formation right even if i related with the chromosomes you know that 46 after meiosis 1 two haploid cells having 23 23 chromosomes after meiosis that after that there will be meiosis 2 there will be four haploid cells having 23 23 23 23, 23 chromosomes that's what we know that's what we know so basically when there is a gamete formation you know that from that pair also the chromosomes they get separated so let's say if this is the chromosome right we will discuss it further but i'm explaining you this thing here because i want you people to understand law of segregation i'm repeating this point again ramesh ramesh ashish i'm repeating this point again right by that time right people were not aware of this they were not capable enough to understand this chromosome part they were not capable enough to compare this gene and chromosome part right but now just to make this law clear just to make this concept clear i'm taking the help of these chromosome in chromosomal theory of inheritance radhika we will understand right we will draw the comparison then we will understand it okay but as of now it is like that so you know that even after meiosis these cells 23 23 chromosomes so now when you consider this pair i gave you the example no let's say it is going to have capital c it is going to have small c so this is a homologous pair so when right bachche after meiosis 1 you know na in meiosis 1 what used to what is going to happen in meiosis 1 you know na firstly in the metaphase 1 the bivalent is going to arrange itself on that equatorial plate on that metaphasic plate and in the anaphase and in the anaphase there is the separation right in the anaphase there is the separation of this bivalent do you remember this part 
If not, do check my cell cycle and cell revision one shot. Yes, this is going to happen in anaphase 1. This is the story of metaphase 1. This is the story of anaphase 1. So basically in anaphase 1, what is happening students? The bivalent is getting separated. It is also a previous year question. Bivalent is getting separated means this one is having capital A, this one is having small a. So basically can I say that the factors are getting separated? Yes, bache. These factors are getting separated. That pair of factor, right? We have the pair of genes, no? Pair of genes or you can say that pair of factors, right? It is getting separated, yes or no? No, Madhushri, it is not the separation of chromatid. It is the separation of bivalent. The separation of chromatid is in anaphase 2. It is just the separation of the bivalent and the alleles from that pair is getting separated. The pair of factor is it is getting separated. That's what I'm trying to say. So basically, basically what am I... Uh, what am I saying here that whenever there is the gamete formation right even in terms of in terms of chromosome also I have explained this part to you okay you have studied cell cycle and cell division so basically I'm saying that during gamete formation right that during gamete formation the alleles from this pair of allele right sorry the allele from this pair the alleles from this pair they will get separated isn't it they will get separated randomly they will get separated independently they will get separated isn't it tell me isn't it yes or no so the so if i have to use this language so during the gamete formation unit factors you can also use the term gene you can also use the word factor it's fine it's fine the unit factors of a pair they will randomly segregate right they segregate randomly right there is no favoritism here randomly they will get separated from each other now you are talking about only one pair okay they will segregate randomly and transfer inside different gametes isn't it and they will transfer inside different gametes isn't it isn't it so during gamete formation, unit factors of a pair, they segregate randomly and transfer inside different gametes. Okay? Okay? Yes or no? Yes or no? So can I say that, that each gamete, focus here, bache, right? All these things were properly written on that slide. Right now, you please understand. You please understand the each and every step here. So each gamete receive only one allele for that particular character can i say so each gamete receive yes bache each gamete receives only one right only one allele or only one factor of a gene can i say that only one factor of a pair rather each gamete receives only one factor of a pair right like if you will be having two gametes here one will have capital T, another will have small t. It is not possible at all that the same gamete is receiving capital T and small t. You cannot write it like this, that this is a gamete and you are showing that it is having same alleles. No, even this is also not the case. Okay, it's not like that capital T, small t cannot exist. No, basically the alleles of the same character, the alleles from that pair, they will not pass to the same gamete, never ever never ever okay each gamete receives only one factor of a pair right and that is why right students that is why Are. so gametes are pure right because they are receiving only one allele for a particular character so gametes they are yes but you saw see the gametes they are pure for a particular trait okay they are pure for a particular trait understood yes understood so 
gametes during gamete formation the alleles from this pair of genes they will segregate randomly randomly they will pass to the different different gametes right so each gamete is going to receive only one allele for a particular trait the gamete is not going to receive right both the allele or both the factor of a particular trait it is never ever possible it is never ever possible this is the law of segregation which is always acceptable right and when i'm using the word non disjunction you know now jaise we even talk about the trisomy 21 down syndrome that one extra copy of chromosome 21 why because during separation of that chromosome something happened mutation occurred right because of that that chromosome was not able to segregate properly such things can occur which is very rare abnormal right but otherwise this law of segregation is always applicable it is the universal law fine fine so now see if you are talking about the gametes if you are talking about the gametes what is the possibility that we can have a b c d so let's say which possibility do we have which gamete is possible which gamete is possible yes only the c1 why why only c because it is having only one allele for a particular trait it is not repeating anything if it is capital a okay fine capital b but 2c not possible 2 like both the alleles not possible this is not possible understood so gametes are pure isn't it so remember this line gametes are pure for a particular trait right if it is having capital t either it will have capital t or small t right so if it is having capital t means that gamete is only for the tallness if it is having small t it is only for the dwarfness so they 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 are not showing any blending or uh, sorry they are not having any other right they cannot have the another allele of that pair of that particular pair okay so you can again related with that chromosome so if the from that pair of homologous chromosome if when they are getting separated you cannot say that this pair will pass together to the same gamete no no we will discuss the chromosomal behavior as well so just let's see here so as per this law again it is ncrt alleles do not show any blending means mixing and that both the characters are recovered as such in f2 so this particular postulate is also studied here in law of segregation okay thank you vardhan this particular uh, this particular trait uh, this particular character is also studied here in uh, this uh, law of segregation so do not confuse it okay do not confuse it so the, the alleles do not show any blending yes bachche what is written here what is written here alleles do not show any blending they do not show any mixing and both the characters they are, re are re uh, recovered as such in f2 though one of these is not seen at that the advanced stage okay clear bachche clear bachche so though the parents contain two alleles during gamete formation the the alleles of that pair they segregate from each other means separate from each other such that gamete receives only one of the two factors right out of that two factors only one will be received by gamete now this language is easy now this language is easy okay so of course a homozygous parent produce all the gametes that are similar while a heterozygous one produces two kind of gametes means if it is capital t capital t all the gametes are going to same b is going to be same right all the gametes are going to have capital t capital t so if it is capital t small t the two different type of gametes will form then bachche but they are having each having one allele with equal proportion understood yes bachche tell me what is the doubt because next thing that we need to start is dihybrid cross okay and that will explain law of 
uh, independent assortment and trust me after that now we'll move like this will be very 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 fast okay will be very 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 fast so okay ashish yadav is saying something here okay that message is raised very good anji what's your doubt so do you have any doubt from law of dominance do you have any doubt from law of segregation so she is asking about the co dominance and incomplete dominance but we are not following exactly the ncrt uh, ncrt pattern here let me finish tie hybrid cross and law of independent assortment right and then bache we will uh, discuss it in that proper flow okay ashish yadav is saying ambika ma'am you are a very good teacher thank you bache but why are you uh, asking for the girlfriend here it's an educational uh, i won't say the platform is educational but yeah you know that a class is going on like you are that desperate are you that desperate ashish you are asking for the charity and charity of what a girlfriend seriously grow up grow up now how to calculate the percentage of offsprings having a particular trait see kumar jadav yaha uh, okay here i can give you two things see there are two cases let's say if they have given you the progeny let's say total 1000 individuals are there and they have given you a certain number that 600 are having this trait 400 are having this trait then in that way you can calculate but when you talk about this punnett square right you are taking mono hybrid cross in mono hybrid cross four zygotes are there four zygotes four genotypes are possible so accordingly you calculate that's why you take it as 1 by 4 1 by uh, right 1 by 4 1 by 2 that's what we have done no that's what we have done na right so why 1 by 4 mono hybrid cross four zygotes are possible that's why when you will consider di hybrid cross you will consider talk about 16 zygotes they are possible so whatever uh, you know whatever uh, uh, whenever you want to check that uh, particular genotype or the phenotype then you will go by 1 by 16 or something okay it's like that okay chalo so now let's move to the di hybrid cross so di hybrid cross means inheritance of two genes right what are we studying now it is the inheritance of two genes so what is the meaning of this now we will consider two characters at a time means we will consider the parents we will consider the parent generation like one parent right we will consider the one parent and that one parent right that one parent see let's say you have male and female here they are all same but they have two different characters like here round color round sorry round seed shape yellow color wrinkled seed shape green color right yes or no yes or no so basically you are going to consider what are you going to consider here what are you going to consider here are the inheritance of two genes right the inheritance of two genes at a time right inheritance of two genes at a time so when we are talking about the di hybrid cross we are considering the parents which are having same traits but they they are different from each other uh, because two because of two contrasting traits okay 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 done see bache uh bache i'll tomorrow i will share one strategy video about the biology revision follow that video right and trust me you will revise biology and you you will revise biology properly if you will follow that video and then you can you will surely you are surely going to get 350 plus marks okay so that i will share tomorrow so there is no need to spam here fine so di hybrid cross so what are we going to consider round yellow so firstly right this is what we have noticed whenever we talk about the uh, mendel's crosses now so we know that when we start we start with the homozygous parents right how do we start we always start with the homozygous parent so capital r is showing the dominant character so you are taking the p plant here so round seed shape rr is showing 
round seed shape it is homozygous dominant and yy is showing yellow seed color isn't it it is showing yellow seed color and here it is wrinkled and green here what is it it is wrinkled and green are you getting it so one thing that you need to understand here is right that whenever you take homozygous dominant and recessive parent this is what students you need to understand Somyadeep, Kruthika, Ayana, Nandini, Vardhan, whenever you consider homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive parents, always in F1 generation, always in F1 generation, you will get heterozygous dominant. What are you going to get? You are going to get heterozygous dominant. Right? What are you people going to get? You people are going to get heterozygous dominant. Is that clear? is that clear yes so sometimes now students what they do let's say if this is your one parent and this is your another parent so in that case you cannot say that look at the genotype look at the genotype so in that case it is not like that that f1 generation will show you the heterozygous dominant only no in that case you have to make the gametes you have to draw the punnett square then you can tell about that Right, then you can tell about the F1 generation, isn't it? But whenever it is, whenever it is homozygous, right, homozygous and the, see, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, then in F1 generation, it is always going to be what? It is always going to be the heterozygous dominant. Got it? Right? So now next question is how to make the gametes because uh, we most of the time students they make mistake here they don't know how to make the gametes and to understand that keep one thing in your mind that is your law of purity of gamete right that is the law of purity of gametes means your law of segregation so as per this law we have understood one thing that even if you are talking about the inheritance of two genes or you are talking about the inheritance of three genes or even the inheritance of 20 genes 30 genes the gamete is not going to have this is not the possibility in the gamete this is not at all the possibility in the gamete the gamete is always going to have two different right the, the gamete is always going to have yes but one allele for a particular character it is never going to have the pair right it is never going to have that pair okay exactly so this is what you need to remember so we can go for the fork method right so you can write down capital r you can write down small r and as per the law of aggregation of gamete uh, law of segregation of gametes what i just said yes when it comes to the law of segregation of gametes right what i just said that the alleles from that pair of gene they will segregate randomly they will pass to different gametes they will segregate randomly they are not affecting each other segregation they are not saying that you have to stay with me they are like you go to your way i'll go to mine okay 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 so capital r small r because you are talking about this parent so always remember homozygous dominant homozygous recessive heterozygous dominant now you are going to talk about the f2 generation right and how are we going to get it when we are going to do the selfing of f1 generation so we have to make the gametes so here you can see the fork method so this capital r can go with capital y also this capital r can go with small y i'll teach you the law of independent assortment you will understand it in a better way here also capital r here also small small y because in gametes you are going to get only one allele for a particular character so here it will be capital r capital y here it will be capital r small y here it will be small r capital y small r small y these are the gametes that we are going to get from that heterozygous dominant parent okay because it is a dihybrid cross so each parent will give four gametes and i'll teach you the formula for it right let's finish the dihybrid cross then i will teach you many formulas right and then there will be no need to cram these ratios there will be no need to cram the number of gametes number of zygote you'll easily you'll easily solve it clear so this is the fork method so you will write capital r small r separately why because same gamete cannot have the both right then capital r can go with capital y also this is the possibility with small y also this is the possibility small r can also go with capital y small r can also go with small y so one parent is going to form these gametes 
right now another parent because both the parents are having same right both the parents are having same genotype so gametes are also going to be same isn't it gametes are also going to be same so let's draw the punnett square here and let's discuss it See, just have a look. Okay, so capital R, capital Y, capital R, capital Y. This is what we are going to get here. Capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. Please everyone, please everyone draw the, draw the Punnett square. And please, you can also tell me if I am making the mistake, Nandini. Okay, please check it carefully and do let me know even if I am making the mistake. Okay. So remember law of purity of gametes. What do we need to remember? We need to remember the law of purity of gametes which is saying that one gamete will have only one allele for a particular character. Right? For a particular character. Understood? See? That's what we have. So let's talk about their genotype. Right. Let's talk about their genotype. So very first thing is here it is going to be round yellow. Of course. Here it is going to be round yellow. Right. Here also it is going to be round yellow. I'm talking about the phenotype not the genotype here. Right. Here also capital R is there capital Y is there round yellow. So for round yellow I'm writing it in short form. Here also round yellow. Here also round yellow, but here capital R is for round, but two small y's are there, means green color, right? Here again round yellow, here again round and green, R, G, means round and green, okay? Here also round yellow, round yellow, but here it is capital, small r, small r, means wrinkled, but it is capital Y, capital Y, so it will be yellow, wrinkled yellow, and here it will be again wrinkled yellow here it will be round yellow here it will be round green here it will be wrinkled yellow isn't it and here it will be wrinkled green this is going to be the phenotype right it is going to be the phenotype right yes or no yes or no Yes or no? This is the Punnett square, right? How many zygotes are there? 16. 16. So look at the round yellow part. Right? Look at the round yellow part. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Isn't it? 9. Yes or no? Yes or no? So 9 are, let me write it here. 9 are round yellow right nine are round yellow and now see round green one round green two round green three they are going to be round green this is the dihybrid cross ratio next see round yellow okay Ah, this is uh, uh, this is what we have already counted okay wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow so three are wrinkled and yellow and we know right total how many zygotes are there 16 one is going to be your round green okay so whenever you check the ratios or something right or the uh, probability 9 by 16 because total 16 zygotes are there okay 3 by 16 that's why it is written like this right when you check the percentage or everything so that's why we used to say the ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so that's the phenotypic ratio it is not the genotypic ratio of course it is the phenotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross so it doesn't mean that whenever you will see the cross having the 
two genes or right you always say the ratio is going to be nine is to three is to one no whenever you hybridize heterozygous dominants right whenever you hybridize two heterozygous dominant then you used to get the ratio nine is to three is to one like if let's say if someone will give me this right i am not going to solve this cross literally if this is the case if this is the case that i am going to get right if this is the final this is the question i am going to get i am not going to solve it in my final neat paper i know this is heterozygous dominant this is also heterozygous dominant their ratio is going to be this only if there is no special case if there is no linkage nothing is there so this is going to be the ratio i am not going to draw it again or going to calculate it are you getting it right so round yellow round green wrinkled yellow wrinkled green so now what you people can observe from these ratios okay then we will understand further things i'll tell you how to calculate the genotypic ratio as well but firstly tell me up to this part all clear yes arush varma ayana krutika abhinya up to this part all clear see that's the beauty of genetics you are going to trust me you are going to love this what are you what can you conclude from this particular uh, ratios what do you people can conclude be quick please whatever you know do do let me know please whatever you people know do let me know see the very first thing i can observe here that when i when i was talking about the parents parents were round yellow or wrinkled green right parents were round yellow or wrinkled green isn't it round yellow and wrinkled green but but here i am observing some new combinations also new combi new combinations means the non parental one new combinations means the non parental one right they are not like parents round yellow round green wrinkled yellow okay 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 wrinkled green na here i need to write down thank you thank you okay got your point ha huh. so what i have observed that here parents combination were round yellow wrinkled green but new combinations were also there non parental one like this one it is the non parental one right it is the non parental one isn't it nandini isn't it that's what i have observed and moreover how can we i check the ratios how can i check the ratios right let's say if i am taking the mono hybrid one i know in the mono hybrid cross 3 is to 1 is the phenotypic ratio that's what i know in the mono hybrid cross 3 is to 1 is the phenotypic ratio so let's consider the inheritance of only round seed shape so 9 plus 3 round round right 3 plus 1 they are wrinkled 9 plus 3 means 9 plus 3 means 12 isn't it it's 12 And three plus one means four. So twelve is to four is also three is to one. Simple mathematics, right? How can I check my ratio is correct or not? I can relate it with the mono hybrid cross. Mono hybrid cross is saying, Havanya, that we have to consider only one character. We are considering only inheritance of only one character. So when we look at this part, Havanya, when we look at this part, right here, we can simply say, like, let's talk about the seed shape only. Total twelve individuals are round. Four individuals are wrinkled. Twelve is to four is the ratio. It is also three is to one. Same is for the color. How many are yellow? Nine plus three, twelve. How many are green? Four. So you got the ratio. This is how you can check as well. This is how you can check as well. So now we have to understand this law. So when he studied the inheritance of two characters, he observed one thing. Right on the basis of this conclusion, what Mendel said that, okay, when we consider the inheritance of two genes. we are going to say that inheritance of inheritance of one gene is not affecting the inheritance of another in very simple way i'm going to explain you the genetics today let's not make it complicated let's make it very 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 easy right students are you ready for it yes are you people ready for it let's make it very 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 easy 
What say? Let's make it very, 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 very easy. Okay? Done? So basically, as per this, Mendel observed that inheritance of one gene is not affecting the inheritance of another. Means at the time of gamete formation, this capital R small r or basically this R gene is not going to affect Y's in, uh, uh, inheritance. It is not going to say that capital R will not say capital Y you have to stay with me only. We are meant to live together. We love each other. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Are you getting it? Capital R can go with capital Y also. It can go with small y also. So again, again, this is also independently. The assortment here, the segregation here is also independent. One gene is not going to affect the segregation of another gene. One gene is not going to control the segregation of another gene. This is the meaning of independent assortment. Now, if you are thinking that, ma'am, how this is different from the law of segregation of gametes. So, in law of, sorry, law of segregation, we discuss, no doubt, we also discuss, remember the NCRT part here, that, uh, you know, the genes, they are not, alleles, they are not, yeah, factors, they are not showing blending and we will get right it uh, we will get the another trait as such in f2 this is also we discussed there but when we talk about the law of segregation we say that from that pair of gene both the alleles they will randomly segregate right we are saying that when you are talking about only a single gene their alleles will not pass together to same gamete they will pass to two different gametes they are not affecting each other segregation but here here we are saying that we have considered two different genes what we have considered students we have considered two different genes and we are saying the segregation and separation of one gene is not affecting the segregation of another okay capital r is not affecting the segregation of y or simply the round seed shape is not affecting the segregation of ya yeah, seed shape is not affecting the se segregation of the seed color understood seed shape is not affecting the segregation of seed color this is what mendel is saying we know that we will discuss linkage linkage wherever linkage is there independent assortment is not fulfilled okay we will understand why right when i'll teach you the linkage i'll teach you why is it so but this is what the conclusion is, this is what given in the NCRT also. So, this law states that, that when two pairs of a trait, two pairs of a trait are combined in a hybrid. See, look at the language. I hope now language is easy for you, all of you. Right? So, this law states that when two pairs of a trait, they are combined in a hybrid, the segregation of one pair of character the segregation means the separation of one pair of character is independent of the other pair of character right right the seed shape is not going to affect the seed color segregation it is all independent right it is all independent so this is also not universally acceptable Ye universally accepted okay it is not universally accepted clear bache? Okay, so linkage is an exception to this law, right? The linkage, the phenomena of linkage is an exception to this law. Understood? This is the law of independent assortment. Okay, this is the law of independent assortment. Done, bache. So now I'll tell you about the formulas. So draw a table. Everyone, please draw a table. I'll give you the formulas to make it easy. Okay? Yes, Bache? Please make this table. Let's make it very easy. Please 
write down segregating gene pairs write that how many gene pairs they are segregating okay how many gene pairs they are segregating so here we'll be talking about the mono hybrid the dihybrid hybrid wait the di hybrid and the tri hybrid okay and the tri hybrid and here you can simply write one n n is that number of pairs that are segregating it can be one mono hybrid two right accordingly accordingly we will discuss it okay okay then number of phenotypic class number of phenotypic class and here we will be talking about the phenotypic ratio number of genotypic class mm, genotypic ratio And number of zygotes or number of progeny okay or simply you can say that number of square and checkerboard it is also telling us about the number of progeny also Done, bache. Is it clear? It's one n, it's two n. Genotypic classes is three n, and this one is the four n. And here it should be three is to one n. Here it should be one is to two is to one n. That's all. I'll make it easy. Trust me. First of all, draw it. I'll make it very, very, very easy. And after finishing it, na bache, there will be a break, and then we will start test cross and post Mendelian inheritance. Okay? After this table, now there will be a break. Fine, you can have your dinner break, and then we will continue. So done. If you are done, do let me know. If you people are done, do let me know. fine okay so bache here i am going to teach you the product rule what am i going to teach you the product rule it is applicable when you are you know uh, taking such inheritance patterns like uh, uh, when you are uh, hybridizing two heterozygous dominants okay okay for the f2 basically we count the uh, we check the ratio na so whenever you are crossing the heterozygous dominant you can apply the product rule see it's very simple it's literally very simple when you people talk about the mono hybrid cross first of all let's take the example of the phenotypic ratio right let's take the example of what let's take the example of the phenotypic ratio okay and i told you that if you want to check the number of phenotypic ratio i gave you one formula right i gave you one formula right so it is going to be 2 is to n n means number of character and here we know that that is 1 here we know that that is 1 means 2 2 phenotypic ratios are possible 2 phenotypes are possible is it clear this is a formula 2 raised to power n is telling us about the number of phenotypic classes it is telling us about what it is telling us about the number of phenotypic classes that is 2 raised to power n so n is equals to 1 why because we are talking about the inheritance of only one character so basically two phenotypes are possible so you already know that in the mono hybrid cross it's 3 is to 1 like 3 are tall 1 is dwarf so tell me how many how many phenotypes are possible here 2 how many phenotypes are possible here? Two. Now, let's move to the genotypic ratio. Number of genotypic classes. 
Yes, Mache. When we talk about the number of genotypic classes, right, the formula is 3n, 3 raised to power n. It is 3n, 3 raised to power n. n is again equals to 1. Means 3 genotypes are possible. Yes or no? 3 genotypes are possible. And you know that in monohybrid crops, that's what we have. We have homozygous tall. Right, we have homozygous tall. We have homozygous dwarf. And we have heterozygous tall. How many genotypes are possible? How many genotypes are possible? We have three possible genotypes. And that's the ratio that we have. Is it understood? So 2n is telling us about the number of phenotypic classes. 3n is telling us about the number of genotypic classes. Right? You can check the number of genotype as well. Now, the product rule. What we need to learn? The product rule. Product rule means we are talking about the multiplication here. What are we discussing? Yes, Bache, what are we discussing? Bache, Arush Verma, Jesse, you are talking about the color of a person, right? It's a good thing. But you are talking about polygenic inheritance. Here we are discussing the Mendelism, in general Mendelism, when we do not have, you know, such post-Mendelian things. Okay, Arush? Okay, so product rule means multiplication. So when that, again, I'm repeating this, the case is two parents, two individuals are heterozygous dominant. So let's say the product rule, I'll tell you what is that product rule. Now let's say, let's talk about the dihybrid cross. Dihybrid cross means we are talking about the inheritance of how many genes? Yes, dihybrid cross means we are talking about the inheritance of how many genes? Students, please revert. Yes, everyone, please revert. We are talking about the inheritance of, we are talking about the inheritance of, two genes uh, exactly so number of phenotypic classes will be 2 raised to power n means 4 number of genotypic classes 3 raised to power n means 27 okay oh sorry it's not 3 it's 2 my bad it's not 3 it's 2 means 9 Number of genotypic classes means they are 9. They are 9. So now what is the product rule here? Product rule means you are going to multiply it. Remember for the phenotypic ratios, this is what I mentioned. N, that number of genes that we have selected. So 3 is to 1, multiply it with 3 is to 1. And see, I'll use another slide so that you will see it clearly. So it will be 3 is to 1 multiply by 3 is to 1. And here genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 multiply by 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is the product rule. This is the product rule. So see it is simple mathematics. It is simple multiplication. 3 3 is a 9. 3 1 is a 3. 3 1 is a 3. 1 1 is a 1. So you got this ratio without cramming. Okay, without making all that cross, without making all that square box, right, you got it. This is the product rule, right. So, whenever two individuals, they are heterozygous dominant, they are crossing accordingly, you can check it. So, now let's say, let's say in the final paper, examiner is like, yeah, I, I am going to waste their time and they will give you try hybrid cross. They will say that two parents, they are heterozygous dominant, right, the, and there is the inheritance of three genes. What will be the phenotypic ratio? So there is no need to cram. There is no need to cram. It will be 3 is 2, right? It will be 3 is to 1 n. So how are you going to do this? You know the dihybrid cross ratio. You already know that basically it is like this now. 3 is to 1, multiply it with 3 is to 1, multiply it with 3 is to 1. Right, three times you have to multiply. So you already know that when you multiply them two times, it is going to be this. It is going to be this. So you multiply it with three is to one. So what will you get? Let's solve this. And 
and you can even check this is the ratio no need to cram right no need to cram and you know their number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so eight different phenotypes are possible krutika eight different phenotypes are possible right how many phenotypes are possible eight different phenotypes are possible and you know we have formula for this too isn't it now come to this genotypic ratio So even if you are confused with the mathematics, you can just pause the video and you can do it by your own. That is for the dihybrid cross, right? That is for the dihybrid cross and same you can even check for the trihybrid tri cross. That's what you have to do. You just need to multiply it all together. And as I said, do not mix it with polygenic inheritance or something. It is normal Mendelian inheritance as of now that we are discussing. Okay. Okay. So here you can see, I hope now you got this, this table, right? So it is 3 is to 1. It is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And please let me know the ratio of trihybrid cross. We just calculated it. We just calculated it. Do let me know the ratio of trihybrid cross. So it was 27, yes, you can even check it students, you can even check it, that is going to be the ratio. So number of phenotypic ratios, here it is 2, right, okay, oh, sorry, sorry, this is the number of, uh, okay, wait, the phenotypic ratio and So I hope now it is clear to you all. Okay, so it is 3 is to 1 raised to power n and it was 2 raised to power n. Fine. So 2 raised to power n means 2 raised to 1, 2. 2 raised to n means 2. It's 4. So see 4 different phenotypes are possible. Here it is 2 raised to power 3. So basically 8 different phenotypes are possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Clear? Is it clear? So now you understand this and now see number of squares in checkerboard or number of progeny. So here it is 4 raised to power n, n is equals to 1. So 4, 4 squares we have in, in that Punnett square. Then 4 raised to power 2, 4 into 4, 16. So when it will be a trihybrid cross, 4 raised to power 3. So it is going to be the 64. It is going to be the 64. Understood? Right, and here 3 raised to power 1, 3 phenotypes. 3 raised to power 2, 9 genotypes are possible. 3 raised to power 3, 27 genotypes are possible, not the phenotypes. So you know the ratios here. Here it is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Here you have to calculate and you can fill it up. Okay, so is it clear? So you liked it? Tell me quickly. You liked it? Tell me quickly. So the next topic that we need to start is test cross, right? So let's start it after break. Or can we continue for another next uh, another 10 minutes? I just need 10 minutes to finish it. So can we continue it for another 10 minutes or uh, do you want to continue it after class? Sorry, after break. Thank you, Saucy. Chalo, I'll give you the break. You're nice people, na? so I'll give you the break. So it's the break time. So break time till 9.15 p.m. Okay, so see you then. Fine. Okay.
Hi everyone. So can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. So can we start the class? Are you people ready? Yes. Are you all ready to start the class? Okay, so share the session link with your friends and tell them that ma'am has started the class and let's start with the back cross. Okay, so I know you, uh, I know this back cross is not given in NCRT, but yeah, this test cross is given. So I'll uh, share all the important uh, information related to the test cross mainly. Okay, and this is a very, very, very simple topic. So let's start. So, see, uh, the word here is back cross. What is the word here? The word here is, it is back cross. What is it students? What is it? Yes, bache, it is back cross. So here, what are we going to discuss? That basically, what is the meaning of a back cross? That the F1 individuals, means individuals of F1 generation, we are going to hybridize them with the parents, with one of the parent, okay? Right, back cross. That's why you are saying it has back cross. That the individuals of F1 generation they'll be crossed with one of the parent. Okay. Now, which when it is the out cross, okay. When it is the out cross, then in that case, what will be done? That the F1 individual means the individual of F1 generation. Okay, the individual of F1 generation will be crossed with okay with the dog with one of the parent right with one of the parent and that parent should be obviously that parent should be dominant one that parent should be the dominant one is that clear so in general what is the meaning of back cross yes students yes bache vijay yes bache amidi pallavi nandini what is the meaning of back cross right f1 individuals with are crossed with any of their parents okay okay and here the f1 individual that f1 individual is heterozygous basically is it is crossed with one of it is crossed with the dominant parent right do not mention one of the parent you can simply write down with dominant parent is that clear with dominant parent is that clear yes everyone is that clear that is the out cross now what is the test cross in the test cross test cross is also the example of back cross here f1 individual is crossed with right homozygous recessive parent that is the condition for a test cross right and it is the part of our syllabus and we have to discuss it in detail so let's quickly revise it Varun. let's quickly revise it priya so back cross means the f1 individual they will be crossed with any of their parent okay now when it is the out cross right so in the out cross basically what is going to happen the f1 individual they will be crossed with the dominant parent okay it will be crossed with the dominant parent and now when you are talking about the test cross the f1 individual is crossed with the homozygous recessive parent right f1 individual is crossed with the homozygous recessive parent now what is the use of this test cross let's talk about it okay what is the use of the test cross let's talk about it but see, this test cross is used to identify the unknown genotype let me explain this it is used to identify the unknown genotype the word is genotype here it is not phenotype the word is genotype here it is used to check what it is used to check the unknown genotype so now my question is how see it is a condition in the F, uh, test cross that f1 individual will always be crossed with homozygous recessive parent homozygous recessive parent means this is going to be the case right you can take any of the letter yes you can take any of the letter homozygous recessive parent means priya this is going to be the case am i right Yes, Pallavi, Priya, Neet, Aspirin, Kevin. Am I right? So now whenever you cross any individual with the homozygous recessive parent, if that individual, right, if that individual is having dominant allele, definitely the dominant allele will express itself because here it is homozygous recessive. I'll give you one example. Now let's see. When you look at this plant, okay, I'll tell you how come unknown genotype. See, when you look at a plant, can you just tell me that whether that plant is tall or dwarf? 
यस सुभाषिनी केवन वरुण निहारिका गुरु पल्लवी टेल मी क्विकली कैन यू जस्ट टेल मी वेन यू लुक एट अ प्लांट कैन यू जस्ट टेल मी दैट दिस प्लांट इज टॉल और ड्वाफ येस और नो इवन यू कैन टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द फ्लावर कलर येस इवन यू पीपल कैन टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द फ्लावर कलर राइट लाइक लेट से बाई लुकिंग एट अ फ्लावर कलर यू कैन टेल मी वॉट इज द कलर यू कैन टेल मी अबाउट द हाइट एज वेल इजेंट इट isn't it so basically when you look at this plant you can see one thing the phenotype the tall so if the plant is tall there are two possibilities isn't it there are two possibilities isn't it it can be homozygous tall it can be heterozygous tall am i right it can be homozygous tall and it can be heterozygous tall these are the two possibilities yes bachche these are the two possibilities yes or no guys quickly tell me i want the same energy I want the same energy. We have to. We have to finish this chapter today. Yes, obviously it is possible, right? Obviously it is possible. So by looking at the phenotype, we can guess. Okay, okay, this can be the genotype or that can be the genotype. But we want to confirm that, and to confirm that, we will go for the test cross because here there is one condition that F1 individual will is crossed with homozygous recessive parent. So obviously we are having two cases, isn't it? How many cases do we have here? We have two cases. Let's say just consider that unknown genotype is. Let's consider. like in the mathematics we used to say na let's assume x let's assume y like this so same way let's assume that unknown genotype is capital t capital t now you have to cross it with small t small t so just draw the punnett square yes bachche just draw the punnett square so you know what are you going to get wait yes what are you going to get see this if you are crossing the homozygous dominant parent with the homozygous homozygous uh, dominant f1 individual with the homozygous recessive parent this is going to be the possibility that all are tall yes all are tall means all are dominant okay all are tall means all are showing the dominant character now the another another possibility is capital t small t small t small t right capital t small t small t small t so now just look at it so what are you going to get you will see when when unknown genotype is heterozygous dominant the ratio of test cross is 1 is to 1 isn't it it is 1 is to 1 like 50% are showing the dominant trait that is tall 50% are showing the recessive trait that is dwarf so obviously that's why the ratio is 1 is to 1 that is why the ratio is 1 is to One clear, bache. So I'm repeating this part again. Test cross is what? Test cross is the example of a back cross. What is the meaning of back cross? Back cross means the F1 individual they are crossed with any of their parent. Back cross, right? F1 generation with their parents. Back cross. Now the word is yes, bache. Now what is the next word here? It is the out cross. So when it is the out cross, the F1 individual they will be crossed with. They will be crossed with dominant parent. And when it is the test cross, F1 individual is crossed with homozygous recessive parent. so we use this cross to figure out unknown genotype many times students they do not understand that ma'am if the genotype is unknown why do you consider these two cases it's very simple it's very simple when you look at right when you people when you people look at the plant you can tell the phenotype and on the basis of that phenotype right on the basis of that phenotype you people can say you people can assume the genotype and obviously when you are going to cross it with homozygous recessive parent you will check the result and accordingly you can tell on the basis of ratios you can tell right you can tell about the homozygous recessive and the uh, you can tell about the unknown genotype right bachche so here just look at it look at it i just saw that plant is tall so i assumed that there are two possibilities so case 1 homozygous dominant case 2 heterozygous dominant so when i looked at the case 
right so i considered that unknown genotype is capital t capital t because this condition is constant as it is a test cross so that's what i got all are taught so if in the right after this cross if you are getting the result where all the individuals are showing the dominant character it simply means right but it simply means that that unknown genotype is homozygous dominant so if it is the 50 50 percent story one is to one is the case then it means unknown genotype is heterozygous dominant anyone having any doubt here yes but anyone having any doubt here anyone having any doubt here sure 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 are you sure okay so what about the test cross uh, what about the test cross ratio in dihybrid hybrid cross yes what about the test cross ratio in dihybrid hybrid cross so see in the dihybrid hybrid cross if this uh, uh, this is the best example that you all know if this is the case always remember even in the paper even in the neat examination they can give you these genotypes so there is no use of wasting your time you can simply when this is the case one is heterozygous dominant another is homozygous recessive the ratio is going to be this when there is the independent assortment right 25% 25% 25% 25% 25 this is going to be the ratio clear bache so test cross and dihybrid cross so when it is the heterozygous dominant with homozygous recessive parent the ratio, ratio is going to be the ratio is going to be 1 is 2 1 is 2 1 is to 1 25 percent 25 percent 25 percent 25 percent clear is it clear sure 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 and even if you are confused you can simply see now what will be the possible gametes here these are going to be the possible gametes here these are going to be the possible gamete here and here only r y here only r y so so it is going to be r r y or y 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 simple it is simple this is what you are going to get that's why i'm saying the ratio is 1 is 2 1 is 2 1 is 2 1 understood understood no but are you straight dr strange what why are you asking about the formula formula one thing is clear heterozygous dominant parent with homozygous recessive if it's mono hybrid cross one is to one if it is di hybrid one is to one is to one is to one what else are you ex expecting here right it is as simple as that this is the test cross ratio and here phenotype and genotypes are going to be same clear understood understood you can even check the diagrammatic illustration from your yes but you can even check the diagrammatic illustration from your ncrt fine okay okay so one is the reciprocal cross as well i don't know whether you know about it or not reciprocal okay means opposite see it's a very simple cross see let's say there is a cross you are considering a as male you are considering b as female okay this a is having let's say the genotype r or r or let's say this is having genotype r or r like whatever you want to consider clear bache or let's say let's take it for the homozygous okay so let's say male is capital r capital r female is small r small r so now when it is the reciprocal cross reciprocal means means what are you going to do here now it is one cross where your male is capital r capital r your female is small r small r now in the reciprocal cross you will consider the same cross but now the male will be considered as female here a will be female and b will be male right so it means female is now earlier female was rr now female is capital r capital r and male is going to be small r small r that is the reciprocal cross that's it that's all okay that's it that's all right bache right bache is that clear is that clear clear so when it is the so now you must be thinking that what is the use of reciprocal cross see if reciprocal cross is about the autosomes you know no autosomes 
do you know autosomes normal body chromosomes like we have 22 pairs of chromosomes right sorry 23 pairs of chromosomes right so out of that 22 pairs are normal body chromosomes they are the autosomes and that one pair is of and that one pair is of sex chromosomes so that sex chromosomes are also known as allosomes clear bache they are also known as allosomes is that clear sure sure so if you are talking about the inheritance of the genes which are present on autosomes then the reciprocal cross is not going to show any change okay whatever is the ratio here the ratio is going to be same here but if if it is related to this to the sex chromosome then definitely there will be the change in the ratio okay there will be the change in the ratio clear bache? so next topic is the gene interaction and you can simply call it as post mendelian inheritance what is it students next is the post mendelian inheritance now what is the meaning of post mendelian inheritance see you know that wendell has given us the rule generally that rules are applicable right generally yes bache vijay niharika generally that rules are applicable we know about that rules right that law of dominance the law of segregation law of independent assortment now what happened as i said i'm repeating this point again students i already told you this and i'm again repeating it so you know that you know it very 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 well right you people know it very well that right uh, that Mendel was also lucky because whatever character he selected they were located on different chromosomes isn't it whatever characters he selected they were located on different chromosomes they were not on same chromosome so he didn't get the uh, phenomena like linkage or the, the something related to pleiotropy in that regard he was lucky but actually he was not you know that he spent seven years right so if you work hard for something you know literally if you work hard for something now if you give your best sometimes luck also favor okay right then hard work and luck both are going to favor you so even if you have last four months for your neat examination but if you still think that yes you can crack it and you want to give your best trust me even your luck is going to favor you right it's never about 100 percent luck it's never about uh, like uh, it, it varies right the hard work and the luck part it varies Sometimes it is 70% hard work, 30% luck. Sometimes it is 50% hard work, 50% luck. Anything can happen. But basically what you have to do? Hard work and your smart work. It is the most important thing. Very rarely it is 50-50. Very rarely it is 50-50. It's like, let's say, today your luck is going to favor you 10%. Right? But for that you have to prepare 90%. Now, you have to prepare 90%. Let's say today is your lucky day. Your luck is going to favor you 10% okay but you have to work hard for 90 percent then 90 plus 10 will be 100 right let's say if you have worked for 70 percent and 10 percent of your luck is also favoring it is of no use fine it is of no use so be ready right be ready if you are feeling demotivated we will check the video lecture later right we we cannot we cannot revise this chapter we'll check it later no no today is the day only right think it like this Today is the day when you can finish the principles of inheritance and variation. There is no tomorrow for this chapter. Take it in this way. Okay? Fine. So now post-Mendelian inheritance means after Mendel, the another ways by which you know gene interact and the phenomena where you know that they, they the phenomena which do not follow the mendel's right mendel's ratio that's what we are going to cover and we'll be very quick here okay i'm going to be very quick here so the first thing is which allelic interaction which is also known as intragenic interaction so first of all understand the meaning here what i just said allelic interaction that how two alleles are interacting right how two alleles are interacting let's say if it is capital r and small r how are they interacting with each other right so basically when it is the allelic interaction guys so in allelic two alleles are interacting how are they interacting are they are they suppressing each other's expression are they complementing each other's expression what is the scenario then it is the, it will come under the allelic interaction so allele means within a gene right allele means within a gene because gene is the pair of alleles no 
so that's why we also call it as intragenic interaction intra means within within a gene how the two alleles are interacting right within a gene how the two alleles are interacting that is the point here now what's the second point here bache the second point here is non allelic interaction right non allelic here it is like two alleles they, they are of two different genes when you talk about the intergenic interaction you're talking about the two alleles of different genes so inter means inter means in between isn't it what is the meaning of inter inter means in between right students inter means in between so two different genes how are they interacting that is going to be the point here two genes how are they interacting so here you will con consider the examples of let's say you are saying that how this capital okay how this gene is affecting the expression of this gene yeah how are they interacting right so intragenic intergenic word clear so now when you talk about the allelic interaction again i'm repeating students please note down it is also known as intragenic interaction it is also known as intragenic interaction so here what do you have students we'll be talking about the incomplete dominance the co-dominance multiple alleles and pleiotropic genes what are we going to discuss here we are going to talk about the incomplete dominance the co-dominance multiple alleles and the pleiotropy and even lethal genes also right we even discuss about the lethal genes clear bache clear bache so that's what we need to cover now are you ready for it guys yes are you people ready for it tell me quickly are you people ready for it okay so see one thing see this is explaining everything incomplete dominance co-dominance firstly let's start from this part and trust me the most important thing here is your uh, examples okay examples are the most important thing incomplete dominance what is the word incomplete dominance but it is explaining everything means dominance is not complete means an allele is not able to express itself totally dominance is not complete isn't it see normally what is the case if rr is the dominant character for red color this rr is for white color right red flowers white flowers so i am saying this rr is dominant okay so generally this is what we used to say now in general as per mendel here f1 should f1 should also be red yes or no pallavi let's speed up this is something very easy let's speed up and then move to the next topic that is chromosomal theory of inheritance then chromosomal theory of linkage the concept of linkage we have to understand in detail so guys please speed up speed up speed up right so you are going to get your next break after linkage fine after linkage you will get your next break and then after that we'll start the mutation pedigree analysis sex determination disorders okay okay fine fine so capital r capital r is red isn't it small r small r is white so if i have to follow the mendelian inheritance that used to say that f1 should be red f1 should be red but we we notice that sometimes this f1 when it is r r it is pink it is neither it's showing white nor it's showing red it's pink right what is it it's pink right <coughs> so means red is not able to express itself fully red is not able to express itself fully now let's take the f2 generation to confirm that thing let's take the ratio of f2 generation let's look at that f2 generation part so but when we look at the f2 generation part these are the gametes that we are going to have these are the gametes that we are going to have so capital r capital r red capital r small r capital r small r means pink small r small r is red isn't it here red flower color when it is in heterozygous condition it is giving pink color and when it is in homozygous recessive condition then it is giving the white color so look at this 
cross carefully students so when you look at it and when you compare the phenotypic and the genotypic ratio just look at it and just check phenotypic and genotypic ratio it is same it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 and here also it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 right so it is not following the mendel inheritance the mendelian inheritance isn't it bache isn't it bache yes 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 means 1 means red 2 means pink 1 means white here homozygous red heterozygous pink homozygous white it is so phenotypic and the genotypic ratio is same so as i said what is more important here the examples you should know about the examples of these incomplete dominants right even like here uh, for these interactions now one should know about the examples that are the most important part okay so examples so you know that you can consider the example of mirabilis jalepa what is mirabilis jalepa anyone what is mirabilis jalepa it is four o'clock plant right that is four o'clock plant <coughs> what is it four o'clock plant why do we call it as four o'clock plant because it it flowers late around like it flowers late in the evening near about 4 pm that's why okay that is why it is the four o'clock plant okay so we have another example of snapdragon <coughs> we have another example of snapdragon that is your dog flower right that is your antirenum majus fine here also pink color is there right here also pink color is there understood understood next example is of size of starch grain in pea plant very important right this example is very important size of starch grain in pea plant now see if you are going to hybridize the the starch grain having large size the starch grain having small size you will get you will get intermediate one you will get intermediate one right the size of f1 generation will be intermediate is that clear and other than that one more example is there that is the feather color in fowl yes that is andalusian fowl okay the feather color there got it so examples are important and i'll tell you why is it so right i'll even tell you why why is it so so the next bache next allelic interaction is codominance next one is what students yes tell me it is codominance so bache co means together what is the meaning of co co means together together and dominance is the word means two alleles are simultaneously expressing isn't it what is the meaning here bache what is the meaning here two alleles are simultaneously expressing themselves yes the best example right the best way to understand it is again examples and the best example is of blood group yes bache the best example is of blood group ab right you know not this blood group universal recipient even my blood group is ab positive so it's universal recipient this is the best example okay now listen to one story you know there is one scientist whose name is karl landsteiner he is the one who discovered the abo blood grouping system okay he is the one who discovered what who discovered the abo blood grouping system okay okay and his students d castello and sturley then uh, like in some articles now the sturley name is written differently but i have read it from one book so it is d castello and sturley his students okay his students they explained they discovered that ab blood group is also there as per karl and steiner blood group a blood group b blood group o is there but his students de castello and sturley they even explained the existence of ab blood group so you know that you know this blood grouping thing you right you know that we have the rbc the surface of the rbc is having the antigen 
है ना इट इज हैविंग द एंटीजन एंड दैट एंटीजन विल टेल अस अबाउट आर ब्लड ग्रुप इफ द एंटीजन इज ए दैट पर्सन विल हैव ए ब्लड ग्रुप आई होप यू नो अबाउट इट दैट पर्सन इज हैविंग ए ब्लड ग्रुप एंड एंटी बी राइट एंड एंटीबॉडीज अगेंस्ट बी ब्लड ग्रुप आर प्रेजेंट इन राइट दे आर प्रेजेंट इन प्लाज्मा इज इंट इट सो एंटीबॉडीज अगेंस्ट बी ब्लड ग्रुप एंटी बी एंटीबॉडीज दे आर प्रेजेंट इन प्लाज्मा सो ए एंटीजन इज प्रेजेंट ऑन आर बी सी सर्फेस राइट सो दे हैव नोटिस दैट बेसिकली राइट दैट समटाइम्स दिस ए as well as b antigen this simultaneously expresses itself so that's why we got the ab blood group and you know that there will be no antibody in plasma okay there will be no antibody in plasma got it yep is it clear yes varun subhashini kalesh it's kalesh or kalesh is it clear so co-dominance two alleles are simultaneously expressing right two alleles they are simultaneously expressing them okay so any other doubt yes so do you want me to explain any other example are you getting these postulates properly are you getting these laws properly yes these post mendelian inheritance part properly tell me please <coughs> do let me know students and then i will explain the concept of dominance to you okay then i'll explain you the concept of dominance are you sure so blood group is the best example and then ron color in short horned cattle ron color in short horned cattle like see you have the example of two cattle right students let's draw the cross here you have the example of two cattle one cattle color is red another cattle color is white clear bachche right bachche and when you are crossing them in f1 individual individuals you are getting this rr as the cross uh, rr and that is the ron color it is showing red as well as white color it is showing red as well as white color okay so in that case right in that case how can we uh, like let's say you are discussing the hybridization of the f1 individual now you know what we have to do yes now you know what we have to do see this it is rr rr R R R R. So means red color, these two, brown color, and again red. Uh, sorry, white color. So basically, even in the co-dominant students, even in the co-dominants, the phenotypic and genotypic ratio is same. Clear? In incomplete dominants also, in your co-dominants also, the phenotypic. and the genotypic ratio is same please remember this okay the phenotypic and the genotypic ratio is same okay and yes <clears throat> we have the example of sickle cell anemia as well do you remember bachche we have even discussed the example of sickle cell anemia in natural selection anyone in the class Yes anyone in the class guys please speed up i know you people are feeling sleepy but it's okay it is the most important chapter and today consider it like this today it is the last day to revise this chapter okay and as i said bachche be the part of this amazing batch right be the part of this amazing batch that is your uh, neat end game okay and for that what you have to do see here we have our session so you just go to the description box here okay you have to click on this link fine and 
you have to click on this link after some time it is going to show you all the details of the course you have to apply the coupon code ambika 10 right and you will get the lightning deal you will get this batch at a price of 4999 see here see here the coupon code is already applied and you will get this batch at this price and trust me here in this batch we will have proper revision we will have proper test right and we know what to provide you right for your quick revision in such less time so that course is going to be the best for your preparation okay okay so this is the coupon code that you have to apply so now come back to this so if you remember i even told you about the sickle cell anemia it is the example of natural selection do you remember strange bache you can try very good samriya excellent can you just tell me which selection it was <coughs> samiksha is saying it is stabilizing is it so was it stabilizing was it stabilizing was it stabilizing pallavi is saying no guys please answer please answer nandini are you sure it is disruptive i don't think that you remember what disruptive is disruptive used to say that homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive will be acceptable not heterozygous dominant but so definitely it is not disruptive and samiksha is right it is stabilizing selection because in stabilizing selection heterozygous will be preferred but che revision 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 is important and seriously i'm surprised only two girls they are answering what about others what about others so sickle cell anemia you know that rbc will become sickle shaped if a person is having sickle cell anemia we will discuss it in pleiotropy as well in detail so when it comes to the sickle cell anemia hba hbas they are see these both the alleles are going to express itself because of that individual will be having normal rbcs also the sickle shaped rbcs also right sickle shaped rbcs also so this is the example of the codominance is it clear so now bachche before starting the multiple allelism let me tell you about the concept of dominance and it is even given in ncert if you people know about it right the concept of dominance do you know why do we say that some genes they are dominant and some genes they are recessive yes anyone in the class anyone in the class why do we say that some genes they are dominant and some genes they are recessive can you just tell me the logic behind the concept the explanation of the concept of dominance <clears throat> yes see in general let's talk about it so you know that when you talk about a gene gene is a pair of allele right gene is what gene is a pair of allele yes we know it right so that alleles can be same that alleles can be different it can be anything that alleles can be same that alleles can be different isn't it and why these two alleles because when you say that gene is a pair of allele you know that allele is nothing but the contrasting allele is nothing but the contrasting yes bachche it is nothing but the contrasting or the alternative form of the gene right allele is what it is the contrasting or alternative form of a gene am i right so now when you look at the two different let's say you are talking about a gene which is having two different alleles you are talking about a gene having two different alleles right so why are they different from each other because of some modifications am i right <clears throat> am i right is it because of some modifications yes yes you are right gene is something gene is a pair of alleles gene is something which is going to control a trait right kaushal gene is something which is going to control a trait and allele is the alternating form of a gene right so when you take the example of two different 
when you take the example of two different alleles right when you take the example of two different alleles right so modifications are there because of certain modifications they are different samiksha yes it is due to some changes right some modifications are there some changes are there and you know that mutations can occur right because of mutation one gene it get mutated it forms another gene allele right it forms its alternative forms right so what am i saying here i'm saying here that modifications because of some changes because of slight changes one of them may be different from another right right so so in general you know that a gene is something which is going to control a character how can they control a character because they have the information for it they have the information for it and when we say the word allele allele they are responsible for controlling the alternative form of character mean the trait means it means the trait so basically they have the information right they have a particular information and because of that particular information they they uh, because of that particular information they are responsible for a particular trait they are responsible for controlling a particular trait now because of some modifications right 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 because of some modifications modifications occurs we used to get the alternative forms modifications can be because of mutations as well so theoretically right theoretically modified allele is responsible for three conditions theoretically that modified allele is responsible for basically let's say for normal or less efficient enzyme students do you know the central dogma of information right after this principles of inheritance and variation that is the next chapter that we are going to start okay that is going to be the next chapter so i am asking that uh, theoretically modified allele is responsible for normal or less efficient enzyme now i am talking about central dogma of information see it's very simple you have the dna right that dna has formed the mrna you know that this is transcription that mrna is going to form the protein right that proteins are basically forming the enzymes isn't it that proteins are basically forming the enzymes isn't it isn't it so normal or less efficient gene this is what we are discussing so basically i am saying that a dna is having the gene gene will form mrna that mrna will form the protein or the polypeptide clear which or the polypeptide means that gene is having information that gene can form the enzyme that's what i'm trying to say here okay so if let's say one allele got modified and it is forming normal or less efficient enzyme this is a first case right this is the first case second case is saying no enzyme at all like after modification that allele has stopped forming any enzyme and the third condition is saying third condition is saying that okay one is normal or less efficient another is no enzyme at all or the third category here is going to be that that enzyme is not at all functional so we can say the non functional enzyme right we can say na non functional enzyme these are the three possibilities right so now just imagine if i modified your system and you are doing in a same way like you were doing before means there is a kind of no change right there is a kind of no change just sometimes what happen because of certain uh, updates of the software right so our phone it shows some changes but sometimes it's all same or you can say that it is something that we cannot understand right it is something that we cannot understand or you can say that it's all same same so in that scenario when after a change after the modification also the result is same right so you will consider it consider it like this na ki nothing has happened just let's say let's say uh you were not studying properly okay you got very less marks in your board exams let's say passing marks let's say 40 marks out of 100 40 marks out of 100 so if you are not learning anything from it right it is of no use na it is of no use it is of no use ki yaar okay fine if i'm getting less marks that's okay that's fine so you cannot say that that you have learned something from it hai na it is in bad way now i am saying that let's say because of some change we have modified a gene and that modified gene is also working the same way it is also giving me the normal enzyme or even the less efficient enzyme so i will not consider that actually modified allele as the modified 
because it is giving me the same results isn't it it is giving me the same results but if that particular allele if it has stopped making the functional enzyme if functional enzyme is not there means that particular character will not be there right or if it is not at all forming that enzyme again again the same scenario will be there am i right again the same scenario will be there right bache right bache yes or no yes or no so here in the first case here in the first case right although this allele is modified but still it is giving me the results like unmodified allele right its results are just like unmodified alleles so for me here i'm not going to say that any change is there right right thanks dr strange so here what am i saying i'm saying that if no, modified gene is giving me the same result so for me it is equivalent to unmodified and when i talk about these two cases right here because i'm not getting enzyme so here for me that modified allele is kind of recessive here for me that modified enzyme is kind of right modified allele is basically the basically the recessive because it is giving non functional or no enzyme at all right non functional or not yes bache yes 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 if it is not forming if it is not giving me any enzyme okay or non functional enzyme for me it is recessive and here because normal enzyme is there so it is going to be the dominant one so now when you talk about the incomplete dominance or the co dominance so in that case the alleles they are modified in such a way that they give us the altered product okay here i'm saying normal or less efficient enzyme right i am explaining you the concept of dominance here so what am i saying likhita i am saying that now now you know why a, a particular allele is expressing itself and another allele is not at all expressing itself it is because of the enzymes so now i am telling you that students in the incomplete dominance or in the co dominance what happened in both the cases the allele is modified in such a way that it is giving us the altered product right just say in the case of incomplete dominance we are getting less efficient enzyme so the dominance is not proper that's what we can consider yes or no of course we can now in the co dominance the enzyme is in such a way that both the alleles are expressing so it's all about that modifications understood right that's how we can explain the incomplete dominance and the complete dominance understood incomplete dominance and the complete dominance understood now the next concept under this allelic interaction is multiple allele or multiple allelism so as per mendel right as per our mendel uncle a gene he was using the term factor na but now we call it as gene so i'm saying gene a gene is having a pair of allele this is what mendel was saying but bache but 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 there is a but here and what that but is saying that but is saying that sometimes some genes are having some genes are having more than two alleles right some genes are having more than two alleles such alleles are multiple alleles and this phenomena is multiple allelism am i right such alleles are multiple alleles and the phenomena is multiple allelism am i right yes bache varun shrinath is it clear tell me is it clear right so some genes are having more than two alleles such alleles are multiple alleles right and the phenomena is multiple allelism so it is again the deviation from the mendel's inheritance yes neharika it is again the deviation from the mendelian inheritance hai na this is what multiple allelism is and the best example here is of blood group okay i already told you about the blood group who discovered the blood group please let me know in the chat section everyone who discovered the blood grouping system who discovered the blood grouping system
exactly Carl Landsteiner who gave the ABO blood grouping system AB blood grouping system right who discovered that A and B both can exist right both can express simultaneously can we cross multiple alleles I didn't get your question Dr. Strange very good very good very good so some genes are having more than two alleles such alleles are multiplism plus there are two other points that you need to write down and then after explaining the blood grouping system i will explain that points to you so please write down bache that multiple alleles are present on same locus of homologous chromosomes multiple alleles are present on same locus of homologous chromosome and the another most important point is multiple alleles are seen in population I'll explain these points to you but firstly let me explain you the blood group okay let me explain you this blood grouping part okay bache? so you know that right the gene i right we have gene i that is responsible for blood group and this gene i is having three contrasting forms it is i a i b and i okay i a means a blood group b means b blood group this one is the recessive one o blood group right and we know that a and b they also show the co-dominance now but we have one formula here so for the blood group how many alleles are there how many alleles are there for the blood group please let me know in the chat section everyone be quick be enthusiastic be quick guys quickly answer it to me very good number of alleles are three so if you want to check number of possible genotypes Focus on the words here. It's genotype, not the phenotype. So the formula will be n n plus 1 over 2. So it will be 3, 3 plus 1 over 2. That is your 6. So what is the possible number of genotypes here? What is the possible number of genotypes here? 6. Okay. So see, you have IA, IA as homozygous dominant. It is homozygous dominant for A blood group. This one is heterozygous dominant for A blood group. Isn't it? Next is IB, IB. Again, homozygous B blood group. Right, I am writing it in short form. This one is going to be heterozygous b blood group and then bache it will be your o blood group this is another genotype right and you know that in the case of blood group you have i a i b also a b blood group co-dominance is there right a b blood group co-dominance is there so you have six possible genotypes one two three four five and here we have the six so with this formula you can calculate it right with this formula you can calculate it now these are the two important points for the array for the statement based question can you see these points do you know the meaning of these points yes do you know the meaning of these points very good very good bache you are right here you have six genotypes but phenotypes are four only right very good excellent you have six genotypes but phenotypes are four only a b o a b okay so do you understand the meaning of these two lines let me explain it to you okay let me explain it to you but it's very simple i said that multiple alleles are present on the same locus
in homologous chromosome right if you will check the previous year questions now that we are going to solve tomorrow morning 11 a.m right you will get to know about it multiple alleles are present on the same locus in homologous chromosome it's very simple students right it is very simple literally it is very simple but see, that is not the case whenever you talk about the multiple alleles now you cannot say that 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 uh, different different alleles they are present on different different chromosomes no firstly it is not like that you have the pair of chromosome here let's say you have the gene for the blood group here also you will see the gene for the blood group right so they are going to share the they are, they, they are present on the same locus in the homologous chromosome it's not like that they'll be the part of non homologous chromosome or they will share the different locus even on the same chromosome no no right so they are going to be they are going to present on the same locus in the homologous chromosome multiple alleles are present on the same locus in homologous chromosome this is first point the second point is that multiple alleles are right multiple alleles are seen in population multiple alleles are seen in population anyone in the class who can tell me this okay so vijay subhashini subhodyam indu right indu you are here just for the chatting right you tell me that uh, in in an individual how many genes right varun how many alleles for the blood group are present how many alleles for the blood group are present tell me how many alleles for the blood group are present seriously some are saying 3 some are saying 6 but i am asking that in an individual how many alleles how many alleles are there for the blood group how can you say that 6 how can you say it is going to be 6 like let's say we have our chin 2 okay we have chin 2 the chin 2 is having a blood group so according to you how many alleles are going to decide that blood group how many alleles are going to decide that blood group 2? Let's say Chintu's blood group is homozygous A. So it will be like this. So basically Chintu is going to have, Chintu is going to have only two alleles. Even if you are talking about the multiple allelism, you will have the pair of allele only. It's not like that all the three alleles will be there in one individual. Of course it is not like that. Why am I saying that multiple alleles are seen in population? Let's say here human beings are living right here you have human beings they are living here fine so now when you are checking the blood group here so what will you observe what are you going to observe you will say some people are having a blood group some are having b some are having a b some are having o right so let's say this individual this individual is having a b blood group means two alleles are present i a i b this individual is having o blood group means two alleles are present this individual is having right B blood group heterozygous B again two alleles are present so overall in population multiple alleles, alleles are there overall in this population for the blood group you have IA IB IO right but in single single individual if you are going to discuss they are still going to have only two alleles because multiple alleles they are present on the locus of same locus of homologous chromosome plus we just have the pair of chromosome right we have the pair of allele only that is why so if it is the population population will show multiple allelism but single individual will have only two alleles for a character right single individual will have only two alleles for a character clear bache now clear so on what basis you people were saying six two three again it's a most it is a most common mistake so guys now i'm feeling that you guys are less motivated hai na? literally now this is what i'm feeling that you people are not motivated enough you are just here and you're just passing time is it so is it so if it is then bache send me some fire emojis please 
right show some energy literally even i am feeling low okay so now answer my question what 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 are we going to study in allelic interaction what are we going to study in allelic interaction quickly tell me what do we study in allelic interaction yes answer my question what do we study in allelic interaction in one message answer all the questions yes bachche in one message answer all the questions incomplete dominance codominance multiple allelism pleiotropy that's what we have to study here okay so they are the post mendelian inheritance what are they they are the post mendelian inheritance okay okay so we are done with incomplete dominance quickly revise the examples of incomplete dominance right so we have the mirabilis jalepa flower color right i didn't mention the flower color i hope you know about it snap dragon's flower color size of the starch grain in pea plant another important mcq and then the feather color in endolossian fowl next codominance where we talk about the ab blood group we talk about hba hbs carrier for fecal cell anemia that is our example the ron color in cattle that is another example then bachche we have the multiple allelism right and uh, so then we explain the concept of uh, we discuss the concept of dominance then multiple allelism right so where the most important example is your blood group who gave the abo blood grouping system who gave the abo blood grouping system who gave the abo blood grouping system carl landsteiner who gave the ab blood group right d castello and sterli d castello and sterli understood understood okay so multiple alleles are seen in population is it clear is it clear that multiple alleles are seen in population sure okay so next is the pleiotropy next is the pleiotropy so bachche what do you know about the pleiotropy it is another important thing what do you know about the pleiotropy quick what do you know about the pleiotropy yes we have many 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 examples here it is one of the most important topics right definitely you will get one question in your final neat exam from this part for sure you people are going to get one question from this part exactly when you talk about the mendel as per mendel as per our mendel uncle mendel uncle was like that one gene one gene controls one character as per mendel that was the thing that one gene controls one character right one gene controls one character okay but but pleiotropy is saying or pleiotropic effect is saying it means multiple it means in simple words if i have to mention multiples phenotypic effects of a gene in some one line if i have to explain you what is it it is a multiple phenotypic effects of a gene it is a multiple phenotypic effects of a gene it means that one gene is controlling one gene is controlling more than one character one gene is controlling more than one character are you getting it one gene is controlling more than one character that is what pleiotropy is right that is what pleiotropy is so one gene is having more than one phenotypic effect in another language this is how you can explain it one gene is having more than right it is having more than one phenotypic effect or you can say that more than one trait understood clear bachche so now i'll ask one another question from you people let's say imagine you are very rich theek hai ballevi 
imagine you are very rich just let's say you are having a you are having a shop let's consider it as a, uh, as a sweet shop hai na so with the time you open three different sweet shops sweet shop a sweet shop b sweet shop c theek hai let's say you are very rich theek hai our pallavi she is very rich so pallavi she has three right she is not the owner of one sweet shop she is she is having three sweet shops right but but right personally do you think that she can check all the three sweet shops simultaneously she can sit there simultaneously she can manage everything there simultaneously no no let's say her main focus is this sweet shop b okay and she has hired persons for sweet shop a and c in this way it is manageable in this way it is manageable right so now you must be thinking that ma'am why are you explaining here simple let's say you have a gene right this gene is controlling the single gene is controlling many character like character 1 character 2 character 3 mainly mainly it is controlling this its its major phenotypic effect is this character 1 right like intensity of that character i'm saying intensity of that trait i'm saying right right so mainly it is influencing character 1 more right then character 2 and 3 it is mainly influencing character 1 then 2 and 3 i'll give you the example of sickle cell anemia here then you will understand it in a better way now when you talk about sickle cell anemia what is it but see this is the most important topic sickle cell anemia it is not going to leave you okay the sickle cell anemia is not going to leave you simple when you talk about the hemoglobin hemoglobin is what i'm going to explain sickle cell anemia here in detail right i'll be explaining sickle cell anemia here in detail and then we will just quickly revise it so it's a humble request students that please pay attention so that we can right so that we can discuss it properly okay so that yes bachche we can discuss it properly and then uh, later on right there are many questions on the basis of this sickle cell anemia part so you please right you please solve that questions then okay okay Mm-hmm. Just a minute. Okay. So hemoglobin, you know that it is the respiratory pigment. What is it? It is the respiratory pigment present in RBC. Right, bache. And this respiratory pigment, RBC means red blood cell. It carries oxygen right it carries oxygen so when you talk about this respiratory pigment that is your hemoglobin it's a quaternary protein what type of protein it is bachche it is a quaternary protein quaternary protein quat means four so it means it is having four polypeptide chains now mainly i am talking about the adult hemoglobin right i am talking about the adult hemoglobin it is having four polypeptide chain it is having two alpha chains right it is having two beta chains again i am telling you i am not going to explain this topic again so you please pay attention okay i'll just i'll just recapitulate it okay so sickle cell anemia which is autosomal recessive disorder why autosomal recessive because this the genes for this 
disorder they are present on autosome chromos autosomal chromosomes and it is recessive it will express itself when it is in the homozygous recessive condition so sequel and sequel cell anemia is also showing us the pleiotropy that is what we are discussing so hemoglobin 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 is what respiratory pigment as i said present in rbc that used to carry the oxygen so it is a bache quaternary protein means it is made up of four polypeptide chains two alpha chains two beta chains polypeptide chain means it is made up of many amino acid right your proteins are made up of many amino acids many amino acids that will join together hai na they will form the polypeptide many amino acid that will join together with the help of peptide bond they are making the polypeptides now when you talk about the alpha chains alpha chains right they are synthesized by the genes like your hba1 right hba2 something like that okay so in simple words you can write it hba gene okay hba gene is responsible for the synthesis of two alpha chains so this gene it is located on chromosome number 16 please note down right it is located on chromosome number 16 this information is given in ncert okay even this information is given in ncert not here but yeah still it is given okay and i know i should not explain it to you here but still try to remember that okay so hba1 gene is also there hba2 gene is also there okay HBA one gene is also there. HBA two gene is also there. It is present on chromosome number sixteen. Okay, write down everyone in the chat section quickly. It is present on. It is present on chromosome number. It is present on chromosome number. Yes, बच्चे sixteen. So HBA one and HBA two is there. but that is of not that is not of our concern now why because here we are going to because we are discussing sequel cell anemia so we are concerned with the beta chain i'll tell you how. Uh, how so now when you talk about the beta chain of the hemoglobin okay when you people talk about the beta chain of hemoglobin so beta chain hbb gene is responsible for it and that gene is located on chromosome number 11 bachche again i'm telling you this information is given in ncert no doubt not here in pleiotropy but separately where they explain sequel cell anemia and thalassemia na this information is given here so you please note down so we have right we have the genes for the hemoglobin right so hbb hbb gene is going to it is present on chromosome number 11 it will form the it will form the beta chain and alpha chains are formed by hba1 and hba two genes right which is present on chromosome number 16 now what is going to happen the point mutations will occur right what is the point mutation that there will be a change in only one base right there will be a change in only one base that is basically the yes bachche that is basically the point mutation so now when you talk about the sequel cell anemia in sequel cell anemia now this is how i'm going to relate it with sequel cell anemia so in sequel cell anemia bachche what is going to happen beta chain in beta chain at sixth position because you know that it's a protein chain so obviously it is made up of amino acid right so in sequel cell anemia in beta chain at sixth position right glutamic acid amino acid glutamic acid will be replaced by glutamic acid will be replaced by yes bachche it will be replaced by valine what is going to happen here right see in the beta chain at sixth position this is important you have to be specific right you have to be specific i told you na basically how is it going to happen the sequel cell anemia in the beta chain in the beta globin chain at sixth position let's see this is your sixth amino acid right normally normally the sixth amino acid is your glutamic acid which acid it is normally it is glutamic acid so glutamic acid is called co uh, it is coded by gag g a g right it is coded by this triplet codon gag but because of the point mutation right because of the point mutation 
this gag this is my way to remember this this gag will become gug means gag will become gug right gag will become gug so there is a change of only one base there is a change of only one base that's why it's a point mutation so now instead of coding for glutamic acid it will be coding for valine right it will be coding for valine are you getting it gag will become gug gag will become gug glutamic acid will become valine so the trick here is good villain right the trick here is good villain gd will remind you gd will remind you that it is glutamic acid not glutamine okay this is the most common mistake that students used to make right they confuse glutamic acid and glutamine okay so it is glutamic acid good villain glutamic acid it is what is it glutamic acid villain valine so glutamic acid will be replaced by valine and because of that rbc shape will become sequel right no doubt there is a uh, blessing in disguise that in the sequel cell anemia right a person having sequel cell anemia that person will not get affected with the malaria even in evolution chapter i told you about this right because malarial parasite cannot survive in the sequel shaped rbc but my point is that ma'am right ma'am we are talking about the pleiotropy so how that mutation how that sequel cell gene right it is controlling other phenotypic effects hai na you must be thinking this isn't it isn't it yes or no right so see when you talk about this mutated sequel cell gene right when you talk about this mutated gene or mutated sequel cell gene if you talk about its major effect major effect is sequel shaped rbc right its major phenotypic effect is its major phenotypic effect is sequel shaped rbc but it is also having another secondary effects as well it is also having another secondary effects as well right bachche right 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 yes or no yes or no see oh okay okay ha main effect is change in change in beta chain right its main effect is this is the major effect this is the part of secondary effects only right it is the major effect that there is a change in beta chain at sixth position so this is the major effect and this one is a secondary right this one is secondary effect that sequel shaped rbc will be there now because rbcs are sequel shaped they will obstruct blood vessels right they are going to obstruct blood vessels so now you imagine if blood vessels will be obstructed don't you think it is going to affect the don't you think it is going to affect the heart yes or no don't you think that it is going to affect the heart and even membrane permeability changes this is also the effect secondary effect and even sequel shaped rbcs they can even clog blood capillaries right they can even clog they can even block blood capillaries okay yes or no yes or no right so obstruct blood flow will be there that is going to affect the heart yes so membrane permeability changes clog blood capillaries so they all are the secondary effect and the major effect is there is a change in the beta position at the sixth position got it so this this single gene this single gene which is present on chromosome number 11 it is not just controlling this it is also controlling other characters also so indirectly there will be the effect on the heart there will be the effect on the liver as well right so that is how the mutation in one gene is affecting other parts so it is also the example of pleiotropy understood understood yes or no so this part the the part that we have discussed it is a major effect okay i told you na that these pleiotropic genes right which are controlling different different characters so obviously there will be one character where they are having major effect okay other uh, others are going to be secondary like there will be the more intensity of that particular character in comparison to another 
okay in comparison to another so here as i said the examples are very important now there is one more example of this pleiotropy in pea plants okay there is one more example of this pleiotropy in pea plant do you know about this the seed shape and size of starch grain seed shape and the size of starch grain this is important please note down is controlled by same gene right bachche it is controlled by same gene is it clear it is also a previous year question guys seed shape and size of starch grain is controlled by same gene and that gene is located on seventh chromosome okay it is located on the seventh chromosome of pea plant so bachche it is also the example of pleiotropy so mendel was lucky right mendel was lucky as well clear bachche clear bachche so we will consider the example of two genes that are b and b okay that are b and b okay so we have two genes that is b and b so here you will see two different phenomena like for the starch synthesis for starch synthesis gene b shows incomplete dominance please note down for the starch synthesis gene b shows incomplete dominance so anyone in the class who can explain it to me see when i'm saying that single gene right when i'm saying that the same gene is controlling seed shape and the size of starch grain it is explaining you the pleiotropy now i am telling you about the another phenomena as well right bachche i'm telling you about the another phenomena as well i'm saying two genes are there capital b and small b and i'm saying that for the starch synthesis it is showing incomplete dominance so anyone in the class who can explain it to me yes anyone in the class who can explain it to me exactly very good akankhya excellent so means capital b capital b means right large starch grains very good akankhya excellent if it is small b small b it is small starch grains and if it is capital b and small b then it will be the intermediate because it is it is what it is incomplete dominance so it will be intermediate starch grain fine and when it comes to the seed shape right when it comes to the seed shape it is normal it is normal dominance dominant and recessive relationship like capital b capital b capital b small b small b small b so it is related to the seed shape so obviously round what will be the seed shapes here yes bachche what will be the seed shapes here it is going to be round and wrinkle so where dominant gene is present round shape round shape here it will be wrinkled right so what type of question can come from this part first of all they can ask you about the example they they can ask you about the example that's the first point right they can ask you about the example secondly that's how they can mention right that's how they can mention like uh bb bb so here it will be large starch grain right large starch grain and second point is second point is round seed shape here it will be intermediate starch grain and round seed shape again here also intermediate st 
starch green and round seed shape here it will be yes small starch green and wrinkled seed shape so that's how they can ask you so you should know about it fine you should know about it clear bache sure if there is any doubt do let me know so sequel cell anemia right bache sequel cell anemia your pea plant example they are very important so another important example here is phenyl ketonuria so what do you know about phenyl ketonuria yes what do you know about phenyl ketonuria bache they all are the part of disorders if you will complete it here in pleiotropina then we will finish the disorder part immediately yes bache we will finish that disorder part immediately so do you know that yes do you know about it so next example is phenyl ketonuria do you know anything related to phenyl ketonuria first of all bache it is also the autosomal recessive disorder what type of disorder it is it is also the autosomal recessive disorder right and it is due to the inborn metabol error in metabolism it is due to inborn error in metabolism so bache what is going to happen here on chromosome number 12 the chromosome number is important again i'm repeating it is given in your ncert so you should know this on chromosome 12 right on which chromosome everyone just mention the chromosome number just mention the chromosome number in the chat section quick just mention the chromosome number in the chat section quick right on chromosome 12 there is a gene gene encoding for right phenyl alanine hydroxylase the gene which is encoding for phenyl alanine hydroxylase that is your paah right what do we have on chromosome 12 we have a gene which is encoding for phenyl alanine hydroxylase that is ph it will get mutated okay due to which there is right bachche due to which there is no phenylalanine hydroxylase so now because of that if there is no phenylalanine hydroxylase your phenylalanine will not be converted to tyrosine what is phenylalanine bachche phenylalanine is an amino acid what is phenylalanine yes bachche what is phenylalanine phenylalanine is an amino acid so it is converted to another amino acid tyrosine at that tyrosine is responsible for the formation of skin pigment melanin yes or no this tyrosine it is responsible for the formation of skin pigment tyrosine right uh, sorry uh, the, this uh, tyrosine is responsible for the formation of skin pigment melanin now when we do not have pah when we do not have ph so phenylalanine will not be converted to tyrosine right will not be converted to tyrosine and because of that what is going to happen the accumulation of right there will be the accumulation of phenylalanine because it is not getting converted into tyrosine so there will be an accumulation of phenylalanine am i right yes bachche am i right tell me quickly am i right hai na so obviously even it will form phenyl pyruvic acid this phenylalanine then it will form phenyl pyruvic acid now it is not getting converted into the tyrosine so no tyrosine means right there will be the issue with the skin pigmentation yes so because of the if a person is having phenyl ketonuria skin pigmentation issue is there right because accumulation of phenyl alanine is there so that can also uh, result in mental retardation yes that can also result in mental retardation yes or no yes or no so there will be reduction in right there will be reduction in hair growth and skin pigmentation so see mutation in one gene can can also impact others also it, it can also impact other 
characters right it can also impact other characters so this is the example of pleiotropy clear bache it is the example of pleiotropy understood is it clear so this is this is all that we need to discuss under the title allelic interaction right right so do you have any doubt here so please do not get confused multiple allelism means one gene having more than two alleles one gene having more than two alleles and when it is the pleiotropy p form phenotypic effect right single gene controls more than one phenotypic effect more than one phenotypic effect understood yes bachche understood very good saucy vijay stop chatting and please focus here and then next is the lethal genes bachche lethal lethal means deadly combination lethal means death right lethal means death lethal means deadly combination do you know the meaning of lethal yep do you know the meaning of lethal that's actually the meaning of lethal so when you talk about the lethal gene in the case of lethal gene like there are some combinations in nature that do not exist for an example if you know about the uh, hemophilia this is possible males they will get hemophilia even this is also possible that the females they are the carrier like affected male the disease is hemophilia right bleeders disease so affected male is there carrier female is there but bachche this combination it never exists right it never exists this is the lethal combination lethal combination means if by chance right in the embryonic stages in the zygotic stages if these are the chromosomes right that that zygote will not grow that zygote will not grow so instead of ratio 3 is to 1 in lethal genes we have 2 is to 1 ratio because one individual will die okay one individual will die okay that's the lethal genes fine okay so now the next topic that we need to discuss is non allelic interaction understood non allelic interaction so non allelic interactions are also known as intergenic interactions what are they they are known as intergenic interaction how two different genes are interacting right how two different genes are interacting no doubt here i have mentioned you the example of uh, complementary genes and epistasis epistasis is not given in ncert but epistasis is very important the question used to come from this part right bache but not just complementary genes not just epistasis we have another also polymeric genes are there right supplementary genes are there additive genes are there polymeric additive is almost same okay so there are many other interactions here okay okay understood understood this is duplicate genes so there are many other interactions but that we are not studying fine so we are mainly going to talk about the complementary and the epistasis are you ready we are mainly going to talk about the complementary genes or the epistasis so if you are ready do let me know in the chat section with the same energy guys otherwise i'll end the session today yes complementary genes and the epistasis that's what we need to cover and as i said this is not given in ncert but yes mcq can come so you have to listen to me carefully yes bachche you have to listen to me carefully after this we'll be talking about the polygenic inheritance all the topics are important see polygenic inheritance then we will come to chromosomal theory of inheritance theek hai and then there will be the chromosomal theory of linkage finally 
after linkage and recombination you people will get a break and then all that disorders see that's what we have and i'm pretty sure that you all can master it okay right so today it should be your only target that we have to master principles of inheritance and variation isn't it we have to master principles of inheritance and variation we should fine we should so quickly tell me the ratios of the ratios of incomplete dominance and co-dominance everyone the phenotypic and genotypic ratio both what is the phenotypic and genotypic ratio for the for the incomplete dominance and the co-dominance everyone quick be quick are you sure yes are you sure should i lock it should i lock it okay so give me the examples of pleiotropy the genes which are showing multiple effects give me the example of pleiotropy so do we have sickle cell anemia only skin color is the example of polygenic inheritance fecal cell anemia phenylketonuria in the pea plant the size of the starch grain and the seed shape all the examples are important okay so in the next class or in the comment section what are you going to tell me you will tell me about the lethal genes fine you are going to tell me about the lethal genes you'll give me the examples of lethal genes fine what will you tell me you'll give me the example of lethal gene okay so now in a very simple way yes i'll ask you what do you understand by samiksha subhashini right uh, subodhyan niharika you tell me what do you nandini understand by the word complementary when we use this thing na complementary genes what do you understand by that yep what do you understand by that complementary genes what what is the meaning of this thing it's not opposite definitely it is not opposite but for this particular chapter yes there are few topics that uh, that are out of ncrt and they are important act together okay so they say uh, sometimes you know it happens like we used to wear a dress and then we see that okay this particular type of jewelry it is complementing the dress okay right that it is with it our dress is looking better isn't it our dress is looking better it's like that hai na it's like that so what am i trying to say complementary some one gene is complementing another gene two genes are complementing each other like it's like ki when they both are present together then they are giving a particular color okay so i'll give you the example of two friends here fine i'll give you the example of two friends here the name of the one friend is jintu the another friend is pintu theek hai we have jintu and we have pin to okay what do we have students we have chin to and pin to okay so when chin to and pin to when they studied together they score 100% marks right they are not the one they are not the one that if they will go for the group studies they'll be fail they'll do this do that no if chin to pin to they study together they score 100% marks always why because chintu is very good in making notes right chintu is capable enough to form the notes and this pintu is very good for the revision right jaise let's say chintu is reading something chintu has started making the notes then pintu will be like ki chintu i'll tell you how to revise these notes chintu help pintu to cram that thing to remember that thing to understand that thing whatever is the possibility okay and when it comes to pintu pintu is not capable of making the notes but pintu is very good if someone will give pintu the notes pintu is like ki theek i can revise i can help you as well right so when they both they study together they complement each other right they help each other one is providing the notes other is providing the revision strategy right one is providing the notes another is providing the revision strategy and they are scoring 100% marks right but let's say because of some reason right chintu and pintu's mother she was like nahi yaar they are scoring very good marks maybe they are right maybe they are making that slips and all they are cheating 
okay you know no mothers you know no mothers so uh, the, their mother they separated them okay now chintu scored 0% marks and pintu also zero pintu is also on zero chintu is also on zero are you getting it okay same is the case with the complementary genes same is the case with the complementary genes jaise we have two genes let's take the example of c and p obviously in their dominant form we need them right in their dominant form we need them right c and p when c oh, oh and p when they are together they are giving purple color they are responsible for the purple color of the flower so actually we are taking the example of the wild pea right which example are we taking we are taking the example of the not the wild pea sweet pea right garden pea is your pisum sativum it is sweet pea your lethyrus odoratus wild pea is also the lethyrus species but i don't remember it exactly so it is lethyrus odoratus so when these two genes in their dominant form they are together they are giving the purple color when it is capital c and small p again it is giving white color when it is small c and capital p again it is giving white color so they can only give they can only give purple color when they are together in their dominant form right chintu pintu c and p chintu and pintu theek hai c and p chintu and pintu is that clear so why is it so because bachche there is a raw material available why is it so because there is a raw material available and your gene c product of gene c basically what these genes are going to do they will make protein you know na the flow of information yes or no you people know the flow of information that one gene gene will form mrna mrna will form protein one gene will form mrna mrna will form protein this is the flow of information transcription translation firstly transcription then translation will be there this is what we know isn't it isn't it so my point is the raw material right okay the raw material is available gene c can convert that raw material into chromogen what is chromogen something which can produce the color chroma means color right chroma means color right so gene c can convert that raw material into the chromogen which will provide the color and when the product of gene p when it acts on it it will uh, it will convert this chromogen into actual color that is anthocyanin which will give the purple color right that is going to give the purple color okay okay so this point clear this point clear so now what type of cross do we need to study let's say it's capital c capital c small p small p okay capital c okay not like this my bad capital c capital c capital p capital p your flower will be colored or it will be yes bachche your flower will be colored or it will be colorless your flower will be colored or it will be colorless it will be colored because both are present in the dominant form both are in recessive form it will be colorless so you know that f1 generation here will be can you tell me the genotype of the f1 generation can you tell me the genotype of the f1 generation can you tell me the genotype of the f1 generation excellent nandini it will be capital c small c capital p small p okay so now there will be the selfing selfing of f1 generation what are we going to do the selfing the selfing of f1 generation right so you know that the type of gamete capital c capital p capital c small p small c capital p small c small p capital c capital p capital c small p small c capital p small c small p right these are the gametes it's very simple okay so now uh, look at the genotype so tell me about the flower color here everyone just write down the flower color in the chat section all of you be quick just write down the flower color quickly line wise just let me know about the flower color in the chat section
at least tell me the genotype where your flower color is going to be the colorless Tell me quickly. So basically, mm, this one is going to be colorless. This one is going to be colorless. 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 It is also colorless. 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 So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 are colorless, 9 are colored. So the ratio here will be the phenotypic ratio 9 is to 7. 9 flowers are the colored flowers, 7 flowers are the colorless flowers. So, this is the ratio in the case of complementary genes that is 9 is to 7. Why is it colorless? Because only capital C is present. And why do we need both of them together? Because one will convert raw material into chromogen, another will convert it into the pigment. Okay, so that is why 7 flowers are going to be the colorless. They all are colored because they have their, they have these dominant genes clear they have these dominant genes clear bache clear bache so that's the point here now the next thing is epistasis now the next thing is epistasis it is very important so what do you know about epistasis yes bache what do you know about epistasis yes Princess, what are you not understanding? Do let me know. I'll revise it again. Very good, Nandini. Guys, I seriously want to know. Don't you have another platform to chit chat? Very good. Very good. So, epistasis. So in epistasis, because it is also the example of non-allelic interaction, one gene masks, masks means hide, hide the expression of another gene. One gene masks the expression of another gene, okay, of another gene, okay. So that gene, okay. So you can write it like this one gene that masks the expression of another gene is known as epistatic gene and the phenomena is epistasis right and the phenomena is epistasis are you getting it so basically and one more thing that you need to write it and the gene whose expression is getting masked that is hypostatic gene that is hypostatic gene i'll give you one very simple example here Let's say if uh, sometimes it happens now that in front of our uh, uh, parents, like sometimes in front of mother or father, it depends, right, to whom you are scared of. So sometimes in their presence, we are not able to express what we feel. Just say, let's say your father has said, Ki, okay, fine, you are not going out and you will be like, okay, but you want to go there, right? Sometimes it happens. So in front of your father, you are not able to express yourself, right? You cannot say that, no, I want to go out. You'll be like, okay, okay. But later on with your mother, you'll be like, Are, I want to go out. You didn't help me, right? My father is like this. My father is like that. Sometimes it happens. So basically, in the presence of your father, right? Your father masks, your father is going to mask your expression. Yeah, your father, because of your father, you were not able to express yourself. So your father is epistatic and you are hypostatic, right? Your father is epistatic and you are 
hypostatic isn't it sometimes it happens sometimes in front of teacher or you can take any example right you can take any 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 example so same is the case here that in the presence of one gene another gene is not expressing itself because that gene is masking its expression right one gene is masking the expression of another gene because of that right because of that that gene cannot express itself clear bache so this is what epistasis is and the gene whose expression will be masked that gene will be hypostatic okay so we have two examples here one is dominant epistasis one is dominant epistasis and another example is recessive epistasis one is dominant epistasis and another example is recessive epistasis so dominant epistasis means which is your epistatic gene should be in its dominant form right so what will be the pos possible genotype here what will, what should be the possible genotype here exactly dominant epistasis means uh, let's say you are taking two genes a and b so if it is the dominant epistasis right the epi let's say a is your epistatic okay and b is your hypostatic fine so so dominant epistasis here the gene it should be in this particular genotype if it is capital a capital a capital a capital uh, uh, small a then it can mask the expression of b otherwise it cannot right let's say if this is the genotype b will not express okay if this is the genotype again b will not express if right if this is the genotype again b will not express because already it is in recessive form so if this is the genotype b will express isn't it b will express why because it is the example of dominant epistasis the epistatic gene should be should be in dominant form but here it is in recessive form okay here it is in recessive form that's the point fine that's the point got it sure 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 and what about the recessive epistasis right here it should be in this this format so if this is the case b will express this is bache i am giving you this example to make this topic easy for you i hope you are getting it here also b will express right but here b will not express so this is a difference in dominant and the recessive epistasis and the example that we need to discuss is it is of summer squash cucurbita pepo okay we need to discuss the example of cucurbita pepo understood sure sure are you sure right so let's take the example of dominant epistasis right let's discuss the example of dominant epistasis right and it is in the case of in summer squash right the fruit color in summer squash fruit color in summer squash so here what is the condition bache see your capital y is giving yellow fruit color in dominant form right it is giving yellow fruit color in dominant form the y is giving small y is giving green color green color of fruit and this w is epistatic over y means if w is present y is not going to express itself right bache right bache so epistatic gene over y and y okay not just over the y it is over the small y as well clear 
clear so in that case the food will uh, the fruit will be white in color okay so let's take one example let's say if this is the case here it should be white and here it should be green don't you think here it should be green because this small y is coding small y is giving the green color yes bachche so what will be there in f1 f1 will be this right so because it is the dominant epistasis it is present in dominant it is present in dominant form so here also the fruit color is white okay here also the fruit color is white so now what we need to do next students we need to draw the punnett square everyone please make it be quick please practice these crosses with me please make this punnett squares okay please kindly so what what should be the gametes capital w capital y capital w small y small w capital y small w small y capital w capital y capital w small y small w capital y small w small y so let's take it randomly so if it is capital w small w capital y small y the fruit color will be white okay so if it is small w small w capital y small y then fruit will be yellow in color here also small w small w capital y small y it will be yellow in color so that's how you have to make this right that's how you have to make it and you will get to know about the fruit color so i'll just tell you the ratio here the ratio for dominant epistasis is 12 is to 3 is to 1 means 12 white 3 yellow 1 green fine 1 green so you are going to solve it right you are going to solve it fine bachche and for recessive epistasis the ratio is 9 is to 4 and uh, the example is mice coat color right the example is mice coat color done so this is all about the non allelic interaction and the next thing that we need to discuss is this polygenic inheritance or the quantitative inheritance yes bachche so are you ready now nah, ma'am no ma'am initially we were active but now we are not hai na now we are not है ना वी कैन रिपीट वन मोर ईयर है ना वी कैन रिपीट वन मोर ईयर बट वी कैन नॉट स्टडी राइट नाउ सो यू नीड द ब्रेक फाइन सो वी स्टार्टेड एट नाइन ट्वेंटी राइट सो ब्रेक टाइम टिल यू नीड ब्रेक टिल it's 20 so we'll start at 11:35 is it okay fine no it's fine we'll start at 11:35 don't worry because we have to it's a long chapter you know that and imagine molecular basis of inheritance it's very 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 lengthy i really don't think the way you people are going you can finish molecular basis of inheritance in one go see we can speed up it's not like that we cannot we can but the point is i need your response as well i can increase my speed we can just finish this polygenic inheritance quickly and next topics are not at all difficult it is simply theory based topic chromosomal theory right you have to understand how chromosome and genes they are related then linkage part is there about the drosophila we uh, need to know and then sex determination and finally the disorders will be there it is a pedigree analysis where you need to put the energy right where you need to put that energy rest everything is easy chalo theek hai break time enjoy your break time
हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक सो नाउ आर यू ऑल गुड चार्ज अप सो वेलकम बैक एवरीवन वेलकम बैक so i hope you all are doing very well now uh, let's talk about the polygenic inheritance see uh till one we will finish polygenic inheritance chromosomal theory of inheritance the linkage in detail and moreover we will even finish the sex determination okay and then we have to talk about the pedigree analysis trust me pedigree analysis is a very easy topic right and when it comes to the disorder and mutation it's very simple we have co already covered mendelian disorders then we will be covering uh, then we will discuss the chromosomal disorders so trust me that is also easy so we can finish the chapter today right we can finish the chapter today in this break time this is what i was thinking initially uh, you know because of your low energy even i was feeling the same ki today i think i should end the class we should keep the part one, uh, part 2 but it is of no use right you know it is going to break our flow don't you think so yes samiksha it is going to break our flow right if i will leave this chapter today and uh, if i'll start taking the part 2 so i have to take it around 11 am okay then it will be of no use you people are not even interested in part 2 today we can finish it somehow we can finish it theek hai so please charge up and let's finish this chapter because you know that genetics is important and in molecular basis of inheritance bachche right all that mechanism your replication transcription translation genetic code the operands even the dna fingerprinting all the topics are very important but i'll make sure right i'll add the notes there right i'll make the notes earlier and i'll show you that only okay so we will finish it in 6 to 7 hours but before that let's finish this chapter and uh, what do you want me to start after molecular basis of inheritance yes what do you want me to start after molecular basis of inheritance the biotech or human health and disease the biotech and human health and disease we'll go as per majority okay samiksha we have to finish class 11th uh, 12th first then we will go to the class 11th right i really don't want to mix up the topics let's finish your class 12th syllabus then we'll move to the class 11th one biotech so majority of students they are saying biotech definitely i will start biotech and even after finishing molecular basis of inheritance biotech is going to be very easy for you you can relate the them right you can relate these two chapters fine चलो सो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज पॉलीजेनिक इनहेरिटेंस आल्सो नोन एज क्वांटिटेटिव इनहेरिटेंस ओके सो व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय द वर्ड पॉलीजेनिक यस व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय द वर्ड पॉलीजेनिक क्विक स्टूडेंट्स क्विकली answer it to me many genes controlling one character exactly see it's very simple poly means many right many genes polygenic many genes they are controlling right many genes they are controlling single character okay many times students they confuse these three concepts one is pleiotropy okay another is your polygenic inheritance right and the third thing is multiple allelism i have seen right that many students they confuse these three different topics it's very simple when it is pleiotropy you are talking about a single gene right what are you discussing when it is the pleiotropy a single gene is controlling many character right a single gene is controlling many characters that's what bache that's what your pleiotropy is now when you talk about the polygenic inheritance poly means many genes are controlling one character isn't it it's it's opposite of pleiotropy right so many genes are controlling 
many genes are controlling one character that is what polygenic inheritance is i am repeating it again pleiotropy right a single gene is having many contrasting characters right a single gene is controlling many it is having many phenotypic effects it is controlling many characters but when it is the polygenic inheritance many genes are controlling one character okay many genes are controlling one character and multiple alleles it's simple one gene is having more than one gene is having more than two alleles that's what multiple allelism is right that's what multiple allelism is right so now let's focus on this topic that is polygenic inheritance again i'm repeating it but please do not make mistake many genes are controlling one character okay so that's why it is also the quantitative inheritance it's the, it is the example of quantitative inheritance but here you will see additive effect what is the meaning of additive effect addition right the dominant g uh, the dominant alleles they are going to add to the phenotype ultimately that's what we know like let's say if you're talking about a pair of genes you know that dominant one is the dominant one is responsible for controlling a particular trait the dominant one is going to form the enzyme right and that enzyme will provide us a particular trait that's what we know isn't it samiksha that's what we know now the point here is in this polygenic inheritance that there will be many 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 alleles and that alleles when the number of dominant alleles will increase right the number of dominant alleles will increase obviously that particular enzyme will also increase and at it will add to the phenotype okay so more number of more number of dominant allele means right let's uh, take the example of human skin color more number of dominant alleles means more darker will be the skin okay more melanin production will be there okay so there are many characters many characters which are controlled by many genes so there are many examples like uh, one example is also the human height another example is human skin color okay another example is human skin color clear bachi so when it comes to the human skin color fine so human skin color is controlled by three genes right it is controlled by three genes so in the multiple allelism i gave you the formula to check the number of genotype but here we have one formula by which we can check number of phenotypes what can we check students number of phenotypes that how many phenotypes are possible right that how many phenotypes are possible and it's simple 2n plus 1 so n is the number of polygenes what is n n is the number of polygenes so human skin color is controlled by three genes so here we are going to have seven different phenotypes how many phenotypes are there seven so when you talk about the multiple alleles you talk about the genotype but when you talk about the uh, uh, polygenic inheritance you are talking about the phenotype clear bachche so tri hybrid cross which cross do we need to consider tri hybrid cross and there are points that you need to remember related to this polygenic inheritance let's let's say take the example of two parents right a a b b c c they all are capital all are dominant right so here the skin color is going to be black it is going to be very dark isn't it it is going to be very dark right and here because all are recessive it is going to be very light generally bachche when we talk about the f1 generation this is as per mendelian inheritance now as per mendel when you talk about the f1 generation f1 is right f1 is like a one parent isn't it f1 is like one parent but here the f1 generation here the f1 generation will be an intermediate when you discuss the human skin color so f1 will be mulatto intermediate skin tone will be there it is it is not like the parent one it is not like the parent two it is intermediate what is it it is intermediate now bachche let's talk about the selfing okay the selfing of this f1 generation 
सो यू नो दैट वी हैव टू मेक द गैमिट्स सो डू यू नो वॉट टाइप ऑफ येस बच्चे डू यू नो हाउ टू फॉर्म द गैमिट्स इन अ ट्राई हाइब्रिड क्रॉस येस बच्चे डू यू नो हाउ टू फॉर्म द गैमिट्स इन अ ट्राई हाइब्रिड क्रॉस एनी वन इन द क्लास एनी वन इन द क्लास डू यू नो हाउ टू मेक द gametes in a tri hybrid cross you can apply the formula that we have discussed today yes bachcho you all can apply the formulas that we have discussed today just let me tell you here so it's a tri hybrid cross what about the number of zygote apply the formula 4n right so it is going to be 64 for the genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratios also you can apply the formulas but you know that it is post mendelian inheritance so accordingly changes will be there so just look at the gamete formation you can use the fork method here so it will be a b c it will be capital a capital b small c it will be capital a small b capital c capital a small b small c then small a capital b capital c small a capital b small c right then small a small b capital c small a small b small c so with the help of fork method you can make the gametes so eight gametes are formed by one parents eight gametes will be formed by another parents right another parent that's why bachche we will have this right we are going to have this right 64 zygotes will be there how many zygotes will be there 64 zygotes will be there is that clear whenever you talk about the tri hybrid cross what are you going to see bachche what are you going to see 64 zygotes will be there done done so it is the case of quantitative inheritance right bachche it is it is a case of quantitative inheritance so the number of polygenes right the number of these polygenes is going to decide the melanin production more number of dominant alleles means more will be the melanin production is that clear sure yes bachche is that clear so it is the melanin pigment that will dip, uh, decide our that will determine our skin color and amount of melanin it depends upon these three pairs of genes okay right so this write down a b and c you know these three genes are present at different locus this is important these three genes are present at different locus locus is the plural locus is the singular so students you can compare this point with the multiple allelism as well right you can compare this point mcq can come from this part you can compare this point with the multiple allelism as well in multiple allelism all i said is that alleles are going to present at the same locus on the homologous chromosome but here i'm saying because because there we were talking about the alleles right one gene is having more than two alleles but here we are talking about the genes so these genes are present at different locus or right they are present at different loci right and each dominant gene is responsible for the melanin production right so always remember the the additive effect is there okay the additive effect is there sure yes which is it clear so total six alleles are there and three genes are there they are in pair na basically they are in pair na okay so now you know the gametes here this is your homework you will make the table and you are going to draw the tri hybrid cross fine that is your homework and a best way to revise this you will draw this tri hybrid square okay you are going to draw this tri hybrid square understood and do you know about the ratios yes do you know about the ratios here students anyone anyone in the class total 64 are there na
because total 64 are there so that's what you are going to get right so obviously obviously this one one is telling us about the dark colors right it is telling us about what it is telling us about the dark color it is very dark that one is very light isn't it this one is very dark this one is very light this is dark six this is about the phenotype and this one is about light okay then bache then see very dark then comes the dark right very light then comes the light right bache then fairly dark fairly light and the intermediate fairly dark fairly light and the intermediate see so how many phenotypes are there yes bache how many phenotypes are there seven isn't it seven phenotypes how many phenotypes are there right so that's what you need to remember understood that's what you need to remember so number of phenotype for polygenes will be 2n plus 1 this formula is different so if you want to check the phenotype i told you already the formula is going to be 2n plus 1 for the right it is not same like earlier i said na, number of phenotypes you can check by 2 raised to power n that is mendelian inheritance it is polygenic so here it will be 2n plus 1 okay 2n plus 1 so 2 into 3 it will be fine 2 into 3 it will be right and number of genotype for number of genotype yeah same formula will work 3 raised to power n so n is 3 here that is 27 so 27 different genotypes will be there okay 27 different genotypes will be there so additive effect this is what you need to focus and another important point is this one that all these genes they are present at different locus okay so here you can see right six five five so they are telling us about the right the number of individuals as well so see this this part here can you see this bache? this is the skin pigmentation and the relative frequency in f2 this is this side is showing the skin pigmentation and the frequency in the second generation okay so obviously very light very dark right da uh, dark light fairly dark fairly light and this one is the intermediate so intermediate you know na, that's 20 right 20 by 64 that's why it's like that fine so you need you can also remember the fractions here that's all fine you can just remember the fraction here so this is what you need to know about the polygenic inheritance i told you now it's very simple yes but this pro polygenic inheritance it is very simple fine so bell shaped normal distribution curve is there you all have seen that right and uh, intermediate ones are the more frequent one okay intermediate ones are the more frequent one fine so other than that cob length in maze human intelligence height in human size of human they all are the examples of polygenic inheritance right so cob length and maze the our height our size right even the intelligence our intelligence depends upon many genes okay our intelligence it depends upon many genes so that is what polygenic inheritance is so let's repeat the uh, this uh, ratio with me it's 1 6 15 20 15 6 and 1 it's 1 16 60, 6 15 20 15 6 and 1 it's simple okay it's simple right so next is bache chromosomal theory of inheritance okay next is what chromosomal theory of inheritance so bache to understand the chromosomal theory of inheritance right we are going to we are going to revise it from the ncrt okay we are going to revise it from the NCRT. So, are you ready for this, Bache? Yes, directly from NCRT we'll revise it. Maximum by 2.30 we can finish this chapter with proper detailed explanation. Okay. 
and if we'll speed up then we can finish it till 2 so it depends upon you if there is any spammer you can block that spammer even i will block that spammer okay don't let people spam and just focus here and let's revise it okay so let's revise it as per ncrt so mendel published his work on inheritance in 1865 so when i started this lecture this is the point that i have mentioned right that mendel published his experiment in 1865 but he conducted his experiment till 1863 so this is what you need to remember okay so for several reasons it remained unrecognized you know that firstly communication was not easy these days communication is easy but at that time Mendel didn't get the proper publicity okay secondly his concept of genes or the factors right as a stable unchanged and discrete units that control the expression of a traits and of the pair of allele which did not blend with each other was not accepted people were not able to accept that there is something which is you know stable which is passing from one generation to another which is in pair which is not showing blending right so people were not agree with this concept okay bache okay bache right so it was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for the apparently continuous variation seen in nature thirdly mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain the biological phenomena clear bache it was totally new so finally mendel's work suggested that factors were discrete he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of these factors right that's what we know so this is also we have covered that in 1900 three scientists hugo de vries carl Korins, and eric von schemach right they independently rediscovered mendel's result on the inheritance of the character now what are they trying to explain they are saying that also by this time due to advancement in microscopy right it is a microscopy that helped a lot so basically we biologists right we need physicists as well okay so microscopy it helped a lot to understand our cells to understand our system so as it is written here but due to the advancements in microscopy that were taking place scientists were able to carefully observe cell division so because of that it led to the discovery of structures in the nucleus right and that structures are double and they divide just before each cell division so that's why i always used to say that cell division biomolecule genetics biotech these are the units that you should do all together okay right when you when you start revising your syllabus now you should do it all together okay so these are the chromosomes the colored bodies right the colored bodies and by 1902 the chromosome movement this is important please mark it the chromosome movement during meiosis had been worked out it is important the question can come from this part that by 1902 the chromosome movement right during meiosis had been worked out so walter sutton and theodore bovary they noted that the behavior of chromosome was parallel to the behavior of genes and used chromosome movements to explain mendel's law got it so in 1902 the Sutton and the in 1902 the chromosome movement during meiosis had been worked out it is important clear bache it is important okay okay so by 1902 the meiosis during right the chromosome movement during meiosis had been worked out so Sutton and Wavri they noted the behavior of chromosome and they said it is parallel to the it is parallel to the genes and they used it uh, to explain the Mendel's law right right so this is what we need to discuss now okay so let's understand it first then I'll show you the images and uh, we'll revise the postulate so first of all do remember the name of the scientist bache right do remember the name of the scientist and that is your Sutton and Wovri they gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance okay they gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance but you see in general when you talk about the mitosis let's quickly revise mitosis and meiosis so that you can relate it also right firstly let's start with the mitosis you know that mitosis is the equational division isn't it yes but check it is the equational division yes or no what is the meaning of equational division anyone here in the class yes what is the meaning of equational division 
anyone in the class anyone in the class equational Tell me what is the meaning of equational division? Bache equational division, equational division. So you know that the daughter cells are going to have same number of chromosomes like the parental cell. That is the meaning of equational division. Right? Daughter cells are going to have same number of same number of chromosome like the parental cell. Then another is meiosis. What is the meaning of meiosis? It is the reductional division. Right? What is it? It is the reductional division. It is going to reduce the chromosome number to half. And I hope you all remember that when it comes to the meiosis, it is going to take place in two rounds of nuclear and the cytoplasmic division. Meiosis 1 will give us two haploid cells and meiosis 2 is going to give us four haploid cells. And we used to call it as gametes, isn't it? We used to call it as gametes, right, bache? That is what we know. So, when you talk about the meiosis 1, the trick is same here. It's PMAT. That is your prophase 1, metaphase 1, right, anaphase 1, the telophase 1. That's what we have. Prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. Now, when you are talking about the meiosis, in the meiosis, what do we have? Right, when it is the meiosis 1, you have the same thing. It's again PMAT, but prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and the telophase 1 is there. Then bache, there will be the meiosis 2. And here in meiosis 2, again, again it's PMAT, that is prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2 and the telophase 2. And we know that it's meiosis 2 is more like mitosis. And here in prophase 1, you have 5 substages. Can you tell me the name of that 5 substages? Anyone? Can you tell me the name of that five substages? Quick. Can you tell me the name of that five substages? Very good, Samriya. Excellent, Priya. It is going to be L, Z, P, D, D. Little Zara, please do not dance. Right. Little Zara, please do not dance. Leptotene, zygotene, paketine, diplotene, diakinesis. This is about the divisions. Okay. This is about the division. Now, we are going to relate chromosome behavior and the genes. Firstly, understand this part, then we will read it from MCRT and you will find it very easy. You know that, firstly, there is the interphase, right students? And then there is the M phase. When it is the interphase, it is having G1, it is having S, it is having G2. G1 and G2, these are the phases where there is the RNA. Right, RNA formation is there, the protein formation is there, the enzymes will synthesize, this and that. You know it, isn't it? You know it very well. Right, students, you all know it very well. So, I am not going to discuss that in detail. If you really want to revise it, right, so you can check my one-shot session on cell cycle and cell division. What we know that in the S phase, DNA duplication occurs. So, if you are denoting the initial DNA as 2C, after our S phase, it will become 4C. But you know that chromosome number will remain same. Do you remember this? Chromosome number will remain. Yes, Bache. Chromosome number will remain same. That's what we have. Chromosome number will remain same. Right? Right? So, when we start this part, right? Firstly, you know that. No doubt in interface, this is how we start that uh, the genetic material, it is decondensed, it is in the form of threads, it is tangled, right? This is what we have covered. And we know that in that tangled form itself, the, the chromosome material, the chromatin material, it get doubled, okay? It get doubled. And basically in the M phase, when it is the actual division phase, right? You know the M phase, firstly karyokinesis, the nuclear division is there. And then the cytoplasmic division is there, right? Then what is there? cytoplasmic division is there 
right that's what we have covered students nuclear division and the cytoplasmic division nuclear division and the cytoplasmic division so basically actually in this nuclear division the condensation starts but just to explain you this topic i will show you the condensed chromosomes here only okay so basically right the chromosomes which used to be in this form let's say there is a cell there is a cell having four chromosome 2n is equals to 4 let's take this example 2n is equals to 4 so remember after s phase right after s phase the chromosomes are going to be this it will be a dyad if you are not able to understand again please watch cell cycle and cell division okay okay so it's 1 2 3 4 here also it's 1 2 3 4 it's just that dna duplication is here right here dna was 2c here it will become 4c only the dna duplication is there only the dna duplication is there clear so now in the prophase one or in the metaphase one firstly let's take the example of prophase one as i said bache four chromosomes are there right how many chromosomes are there four chromosomes are there right how many chromosomes are there four so you know that in prophase all that you know the synapses with the pairing of homologous chromosome will be there the crossing over will be there do i need to explain that akash do i need to explain that yes do i need to explain that kids those who are spamming please block them all of you please block them no now there is no need to explain that so we know that we know that there is the pairing in the prophase one in the zygotine there is the pairing then crossing over and all that things will occur so when it is the metaphase one right when it is the metaphase one so in the metaphase one right it is the metaphase one so in the metaphase one these homologous pair of chromosome they align themselves on the equatorial plate sorry at the equatorial plate they are going to align themselves at the equatorial plate in the metaphase one and now when it is the anaphase one right they will get separated there will be their disjunction separation will be there they will get separated that's the story isn't it that's the story that's how they are going to separate so now when you're talking about these chromosome obviously they are having the genes let's say here you have a right you can take the example of any gene small a is there capital b and capital b is there so after dna duplication here you have capital a capital a here you are going to have small a small a here you are going to have capital b capital b here also capital b capital b so just look at this right look at this no doubt the homologous pair is arranging itself at the equatorial plate so they are having the gene yes but they are having the gene a a a a right let's say here you are talking about the bb so obviously when there is the anna phase one this capital a and the small a it is getting separated the small b and capital b is getting separated when i was explaining you this part initially now this is what i have explained right right so basically what is happening no doubt right that's how the divisions are going on in metaphase one the bivalent will arrange itself in anaphase one the bivalent will separate itself so when the bivalent is separating itself because genes are present on chromosome so obviously that alleles from that pair they are also getting separated that alleles from that pair they are also getting separated can you see that students can you see that so after telophase and when again when again there is yes students because you are going to get four cells so again after right after telophase one after prophase one right when you are having that metaphase two so in metaphase two this is the scenario total four cells will form now samiksha this is the scenario so if your basics if your basics of the cell division they are good then you can understand it very quickly right right so this is the one case and this is going to be the another case this is going to be the another case even later on you can check the class notes you will definitely understand it okay so after this anaphase 2 the chromatids will separate 
okay what is going to happen the chromatids are going to separate see again it will become monad so see even the chromosomes are getting separated even that alleles are getting separated so that's how we compare their behavior right that's how we compare their behavior look at this diagram bache look at this diagram so in the g1 phase you know that they are in monad form right because dna duplication is not there after s phase you know that dna will get duplicated okay so that is why total four chromosomes are there but they are all are doubled they all are having what they all are having the sister chromatids okay they all are having the sister chromatids so i explained you it in detail right so in the in the meiosis one anaphase one in the meiosis one anaphase one so basically compare with this diagram yes students compare with this diagram so basically in the metaphase one what is happening in the metaphase one see the bivalent is arranging itself so in the anaphase one that bivalent is getting separated so when bivalent is getting separated means it is separating the alleles from that pair of genes can you see that it is separating the alleles from that pair of genes and but after anaphase 2 the sister chromatids will separate further okay okay the so dna amount will divide further so this is given in this image so you should know about the naming also yes but you should know about the namings also see you people can see here that after anaphase 2 what is happening the sister chromatids are separating and here only only the pair is separating right and here see the sister chromatids are separating right so you will get the germ cells right so let's see if on yellow chromosome if it is if this is the thing that we have on yellow you will have capital a on orange you will have small a okay and let's say you are taking this example bb red one will contain capital b green one will contain small b so here capital a capital b you have small a small b like this like this even alleles will also divide this is the chromosomal theory of inheritance so you know that right the chromosomes are also right they are also getting separated the way we were talking about the genes are you getting it the way we were talking about the gene so it is written here also that during anaphase one of meiosis one two chromosome pairs they align at the metaphase player plate independently of each other right so compare the chromosome of four different color this is what we have already discussed i really don't think that we need to uh, discuss it in detail so here you have the postulates as well for your quick revision right i have added these pos postulates like the hereditary traits right like the hereditary traits the chromosome retain their number structure and individuality throughout the life of an organism this is the comparison but right they say like the hereditary traits means like the genes right but like the hereditary traits means yes but like the like the genes even the chromosome they retain their number they retain their structure and the individuality throughout the life of organism from generation to generation and to neither get lost nor get mixed up they behave as a unit right they behave as a unit then both chromosomes as well as genes they are present in pairs we have seen that right the two alleles of a gene pair they are located on homologous sites on the homologous chromosome right this is also we have discussed so gamete is having only one chromosome of a type like if this is the bivalent if this bivalent is getting separated so one gamete will have one chromosome of each type like the pair right, right like the pair of the alleles clear that one particular gamete will have only one allele of a particular character that's how we have to compare it then but the pair condition of both chromosome as well as mendelian factor is restored during fertilization and the time of fertilization when they will fuse again again the even the chromosome will become pair paired and even that genes will become paired so this is the chromosomal theory of inheritance given by sutton and wavri clear given by sutton and wavri
right so they argued that the pairing and separation of pair of chromosome would lead to the se separation of pair of factors they carried so Sutton united the knowledge of chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principle and called it as chromosomal theory of inheritance so these points are from NCRT now but when it comes to the experimental proof always remember this thing experimental proof of chromosomal theory of inheritance is given by T.H. Morgan and that's why he's the father of experimental genetics. Are you getting it? The experimental proof of chromosomal theory of inheritance it is given by Thomas Hunt Morgan. Right? So see following the synthesis of ideas experimental verification of chromosomal theory of inheritance was given by Thomas Hunt Morgan. It is very important question. Right? Right? Thomas Hunt Morgan and his colleague they discovered the basis for the verification that sexual reproduction produced so morgan worked with the drosophila melanogaster so you know that morgan was the first person to apply the Mende uh, mendelian principles on the animals and that animal is drosophila melanogaster so that's why he is also known as the father of experimental genetics is that clear that's why he's also known as the father of experimental genetics clear bache? and why drosophila because of its short life cycle you know now it is very easy to handle right on simple synthetic medium we can grow it in lab right bache? the number of chromosomes the number of chromosomes they are less isn't it right even its lifespan is very less it is just about two weeks so see there why is it useful for such studies because they complete their life cycle in about two weeks single mating could produce a large number of progeny flies right and there is a clear differentiation of the sexes we can see which one is male which one is female okay bache? and this many types of hereditary verifications are there and we can see that verification with a low power microscope as well that's why drosophila is preferred understood that's why drosophila is preferred so can you tell me the chromosome number in the case of drosophila Yes, Bache. Can you just tell me the chromosome number? Yes, in the case of Drosophila, can you just tell me the chromosome number? Lifespan is two weeks now. Bache, in the case of Drosophila, four pairs of chromosome means eight. Eight chromosomes are present. Okay, they are morphologically distinct. What are they? They are morphologically distinct. Clear, bache? Yes. Right, and even in drosophila, in salivary gland, polyteen chromosome is present. Polyteen chromosome is present in salivary gland and that is used for studying chromosomal abrasion right that is used for studying chromosomal abrasion chromosomal abrasions means bache, that is used for studying the defect in the chromosome structure okay that is used to study the chromosome defects understood are you sure is it clear nandini everyone here in the class is that clear so four pair of chromosomes are there polyteen chromosome is there lifespan is very less it is two weeks male and female we can easily identify them many variations are also there it is very easy to grow easy to handle okay okay that's why he experimented on this right so before moving for forward just check this comparison table in between the behavior of chromosome and gene so let me tell you ha huh, you tell me what is a what is b what is a what is b but in the final paper in the neat paper they can simply instead of a and b they can put the blanks they can ask you which one is about the gene which one is about the chromosome right they can uh, miss these points and they can ask you to mention them right obviously options will be given so accordingly you have to compare so one thing is occur in pairs occur in pairs so obviously both chromosome and gene they occur in pairs next is they segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete now here segregated time of gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete again see next independent pairs segregate independently of each other so it is giving us the hint that a is gene 
Why? Because what what they have mentioned, Anjini, what what have they mentioned? They are saying that independent pairs they segregate independently of each other. Like there is one G, capital R, capital Y. They are independently separate, right? They are not affecting each other's segregation. But here they are saying that one pair segregates independently of another, right? Like let's say the complete pair they are considering, and they just mentioned that independent pairs already that gene pairs. They are independent and independently they will segregate. Clear, bache? Clear, clear, clear. So here they are talking about different, different homologous chromosomes, right? One pair of homologous chromosome and another. Here they simply mentioned about the genes. Okay. Okay, so A is gene and B is chromosome. So please pay attention. Your MCQ can come from this part. I told you now this topic is very easy. We'll finish it very quickly. Right? We'll finish it very quickly. Chalo. So here you can see that comparison table as well. See, meiosis 1, anaphase 1. This bivalent is getting separated. So, but in anaphase, bivalent separate. In anaphase 1, bivalent separate. The homologous pair of the homologous pair of chromosome is separate means that factors right that, that alleles from that pair of gene they separate it is a previous year question so the allele from that pair of gene it separates when it is the meiosis 2 means the anaphase 2 so there is the splitting of centromere right there is the splitting of centromere sister chromatids they separate so now obviously if you have this chromosome both of them are having capital A capital A because it is the sister chromatid it is formed by the duplication of this. So in anaphase 2, even they will separate. Right? So that, you know, DNA content, it will be divided properly. So this is what we are going to get in germ cells. So see, diploid state is having 4 chromosome. Haploid state is having only 2 chromosome. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Fine. Okay. So possibility 1. 1 long orange and short green chromosome. Long yellow and short red chromosome at the same pole. 1 long orange and short red chromosome and long yellow and short green chromosome at the same pole. So basically what are they showing bache? The simple segregation it is. Right? The simple segregation it is. And you know that uh, yes, here they have mentioned. Right? So they have compared the colors in the left and right in the left column. Right? Orange and green is segregating together but in the right hand column the orange is segregating with red. That's all. Nothing else. Fine? Nothing else. So anything is possible. This red can go with green one. Uh, sorry, this orange can go with green one. It can also go with go with red one. So this is what they are trying to show. Understood? This comparison clear? So can we start the next topic that is linkage and the recombination? Can we start the another topic that is linkage and recombination? Firstly, we'll be talking about the linkage. Yes, Bache. So who gave the experimental proof for the chromosomal theory of inheritance? Who provided the experimental proof for the chromosomal theory of inheritance? Quick. Who provided the experimental proof for the chromosomal theory of inheritance? T.H. Morgan. T.H. Morgan worked on? Yes, T.H. Morgan worked on? He worked on? Drosophila melanogaster. What are the special points about Drosophila? Yes. What are the special points about the Drosophila? Yes, Krutika, Nikita, Nandini, Priya, Darshini, Samiksha, Saucy. Yes, but you. Sure. 
very good very good and i hope you remember that in the case of drosophila the sex determination is just like the humans right right males are also having xy males are also having xy chromosome fine males are also having what they are having the xy chromosome okay so let's talk about the linkage first and if you in detail if you will read the morgan's experiment now when he experimented on drosophila but then actually he came to know about the linkage like when he applied the mendel's law on drosophila so he observed that inheritance pattern is not like the mendel described okay he observed many things about it so when it is the chromosomal theory of inheritance that is given by sutton and wobbly when it is the chromosomal theory of inheritance it is given by sutton and wobbly but when it is the chromosomal theory of linkage it is given by thomas hunt morgan because when he experimented on drosophila he even observed that the eye color in the drosophila eye color is basically linked to the sex chromosomes what he observed that the eye color in the case of drosophila it is related to the sex chromosomes it is not present on the it is not present on the autosomes it is present on the sex chromosomes it is present on x chromosomes and that that that's uh, these uh, you know criss cross inheritance pattern is there in drosophila like father is going to pass the character to the grandson fine father is going to pass the characters to the grandson right through the daughters and females will transfer sex link traits to their granddaughters through the son this is the criss cross inheritance pattern so that is also observed by the mendel so he came to know about the linkage that the, that the inheritance pattern is not as described by mendel right some characters you know they are passing together from generation to generation so he come up with the idea of chromosomal theory of linkage but let me tell you he was not the first one who observed the linkage do you know that he was not the first one who observed the linkage so anjani the first point here is the what is linkage so it is the physical association of genes right what is it it is the physical association of genes on a chromosome it is physical association of genes on a chromosome that is the linkage see again i am repeating never ever make this mistake that it is a sister chromatid it is not a chromosome it is also a chromosome it is also a chromosome and even this is also a chromosome it is the chromosome after s phase it is the chromosome after s phase so firstly the genetic material is not duplicated here it is the dyed genetic material is duplicated here so firstly remember this thing this is just for your quick revision now i am saying the physical association of genes on a chromosome it is the linkage that's what i said that's what i said so this is the this is a chromosome so this chromosome is having the genes it is having the genes like a b c d right you can name it anything you can call it anything right so these are the genes they are present on a chromosome right in a linear order they are present on a chromosome so their physical association we are calling it as what we are calling it as linkage right right the tendency to stay together when they are passing from one generation to another it is also the linkage clear bachche clear 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 okay so sex linkage was first discovered by morgan and it is in drosophila right sex linkage was first discovered by morgan in drosophila i told you now that eye color is associated with the sex chromosome and specially the x chromosome okay eye color is associated with the sex chromosome and specially the x chromosome understood right understood so he gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance uh, chromosomal theory of linkage clear bachche so morgan coined the term linkage and he gave chromosomal theory of linkage and chromosomal theory of inheritance was given by sutton and wobbly and as i said he was not the first one to reported this 
टू रिपोर्ट द लिंकेज लाइक बच्चे वेटसन एंड पनेट दे वर एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग डू यू नो दैट आई गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल डू यू नो अबाउट दिस स्टोरी येस इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स वेटसन एंड पनेट दे वर एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग ऑन लेथायरस ऑडोरेटस राइट यू नो दीज नेम्स राइट वॉटसन एंड पनेट इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स और सेवन आई डोंट रिमेंबर एग्जैक्टली राइट वॉटसन एंड पनेट दे वर experimenting on lathyrus odoratus can you tell me the local name of lathyrus odoratus or the english name of lathyrus odoratus yes can you just tell me can you just tell me so see स्वीट पी राइट वेरी गुड सो दे वर एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग सो लाइक दे टुक टू कैरेक्टर्स ब्लू ब्लू कलर्ड एंड लॉन्ग पॉलन ग्रीन एंड रेड कलर्ड एंड राउंड पॉलन ग्रीन सो दे टुक अ डाई हाइब्रिड क्रॉस राइट दे टुक अ डाई हाइब्रिड क्रॉस means the inheritance of the two genes so blue and long pollen grains red and round pollen grains so bachche if it is a dihybrid cross so in general what should be the yes what should be the test cross ratio yes priya bachche in general what should be the test cross ratio yes exactly right it should be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 but they didn't get this test cross ratio instead of that they get this ratio 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 okay 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 clear bachche so parental combination blue and long pollen grains and red with red pollen grains they were higher than the non parental combinations clear bachche right so what they observed that red blue and long pollen grains they were more than the red and uh, blue and long pollen grains and red and round pollen grains they were more means parental combinations were more just look at this bachche right in the linkage we are saying the genes which are present on a chromosome right you know that they all are present in a linear order so they use, so see if linkage is there there is no independent assortment so linkage is simply saying that genes they will inherit together as a unit they will not get separated what independent assortment was saying that genes one gene is not affecting the segregation of another gene right one gene pair is not going to affect the segregation of another gene pair but here they are saying that two genes right which are present on same chromosome they will move together as a unit it depends upon the distance between them that's why i just said the physical association of genes on a chromosome is linkage how linked they are clear clear so linkage and independent assortment these are two different concepts so independent assortment is only possible when these genes are located on different chromosomes and when genes are present on same chromosome it is a linkage priya it is the linkage clear what is it it is the linkage that's what you need to remember right so for the first time it was reported by wetson and punnett they got this ratio they were expecting 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 test cross ratio but instead of that instead of that they got right 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 as the test cross ratio understood understood now to explain this what they did they gave the coupling and the repulsion theory which theory they gave they gave the coupling and the repulsion theory do you know about it yes do you know about it coupling and repulsion anyone in the class anyone in the class what is that coupling part and the repulsion you know now when two genes right a and b when they are coming from same parent they will enter the same gamete they will transfer together that is coupling okay so i'll come to this later first of all let's discuss the linkage right let's link discuss the proper linkage so first thing that we need to understand is complete linkage means total linkage now see students it's very simple like let's say this is a chromosome a b c d 
this one two three four now see uh, a and b they are very close to each other don't you think they will move together as a unit yes don't you think they will move together as a unit don't you think they will move together as a unit tell me obviously now if you talk about the four and the d don't you think they have a distance in between yes samiksha don't you think that they have a they are having a quite a distance in between so during crossing over during recombination they might get separated can i say so that during recombination during crossing over they might get separated right so we have two things one you what do you know about the linkage that it is the physical association the genes which are present on same chromosome they tend to move together as a unit in the next generation that's what i just said clear bachche so again i'm repeating my point the genes which are present on same chromosome they will tend to move together as a unit not the genes which are present on different chromosome so if they are present on different chromosomes obviously then then bachche they might get separated right just a for an example if i have to give you one example 1 2 a and b it is present on same chromosome this is another a and b okay now here you are considering two different pairs okay so here you have a you can even consider the single one just a minute otherwise you might get confused wait so now let's see a a b b now see a and b they are present on same chromosome right a and b yes bachche niharika they are present nikita they are present on same chromosome so they will enter the same gamete they will form ab ab right in the gametes you will see capital a and capital b together small a and small b together why because they are present on same chromosome that's what linkage is telling us right now when it is the independent assortment so a and b they are not present on same chromosomes yes or no they are not present on same chromosome they are present on different chromosome so there is the possibility that capital a can get capital b capital a can get small b small a can get small ca uh, capital a small a can get small b so here because you are taking the example of the genes which are located on the same chromosome so it will show linkage if you are taking the example of the genes which are located on different chromosome it will show independent assortment so when independent assortment is there right linkage is not there when linkage is there independent assortment is not there understood anuradha understood now i told you that it depends upon the distance so now complete linkage means totally parent like right nikita complete linkage means totally parent like like in the next progeny you will have in the next generation you will have same parent like combination okay you will have same parent like combination there will be new there will be no new combination do you think it is possible do you think it is possible i'm not going to write it down but please try to understand the mechanism here what are we discussing we are discussing the complete linkage complete linkage means totally like parents are having 4 3 2 1 a b c d this is passed as such to the next generation so in that case it will be just like the clone the identical one because there is no new combination right so obviously complete linkage is something rare it is something rare we cannot say that it is not present it is present this example is important so male drosophila male drosophila used to show this complete linkage and even other than male drosophila we have female silk moth right female silk moth even their case in uh, in female case also you will see yes bachche here also you will see complete linkage is that clear is that clear right 
सो दिस इज द कंप्लीट लिंकेज समथिंग रेयर नाउ बच्चे वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द इनकम्प्लीट लिंकेज वॉट इज इनकम्प्लीट लिंकेज राइट दैट देयर इज लाइक लेट से दिस फोर्थ वन एंड डी दे आर हैविंग अ डिस्टेंस इन बिटवीन दैम सो देयर आर चांसेस दैट दे माइट गेट सेपरेटेड राइट ड्यूरिंग द मीट फॉर्मेशन दे माइट गेट सेपरेटेड isn't it so in that case there will be the incomplete linkage so in incomplete linkage we will see more parental combinations still we will see more parental combinations and few new combination or you can say that the non parental one but again it will be few you cannot say that it is too many it is going to be very less okay it is going to be very less so this complete linkage and incomplete linkage clear yes bachche complete linkage and incomplete linkage clear yes so now arrangement of these genes this is important see arrangement what is it it is the arrangement of linked genes on chromosome right it is the arrangement of linked gene on chromosome two type of arrangement is possible bachche one is cis arrangement another is trans so you know about this arrangement isn't it let's say you are taking the example of a dominant right you are taking the example of a dominant gene like a and b they are present on same chromosome small a and small b it is present on same chromosome right right so two dominant genes they are located on same chromosome two recessive genes they are located on same chromosome so because two dominant genes they are present on same chromosome and it is the they are linked genes right they are linked genes so obviously they will stay together in the next generation whenever they will form the gamete it is actually the true arrangement bachche it is actually the true arrangement rest everything will be because of crossing over but it is actually the true arrangement so no no doubt when there will be the gamete formation one gamete will get ab another gamete will get ab am i right two types of gamete will be there na two types of gamete will be there na right because a and b they belong to same parent right this is also the coupling this is let's say a a b b it belongs to one parent small a small a small b small b it belongs to another parent so obviously the gamete will get capital a capital b will move together small a small b will move together this is the coupling this is the coupling two genes which are present on same chromosome two dominant genes they are present on same chromosome so that two dominant gene will pass together to the gamete right anuradha they will pass together to the same gamete clear so when it is the uh, trans arrangement so here capital a here small a here small b here capital b so see that's how it is present capital a and capital b is different so when you will be talking about the gametes right when you people will talk about the gametes here so a and b they will not stay together for right they are not going to stay together yes or no it will be capital a small b capital small a capital b these are the gametes which we are going to get so this is the trans arrangement right this is showing the repulsion what is it showing it is showing the repulsion clear bachche yes so two genes from different parents they will enter different gametes right two genes from different parents they will enter different gametes or rather you can say that two genes from different right two genes from different parents they will enter different gametes because a and b they are present on different chromosome one chromosome is from one mother one chromosome is from father so that's why i am saying two genes present on different parents they will enter to the different gametes so these this is what you are going to get so this is the cis and trans arrangement right you also know about the complete linkage and incomplete linkage clear bachche so you know that strength of linkage it depends upon the distance right strength of linkage it depends upon the distance they both are inversely proportional more is the distance you know that less will be the linkage they both are inversely proportional to each other clear bachche they both are inversely proportional to each other 
Understood? Sure? Sure? So let's discuss that cross from NCRT. Let's discuss that cross from NCRT. Then we will talk about the linkage maps. All right? And uh, then the sex determination and uh, pedigree and the disorders part. Okay? Okay, so as I said, if you will support. Now see, there is no spamming. You all are listening to me very carefully. So of course, we can finish it. What say people? Right, we can finish the chapter. Hey, na? One more hour and the chapter will be over. Fine. And tomorrow at 11 a.m. we will be having the practice session and we will solve last 10 years PYQs of inheritance and variation. And the Ambika 10 is the coupon code, is the link code. Uh, it is the code that you have to use while joining my class. And I want more and more learners there because uh, there will be the proper poll, right? The MCQs will be there from last year's paper and you will get an idea that what kind of paper can come from this topic, okay? Done. So linkage and combination, let's revise it quickly from the NCRT. So Morgan carried out several dihybrid crosses in Drosophila to study genes that were sex linked. So the crosses were similar to dihybrid crosses carried out by Mendel. Right. So Morgan also hybridized yellow bodied white eyed females to brown bodied red eyed males. Yellow bodied white eyed females to brown body red eyed male and intercross their F1 progeny. So he observed the two genes that did not segregate independently, right? He get the different ratios. Okay. So this is as per that, right? I gave you this example now, Wetson and Punnett example. So this is what I have added for you. So this is the expected ratio. This is the observed ratio. Fine. And now come to Mr. Morgan. So Morgan and his group knew that the genes were located on X chromosome, right? You know, na? eye color in the drosophila, it is linked to the X chromosome. It is linked to the X chromosome. Isn't it? Isn't it? They saw quickly that when two genes in a dihybrid cross, when they are situated on same chromosome, the proportional of parental gene combination were much higher than the non-parental type. And Morgan attributed this due to the physical association or the linkage of two genes and he gave the term linkage. Clear bache? Clear bache? So Morgan and his group also found that even when genes were grouped on the same chromosome, some genes are very tightly linked, tightly linked, which are, which are having very less distance, which cannot get separated, okay, which will pass together to the new next generation while others which are loosely linked means which are having the distance they will still show the recombination okay so it is the percentage here he found that genes white and yellow were tightly linked so only 1.3 percent of the recombination you should remember this white and miniature wing 37.2 percent so you can understand it from this side look at this cross so it in the cross a the, these two genes they are located very closely Right. So here only 1.3% recombination is there. Right. Recombination is very less. Parental combinations are more. So look at this. The genes are located very close to each other. Okay. So yellow and white. So this example can be asked in neat paper. In the final neat paper, they can ask you the question from this part. Fine. They can literally ask you the question from this part. Understood? So cross A, cross B is given. So as I said, bache, so yellow and white, see, they are so together. So even if you will see F1 generation, they will stay together. So when they will do the selfing of F1, parental type is 9.87, recombination type is 1.37. So either they can ask you that in the case of Morgan's experiment, that yellow eyed and that white miniature part, right? These genes were having more distance or less distance? What were the percentage of the recombination or what were the percentage of the parental type? So this can be asked and yes, it is located on X chromosome. Now here, that white part and the miniature part, see. See, it is given na bache? White and yellow were tightly linked and white and miniature wing, they showed 37.2% of, 37.2% of recombination. See, wild type, wild miniature. So parental type is 62.8, recombination type is 37.2. So these two examples are important. So if you have any doubt related to it, you can tell me. So in Drosophila, eye color is located on the 
a gene for eye color is located on sex chromosome that is your x chromosome plus when it is the yellow body and the white one they are very close white one and miniature wings they are apart these two genes are, these two genes are at a distance so yes there are still chances that recombination can occur okay okay so look at this diagram it is explaining everything close to and they are having distance fine so that is why linkage is inversely proportional to the distance more is the distance less linkage right and linkage and uh, distance and recombination they are directly proportional if distance is more more chances of recombination that is crossing over will be there okay that is crossing over will be there clear sure sure any doubt thank you mummy any doubt sure bache so complete linkage the example all clear crossing over done 1.3% 37.7% clear ओके, सो एज पर क्रोमोसोमल थेरी ऑफ लिंकेज बच्चे टेंडेंसी ऑफ जीन्स टू रिमेन इन देयर पेरेंटल कॉम्बिनेशन इट्स ड्यू टू देयर प्रेजेंस ऑन सेम क्रोमोसोम इज देयर राइट लिंक्ड जीन्स इन अ लाई इन अ लीनियर सीक्वेंस इन द क्रोमोसोम ओके सो बच्चे बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द क्रोमोजोमल मैपिंग राइट आई टेल यू वन मोर थिंग नाउ सी दिस इज वन पेयर ऑफ होमोलॉगस क्रोमोजोम दिस इज अनादर पेयर ऑफ होमोलॉगस क्रोमोजोम दिस इज अनादर पेयर ऑफ होमोलॉगस क्रोमोजोम now you know it right it is homologous pair of chromosome so they are going to have same gene the allele can vary but they are going to have same gene they'll be having the same genetic information am i right they'll be having the same genetic information isn't it yes bachche isn't it this is what they are going to have even if you are talking about the humans this is what we are going to have niharika like if it is a one pair of homologous chromosome this is another pair of homologous chromosome they are going to have same information like if i will take this hormone a uh, chromosome let's say if i take this particular chromosome let's say it is having a b c d it is also having a b c d it's just that the allele can vary allele can vary so basically na we consider this homologous pair as one linkage group right we consider this homologous pairs as one linkage group right we consider it as one linkage group because it is giving us the information of same genes located in a same way now in the case of human humans especially in females right in the case of humans especially in females what's the scenario bachche what is the scenario in the case of females you know that they have 23 pairs of chromosomes so they have 23 linkage groups how many linkage groups do they have females are having 23 linkage groups females are having how many linkage groups they are having 23 linkage groups clear shrinath and now when you talk about the males males are also having 23 pairs but bachche males are having 24 human males are having 24 linkage groups can you tell me why can you tell me why it's very simple in the case of males the x and y chromosome the x and y chromosome right the x and y chromosome they are not same the sex chromosomes they are not same x is having different genes y is having different gene so x is making a different linkage group y is making a different linkage group so that is why in the case of human males total 24 linkage groups are present okay total 24 linkage groups are present understood sure are you sure okay done so now the another important topic you people are lucky that you don't get the numericals on the basis of this topic but that's interesting now the student of morgan 
Alfred Sturdy went. You should remember the name. He was very smart, right? Morgan was working on the Morgan was working on this linkage, and as per Morgan, if the distance between two genes it is more, there are more chances that they will get separated during recombination. So linkage is inversely proportional to the distance. Now Alfred Sturdy went was like that. I can use this recombination frequency. If we know that at what frequency recombination can occur, we can simply tell the distance between the genes. Like let's say, if I am saying that recombination frequency is one percent, so Alfred Sturdy went was saying that the distance between the two genes is also one centi morgan. He used centi morgan as the unit. Centi morgan. And how to write centi morgan? C small m capital. So centi morgan we can also call it as map unit M U, right? We can also call it as map unit M U. So Alfred Sturdy went. Who's he? He's the student of. He was the student of Thomas Hunt Morgan. So what he did? He used the frequency of recombination, right? Frequency of recombination. Recombination frequency between genes pairs on the same chromosome. That is something important. You cannot consider right two different chromosomes for that recombination frequency. Of course not. You have to consider the same chromosome. Like let's say if I have A, if I have B, and I'm saying that these two genes they are having a recombination frequency of forty percent. So as per Thomas Hunt Morgan, the distance between two is forty centi morgan, or it will be forty map units. Right, it will be forty centi morgan, or it will be forty map units. Got it? Right, 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 right. So he used the frequency of recombination between the genes on same chromosome as a measure of distance between genes and mapped their position on the chromosome. So he gave that genetic map, linkage map, or also known as the chromosome map. Right, he gave that concept of. genetic map chromosome map linkage map whatever you want to call it you can so it is based on what on the re uh, recombination frequency is that clear is that clear so 1% recombination is directly proportional to the distance between them understood Right, so with the help of it, he mapped their position. So one centi morgan, one recombination frequency is equals to one centi morgan or one map unit. Fine, one centi morgan or one map unit. Clear, clear. So, but ye one point that you need to remember is that recombination frequency. This is something very important. Please note down that recombination frequency cannot be. Cannot be more than fifty percent. It can be equal to or less than fifty percent, but it can never be right. This is a fact, bache. Okay, what is it? It is a fact. Arey. Fine. Wait. See. Now it's working. Okay. So it is. It cannot be more than fifty percent. It can be equal to or less than fifty percent. So let's say if there is a question and they are mentioning that recombination frequency is sixty-three percent. Incorrect. It is. It can never. It will never be uh, more than fifty percent. Recombination frequency is always less than fifty percent. Like if you have thousand individuals, see, still you can see that five hundred are uh, individuals are showing parental combination and five hundred individuals are showing non-parental combination. But you can never say that sixty six hundred students are six uh, hundred uh, offsprings are showing non-parental combination and four hundred as parental. No, never. It is not going to exist. It is not at all possible. Okay, it is not at all possible. Fine. Okay. Sure. Done, bache. 
so this is about the genetic map as well so uh, that's it that's all and uh, before starting the pedigree and the chromosomal disorder let's talk about the sex determination so can you tell me about the any other topic which we have mixed uh, sorry which we have missed first of all let's talk about the sex determination then mutations are also there right pedigree analysis and everything is there so tell me what about the energy finished ma'am hey now what about the energy finished ma'am chalo so write down your homework write down your homework and it is sex limited characters and sex influenced characters you are going to tell me the meaning of sex limited characters or sex influenced characters or you wait for next 20 minutes i will explain it it's your choice what do you, what do you want me to do yes what do you want me to do ava wow. anuradha you joined the session very late and you said that you have high energy level ha huh? chalo it's okay it's fine guys see we still can finish it we can finish it and i think we should right i think we should what do you think right that's your homework sex limited and sex influence trait we will discuss it hana let's finish this chapter samiksha is right let's chit chat for 1 to 2 minutes and then let's start the next topic that is sex determination no i think we should finish it sex determination will hardly take 10 minutes right and then you have uh, the mutations mutations are going to take time it will take 15 to 20 minutes and then uh, for pedigree analysis another 20 minutes and the chapter will be over so it depends upon you right it depends upon you you tell me what do you want what do you want okay so answer few questions of mine that recombination frequency is always yes recombination frequency is always please answer it is less than or equals to 50% it can never be it can never be more than 50% very good so how to calculate the recombination frequency i told you na see i told you about the recombination frequency that we can use the recombination frequency to check the distance but can you tell me how to check how to calculate the recombination frequency anyone how to calculate the recombination frequency anyone please anyone any idea it's very simple how to check the recombination frequency very good samriya it is total recombinants total recombinants divided by total individuals because it is the percentage right so obviously multiply it with 100 and you will get the percentage recombination frequency percentage of the recombinants basically understood sure okay chalo one more example if uh, let's say if in a test cross 90% of the progeny is like parents so rest of the progeny will be रिकॉम्बिनेंट ठीक है सो लिंकेज ग्रुप क्लियर लिंकेज मैप डन ओके चलो आई लास्ट यू वन क्वेश्चन वन मोर क्वेश्चन राइट सो ए एंड बी आई गिव यू वन न्यूमेरिकल 
okay a and b is equals to five map units five map units means five centimorgan uh, b and c is equals to three map units you have to tell me the order of i, I told you now that this distance can also be used right we can use the recombination frequency to tell the distance between two genes and by knowing the distance we can also arrange that genes on a chromosome right because ultimately they are present in a linear order so a and b is having five map units b and c is having a distance of three map units and a and c is having a distance of two map units so can you just tell me the sequence of genes present on the chromosome again a very simple question can you just tell me the sequence of genes present on the chromosome yes bachi i'm telling you you uh, i'm asking the sequence 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 of gene what should be the sequence of gene obviously see a and b a and b five map units okay they have maximum distance and b and c is 3 a and c is 2 so the sequence is a c b right so the sequence is a c b so you are going to get such simple questions for your exam trust me right you people are going to get very simple question for your exam okay chalo so now let's talk about the sex determination and that's your homework sex limited characters and sex influenced characters this is what you are going to answer me okay so sex determination this is the topic so bachche you know about the chromosomes isn't it right you know about the type of chromosomes that we have isn't it you know about the type of chromosomes that we have allosomes are there and autosomes are there you know that autosomes they control the normal body character right the somatic characters basically okay that is the right word right these are the these they are going to control our somatic characters but when you talk about the allosomes what are they they are the sex chromosomes and bachche the genes that are present on these sex chromosomes their inheritance is studied as the as what sex linked inheritance right so we have the allosomes we have the autosomes clear bachche clear 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 so you know that even many plants many insects many humans they have right allosomes for the sex determination and specifically we talk about the x chromosome right specifically we, what we discuss we talk about the x chromosome so in the ncert there is one name given henkin do you know this do you know about henkin henkin in 1891 henkin in 1891 he traced right he traced the nuclear structure all through the spermatogenesis in the insect what he traced he traced the nuclear structure all through all through the spermatogenesis in the insect and he observed right what he observed that 50% of the insects they are getting that structure and 50% of them they are not getting it do you remember that 50% of the insects or the sperm they received the structure right 50% they did not receive it so what was it it was the x chromosome right it was the x chromosome and you know why in the case of insect it was there do you know that why in the case of insect it was there yes 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 bachche do you know that because in majority of insect x o type of sex determination is there what type of sex determination in, is there in majority of insect x o type of right in majority of insects bachche drosophila is, is is an insect but still it is having the human like sex determination so see in the case of females it is going to be xx females are going to be xx so this is going to decide the female sex and you know that 
when the gametes formed by female they are also same so in that case females are homogametic what are they they are homogametic now in the case of males it is xo o means empty nothing is there so 50% of the male gametes will have x 50% of the male gametes will not have x means this o means this zero now when bache when this female gamete is fused with this female gamete so you will get female insect but when this female gamete it will get o oh, we are going to get male insect so that's how the sex is determined right it depends upon these chromosomes clear bache it depends upon these chromosome so some sperms are having x chromosomes right when they will uh, fertilize the egg having x chromosome they will form female but some of them they are having o right what do they have they are having this o right so o determines sex of maleness understood o is going to determine the sex of maleness understood tell me this x x x type clear 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 so that's how see so you can also write it in a different way just let's say females 2a plus xx 2a is showing us autosomes 2a is showing us autosome which chromosomes they are they are autosomes and males males are what they are 2a plus xo so now look at the gametes you know that four gametes will be there so it will be a plus x because we know that even this will separate we have 22 pairs of autosomes but in the uh, basically 22 pairs of autosomes we have so in the gametes we are just having 22 now 22 autosomes and one is that sex chromosome so females are homogametic right all all the gametes are going to be same all the gametes are going to be same now in the case of males it will be a plus o it will be a plus o it will be a plus x it will be a plus x right so 50 percent of the male gametes they have x chromosome the sex chromosome 50 percent of the male gametes they do not have right so if these two will fuse we will get male if these two will fuse we will get male clear any doubt so it is in the case of insects like your cockroach cockroach is the part of your syllabus now so you should know about the type of sex determination there so cockroach grasshopper they are the example clear bache they are the example done sure 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 now let's talk about the humans so in the case of humans and drosophila that's what we have xx and xy type of sex determination so i really don't think that we need to explain it in detail so again here homogametic females right and heterogametic males will be there right bache so it is the male that is going to decide the sex of the baby in the case of humans right because females they are going to form the same gametes females they are going to form the same gametes clear bache so humans are the example and even in case of drosophila that's what you are going to see fine even in the case of drosophila xx xy type of sex determination is there okay xx xy type of sex determination is they are even in the case of drosophila in drosophila we also talk about the uh, genic balance theory do you know that do you know that yes 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 do you know that in the case of female drosophila we also talk about the genic uh, genic balance theory anyone very good samriya excellent so bache in the case of drosophila no doubt this xy scene is there but we also talk about the genic balance theory right basically in the case of males this y this y chromosome is not so active it is not so active in sex determination but it is a uh, required because it is 
going to decide the maleness so basically what we see the ratio right the sex ratio it is decided on the basis of ratio of autosomes and the allosomes it is something different here right the number of x chromosome and number of sets of right the number of x chromosomes and number of set of autosomes are going to decide the sex right so y is required no doubt because it is going to decide that maleness but basically that's how we are going to approach like if the ratio is one female if the ratio is 0.5 then it is going to be the male the sterile male okay Khankhya, the ratio is going to be the sterile male right otherwise it will be intersex if the ratio is in between 0.1 and 0.1x so i really don't think that we yeah need to discuss it in detail so that's it that's all so number of x over a if it is equals to 1 then it will be female and in the case of males x over a is equals to 0.5 right and if it is xy then there will be the fertile male and even in drosophila if instead of y that male got xo that male will be sterile so y is very important for the maleness fine y is very important for the maleness Akansha is asking me how to read the NCRT for physics. But first of all, I am a biology educator. Right. And all I can say is for reading the NCRT, you need to understand the concept first. Okay. If you are aware of the concept, then uh, NCRT reading is easy. But firstly, you have to attend the classes. You have to make the notes. Right. After solving all that numericals, you can think of reading the NCRT. Fine. So now next is... Next is... ZW, ZZ type of sex determination. So can you just tell me the examples here? Examples are most important, bache. Yes, example is the most important thing here. So anyone in the class, ZW, Z2. So here females are heterogametic, right? It's female and ZZ is the male. Males are homogametic. Clear, bache? Males are homogametic. So it is in the case of birds right where are you going to see it in the case of birds okay okay so it is in the case of birds even in the case of reptiles even in the case of fishes that done and one is z o z z z o z z so here this is female male so it is in the case of butterfly and moth so that's important right bache that is important any doubt right it is the simplest topic that we can discuss ever isn't it isn't it yes bache okay so next is bache haploid diploid sex determination so actually it is the sex type of sex determination which is there in the honeybee okay even in yellow uh, even in wasp even in the ants you are going to see such type of sex determination it is in the case of wasp it is in the case of ants it is in the case of honeybee haploid diploid type of sex determination first of all let's take the example of honeybee so you know that they used to live in the colonies they are social insects right they used to live in the colonies they are social insects so we are going to talk about the queen there we are going to talk about the worker bees there and even the drone right even the drone so when you people talk about the queen queen is deployed even worker bees are deployed it is the drone which is haploid but but here the important point is that queen is fertile queen is deployed queen feeds on that royal jelly queen is fertile worker bees they are also uh, uh, deployed but they are sterile and male is fertile but male is haploid do you know why is it so because the male male grows parthenogenetically right male grows parthenogenetically now what is the meaning of parthenogenesis 
right one word is parthenocarpy that we discuss in the case of plants when we say that fruit is formed without fertilization right ovary is converted to fruit without fertilization but here it is the parthenogenesis so basically the haploid egg right it will be grown into an adult without fertilization right the haploid egg it will be grown into an adult without fertilization so that's why the genetic content here is haploid only right it is haploid only like in the case of honeybee queen is having 32 chromosomes right how many chromosomes are there 32 and male is going to have the drawn is going to have 16 chromosomes only so this is the haploid deployed sex determination right so two sets are present in female only one set is there in the males right so male is going to have 16 because it has grown parthenogenetically without fertilization only by mitosis and female is going to have 16 female is going to have 36 uh, 32 chromosomes okay so this is the haploid deployed sex determination so but your next topic what do you want to what do you want me to start pedigree analysis first or the mutation first right another one hour and the chapter will be over so who's going to stay with me who's going to stay with me because i i know see now only 30 plus students are there what you people are doing see in next one hour we can finish this chapter and i think we should give it a try what say I think we should give it a try. Tell me, are you there? In next one hour, we can finish it. So let's finish it now. Let's finish it. So the next topic that we need to start is mutations. But you know, na, mutation, the concept was given by Yes, the concept wa was given by Hugo de Vries, right? When he was working on, can you just tell me the name everyone? Quick guys, yes. Can you just tell me the name? Hugo de Vries, he worked on Hugo de Vries. He worked on Oinothera Lemarkiana. He worked on Oinothera Lemarkiana. Mm -hmm. Right, and that Oinothera Lamarckiana is basically the evening primrose. What's that? That is the evening primrose. So we, he worked on it. He gave the concept of mutation. As per him, mutations, as per him, mutations are the source of evolution. Right, so mutations are heritable, heritable, right, discontinuous variations. And they are the source of evolution. Can you relate it with evolution? Yes, students. Can you relate it with evolution? Yes, he was the one who gave the concept of, yes, but he was the one who gave the concept of mutations now, right? That sudden changes, sudden changes or alteration in DNA sequence, which results in change in the genotype and phenotype. So if I have to explain it, what are they? They are the sudden changes in DNA sequences right they are the sudden changes in dna sequences that can alter obviously the genotype and the phenotype of an organism what can they alter the genotype and phenotype of an organism that is what yes students that is what mutations are isn't it that is what mutations are so it is the sudden change in the DNA sequence that can alter the genotype and the phenotype of an organism. That is what mutation is. Clear, bache? Clear, clear, clear. So always remember the name of the Hugo de Vries and with this also revise the saltation. Do you remember saltation, single step, large mutation? Uh -huh. Vazim Bhatt, amazing dedication. So where were you? Now I think you are free, eh, na? that's why you are here. Do you know students, Vazim sir is having a good news to share. You can ask him as well. Do you know he's having a good news to share? Ask him. Oh my God, I was busy, I know. Are ask him Anuradha, bahut kamal ki khabar hai. 
बहुत कमाल की खबर है ही इज गोइंग टू गिव यू द पार्टी सो माय क्लास वाज गोइंग फाइन एंड सडनली हु कैम वजीम सर म्यूटेशंस 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 ओके स्पैमर है ना एक्चुअली इज अ स्पैमर सी इवन स्टूडेंट्स दे अंडरस्टैंड इज अ स्पैमर चलो गाइस सो नाउ लेट्स क्विकली लेट्स फिनिश इट वी नीड अनदर वन आर एंड वील फिनिश द चैप्टर ओके सो वन आर वन मोर आर You know, earlier I was uh, thinking to end the session, but I just need one more hour, and then everything will be over. And we have discussed everything in detail. So, Azim sir, learn this thing from me. Imagine biology is too vast. Still, we discuss each and everything in detail. So, guys, we need another one hour. So now, please focus here. So, sudden changes in the DNA sequence that can alter, right? That can alter the genotype and phenotype. How come genotype and phenotype? What is DNA? You know that DNA is having the nitrogenous basis. If there will be, and that nitrogenous basis will give us the information to form the amino acid sequence. Means that mRNA and that mRNA will form the protein. So, if there will be any change in that DNA sequence. right if there will be any change in the dna sequence obviously the protein that is going to form it will also change isn't it and that is what mutations are okay so before starting the types of mutations let's talk about the mutagens chalo let me write it properly okay firstly let's talk about the mutagens and then we will discuss the types of mutation right so be ready everyone write down mutagens what are mutagens can you tell me what are mutagens yes anyone in the class what are mutagens the agents that cause mutation right agents that cause mutations they are called mutagens they can be anything right it can be the physical agent it can be the chemical agent or it can be the biological agent so can you quote any example of the biological agent which can cause the mutation anyone can you just give me the any any example of the biological agent where you think that yes this biological agent can cause the mutation anyone 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 biological agent means something living of course you can take any example the viruses the cancer causing viruses what they used to do they used to change our dna sequence that is also the mutation isn't it you can take the example of uh, uh, from biotechnology you can take the example of agrobacterium tumefacin right you can take the example of agrobacterium tumefacin and that agrobacterium tumefacin also used to cause cancer in the dicot plants that is also the example of biological agent isn't it in the case of plants what so mutagens are the chemicals that used to cause the mutation isn't it so we have many many mutagens like chemical mutagens are there as i said in physical so firstly let's start with the physical one right let's start with the physical one and they are very common mutagens so physical mutagens they include the temperature so do you think that temperature can cause mutations yes do you think that temperature can cause mutation tell me of course yes by breaking the hydrogen bond right bachche high temperature can cause mutation by breaking hydrogen bonds in that dna so of course it is possible right of course it is possible isn't it isn't it so next is what next is what uv rays okay x rays gamma rays beta rays so uv rays your ultraviolet radiations right so these ultraviolet radiations bachche these ultraviolet radiations they can form thymine dimers you know na thymine do you know thymine this point is important students Do you know thymine? Thymine T T. 
सो इट कैन फॉर्म द डायमर्स ऑफ थाइमिन थाइमिन एंड थाइमिन दे कैन ज्वाइन विद ईच अदर ओके दे कैन ज्वाइन विद ईच अदर सो इट कैन कॉज द डायमर फॉर्मेशन एंड स्पेशली योर अल्ट्रा वायलेट रेडिएशन सी राइट दे कैन स्पेशली कॉज दिस थाइमर डायमर फॉर्मेशन देन बच्चे एक्स रेज आर देर गामा रेज आर देर राइट एक्स रेज आर देर गामा रेज आर देर इवन बीटा रेज आर देर so you know that they are basically the ionizing radiation they are basically the ionizing radiation so this is what you can ask from your physics teacher from your chemistry teacher okay so ionizing radiation what are they they are the ionizing radiation so you know that even they can cause the they can cause the mutation so can you give me any example here yes can you give me any example here any important example here when it comes to the mutations any useful example anyone anyone yes any useful example that you can give me that you can give me here so basically bachche if you remember ms swami nathan right do you remember ms swami nathan sir ms swami nathan the father of green revolution in india he used the gamma rays right to induce mutation so mutations are sometimes useful as well right so ms swaminathan he used the gamma rays right he used the gamma rays to obtain the good varieties of the crop he induced the mutation right bachche so he formed that uh, uh, you know that uh, sharbati sonora we used to discuss to induce mutations and what he got sharbati okay so nora we used to discuss it in strategies for enhancement in food production right now it is deleted but this is just one example that mutations are also useful so he used these radiations to form the better crop variety so one example given here is sharbati sonora so you have to check that what is it is it a uh, like a, was it a rice wheat what is it this is what you have to check okay this is what you have to check and do you, have you ever heard about beedle and totem yes do you know about beedle and totem beedle and totem right so basically what they did like this is another example do you know neurospora neurospora is considered as the drosophila of plant kingdom neurospora the drosophila of plant kingdom so many experiments were conducted on neurospora bachche right to study obviously these uh, genetic mechanism okay so with the help of uv rays or x rays uh, wild neurospora it was mutated right and they observed you know different different mechanism so let's not discuss that in detail okay so that is how these chemical agents these mutagens sometimes they are useful as well fine bachche they are useful as well so next is chemical yes next is chemical mutagens next is what chemical mutagens so one example is of nitrous acid i hope you all know about it one example is of nitrous acid i hope you know about it anyone in the class nitrous acid right so it can cause deamination it can convert c into u it can change c into u it can cause deamination so c it can change the bases right it is responsible for that type of that type of mutation nitrous acid it can change your a into x it is nothing it is another uh, base hypoxanthin it is some unusual base okay and these unusual base they also pair unusually sorry it's not x it is h x is xanthin okay so it is hypoxanthin so c into u right a into h right bachche other than that we have the alkyl alkylating agents also so what is the haan ji bachche what is the role of alkylating agents it is even useful in chemistry what is the role of alkylating agents they are going to cause the methylation and ethylation of nitrogenous bases what will they do methylation and ethylation of nitrogenous bases mm yellow mustard gas is the example
येल्लो मस्टर्ड गैस इज द एग्जाम्पल येल्लो मस्टर्ड गैस और नो बचे दैट एग्जाम्पल आई हैव टू चेक आई रियली डोंट रिमेंबर दिस एग्जाम्पल एग्जैक्टली दैट इज सम गैस आई डोंट नो वेदर इट इज येल्लो मस्टर्ड और नाइट्रोजन गैस नाइट्रोजन मस्टर्ड आई डोंट रिमेंबर राइट दैट आई हैव टू चेक ओके बचे देयर आर सर्टन बेस एनालॉग्स एज वेल डू यू नो द मीनिंग ऑफ बेस एनालॉग्स Yes, there are certain base analogs as well. Like at the place of thymine, let's say if in DNA at the place of thymine you have another base, right? Base analogs. What is the meaning of analog? What is the meaning of analog? Yes, bache. What is the meaning of? What is the meaning of analog? You know na? You know na? Even in you can relate it. Analogy when we discuss what is analogy. like there are two different things from the origin but they are having kind of same function right so base analogous like i'll give you one example five bromo uracil can replace it is a very famous example it can replace thymine right it can replace thymine in dna and 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 five bromo uracil and then see okay fine it can replace the thymine acceptable you know that thymine is going to form two hydrogen bonds with adenine but this 5 bromo uracil it is not going to pair with adenine instead of that it will pair with guanine so 5 bromo uracil can replace thymine in dna and then pair with guanine okay then pair with guanine clear bachche so that is the example of base analogs fine that is the example of base analogs clear so let's quickly revise these mutagens chemicals that are going to cause mutation and you know that there are sudden changes in the dna right and they are obviously heritable means they will pass one from one generation to the another understood so now let's talk about the types of mutation bache of uh, then okay so let's talk about the types of mutation See, even I am tired, but okay, we have to finish this chapter today. See, one is genomatic mutation. Yes, genomatic is the word, and another is your gene mutation. These are two different things. Do you know that? These are two different things. genomatic mutation and the gene mutation these are two different things oh and yes this genomatic mutation it comes under the chromosomal mutation so when you talk about the mutations at the level of chromosome only so these are the chromosomal mutations and when you talk about that point mutation when there is a change in the bases then it is going to be your gene mutation so chromosomal mutation is further having two types bache right chromosomal mutation is further having two types so chromosomal mutations they are the one when there is a change in the structure and the number of chromosome right when there is a change in structure and number of chromosome if let's say structure is old uh, structure is altered structural changes if let's say number is altered right there is a change in the number so we have two things here the genomatic mutation and the chromosomal aberration right you have heteroploidy which is also known as genomatic mutation and bache another one is chromosomal aberration so whenever there is the word aberration it is related to students the structural changes okay it is related to what structural changes so chromosomal aberration means there is a change in structure of chromosome right it can be deletion it can be inversion it can be duplication anything and when there is a change in when there is a change in number of chromosome so that's something very important and many disorders are on the basis of this change in number of chromosome isn't it isn't it and when it comes to the gene mutation you know that what do we have there substitution is there right what do we have there substitution is there frame shift mutation is there right so substitution it includes transition 
and transversion and another is frame shift mutation which includes of course the deletion addition isn't it so gene mutations but we will specifically discuss in molecular basis of inheritance as of now that's what we need to focus okay that's what we need to focus done but yes everyone do let me know in the chat section is it clear or if you have any doubt do let me know Do you have any doubt here? See, it's very simple and it is the genomatic mutation. Genomatic means when there is a change in the chromosome number. Okay, when there is change in the chromosome number, then it is the genomatic mutation. Isn't it? What is it? It is the genomatic mutation. But here you talk about two things, euploidy and aneuploidy. Right, our maximum disorders are on the basis of this. When it is the euploidy, euploidy. But here you are going to talk about the addition or deletion of complete set of chromosomes. What are you going to discuss here? Yes. What are you going to discuss here? The deletion of, yes, but you are going to discuss about the deletion, the deletion of the chromosome either loss or addition of the sets of chromosomes so when there is a change when there is a change in sets of chromosome right that change can be because of anything it can be because of loss or gain it can be because of loss or gain of of sets right just say for an example let's say if any organism if any organism is deployed so let's say if one set is deleted right one entire set is deleted that will not remain the same progeny even right so that will be mono right then can can i use the word monoploidy that only one set is there only one set is there it is the monoploidy only one set of chromosome is present yes or no so let's say and when will it be the polyploidy when more than two sets of chromosomes are present right more than two sets of chromosome chromosomes are present then it is what it is the polyploidy so you know that here you have many types right you can talk about the uh, hexaploidy heptaploidy even the a triploidy so mainly we talk about the hexaploid hexaploidy do you remember this yes it is important so polyploidy means presence of more than two sets of chromosomes so it can be triploidy tetraploidy penta hexa anything it can be clear bache clear bache so mainly we see polyploidy in the case of plants do you know that mainly we see polyploidy in the case of plants why because in the plant centriole is not there only pericentriolar material is there that will form spindle apparatus so at the time of separation of chromosomes now when there is that disjunction it is not proper right it is not proper the separation of chromosome is not proper okay so anything can be there and when you talk about this polyploidy remember one thing students that the even right when the sets they are even when the chromosome sets they are even that particular plant will be fertile and if it is odd that is going to be sterile clear bache so polyploidy plants with even number of sets they are fertile are fertile right they'll be flowering they'll form seed the wheat that we used to eat that is also hexaploid clear bache clear bache that is also hexaploid and if if the sets if polyploidy plants if they have with odd number of sets if they are having odd number of sets then they'll be sterile 
प्लेयर बच्चे देन दे विल बी स्टेराइल सो दे आर फर्टाइल दे रिप्रोड्यूस दे दे फॉर्म सीड्स बट द अनदर वन दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू क्लियर एंड बच्चे यू नो इवन वी डिस्कस सो आई विल नॉट एंटर इन दैट डिटेल ऑटो पॉलीप्लॉयडी एलो पॉलीप्लॉयडी ऑटो एलो पॉलीप्लॉयडी Like sometimes, बच्चे repetition is of the same sets of chromosome, right? When there is a repetition of the right same genomic set, like triple A, four times A, it is like that. Like let's say diploid it was, it will become triploid. So same set is getting repeated, right? Like in the case of wheat, we used to see this. In the case of rice, we used to see this, right? So then it is the auto polyploidy. What is it? It is the auto polyploidy. Not in the wheat, but in the maize. Yes, in the maize mainly. Clear, bache. So allo polyploidy when other sets are repeated, right? Let's say if it was A B, it will become A A B B like this. right and auto polyploid uh, like a a a b b b that is how the repetition is right that is how the repetition is that's it so if same sets are getting repeated same type of sets are getting repeated auto polyploidy right bachche right so it can be allo polyploidy when there is the hybridization between two different species right triticale is the example of allo polyploidy clear triticale is the example of allo polyploidy so if there is the repetition of uh, you know uh one set of like you can say that more sets are there in diploid state then it is auto polyploidy so this is what we need to focus triticale right this is what we are going to discuss and then we will talk about the aneuploidy so do you know about the triticale this example is given in ncert do you know about the triticale triticale triticum Estevum, your wheat, the wheat that we used to eat, it is also the polyploid, and then it is the C K, right? It is a cereal, it is a rye basically. Do you know that it is a rye basically? So this one is because this is also the hexaploid. So six x is equals to forty two, and here two x is equals to fourteen, right? Two x is equals to fourteen. okay so initially we will get triticale so if triticale is tetraploid right if triticale is tetraploid that is 28 then it is not uh, it is not fertile then will colchicin treatment it will get doubled so it will become 56 number of chromosomes will be 56 so it will be 8x and in that case it is fertile so you have to remember the example of right i know it is uh, uh, even but still it is sterile okay okay so this is the example that you need to remember understood this is the example that you need to remember it is atx <sighs> okay done okay bache next is about the aneuploidy and you know about the aneuploidy there are many disorders which are on the basis of that aneuploidy so bache when there is the addition or loss when there is the addition or loss of one or two chromosomes in a set right one or two chromosome in a set now the point is in a set like here the set was getting repeated diploid was becoming triploid triploid was becoming tetraploid tetraploid was becoming pentaploid but here in aneuploidy what was the is thing bache that there is the loss of or addition of chromosome in a set of chromosome right in a set of chromosome jaise we have the homologous pair of chromosomes na let's say one is added the best example is of trisomy 21 so let's discuss that so when you talk about the addition it is trisomy 2n plus 1 when one chromosome is added right jaise in the case of human I, if i have to give you the example do you remember bachche down syndrome do you remember down syndrome there are many syndromes down syndrome edward patau but let's focus on down syndrome which is because of trisomy 21 means there is an extra copy of chromosome 21 so usually we used to have two chromosomes 
21 but here we will have three three 21 chromosomes one two and three so it is because of the non-dense junction when this, this junction is not proper right so trisomy it is because of the addition 2n plus 1 right so addition of one chromosome in one set addition of one chromosome in one set so this is telling it so it is trisomy it is trisomy is that clear is that clear so but it can be double trisomy also 2n plus 1 plus 1 so this is important why because it is given in ncrt so now let's say there is the addition of two chromosomes addition of two chromosomes in two different sets right because it is 2n plus 1 plus 1 now so it is in two different sets like let's say one addition is there in cro with chromosome 21 one is with their chromosome 20, uh, 30 like this and then comes the tetrasomy tetrasomy is 2n plus 2 that is tetrasomy so in tetrasomy bachi, what is going to happen yes in tetrasomy what is going to happen so see trisomy 2n plus 1 2n plus 1 plus 1 double trisomy 2n plus 2 tetrasomy it is okay 2n plus 2 tetrasomy it is so two two extra chromosomes are added in one set okay they are added in one set fine so this is about the aneuploidy when there is the addition now, bache, when there is the deletion, right, when there is what? When there is the deletion, jase, you have monosomy, 2n minus 1, right? Like we humans are having 46 chromosomes. So best example is Turner's syndrome, Turner's syndrome, right? So here it is 44 plus XO, remember this? So there is one less X chromosome. So it is the, yes, but it is the Turner's syndrome. Turner's syndrome means, right, one, there is a loss of chromosome in one set. Isn't it? There is a loss of chromosome in, loss of chromosome in one set. Clear? So next is, but double monosomy. So I'm not going to explain it. I hope you understand the meaning now. It is related to the deletion, but the deletion is from two different chromosome. And then it will be the nullisomy, right? When one set is removed, it is 2n minus 2. Clear? When it is 2n minus 2. Loss of two homologous chromosomes. Clear, bache? So this aneuploidy is because of the non-disjunction. Means chromosomes are failed to separate during meiosis, right? So the gamete which will receive one extra chromosome. That will result in the addition, like let's say trisomy tetrasomy depends and if we, and another gamete it will miss one chromosome that will be for the deletion monosomy nullisomy it can be so aneuploidy is because of the just a minute bache. so aneuploidy is because of the non-disjunction of chromosome okay the chromosome sets are not separated properly understood the sets of chromosomes they are not separated properly understood clear 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 yes bache. so next is the chromosomal abrasion next is the chromosomal abrasions so bache, chromosomal abrasion means when there is the structural abnormality okay like uh, deletion a part of chromosome is deleted means that particular genes they are also missing right right the deletion can be there so when it comes to the deletion especially the terminal one okay terminal one so you have the example of right if let's say the ends of chromosomes they got deleted so obviously you, let's say if it is having one two three four five six so you are left with only two three four five six so the gene is missing so this is the deletion so for deletion the best example is cridu chat syndrome fine cridu chat syndrome do you know that it is because of the deletion yes but 
it is because of the deletion cry do chat syndrome okay so it is the example when there is the deletion of short arm right when there is the deletion of short arm of fifth chromosome right it's 5q or 5p 5q or 5p 5p or 5q for the short arm which symbol do we use 5p or 5q exactly clear bache so it is because of the deletion so if it is it is an example of terminal deletion means ends are deleted sometimes bache the deletion can be from in between then you will use the word intercalary right it's not so important the example is not given in ncert so i am not writing it here done i am not writing it here done bache then comes the inversion inversion means the sequence will get inverted right the sequence will get inverted that is the inversion right bache that is the inversion let's say the chromosome segment they break they rejoin but in an inverted way so inversion is having two things para centric or pericentric see when the word is pericentric peri i i is the word pericentric i is the word means it include centric say from centric you have to remember centromere it includes the centromere right pericentric means it includes the centromere now let's say that's a chromosome inversion is going to take place and the centromere is involved this part got deleted and rejoined so now it will become this so obviously it will change the amino acid sequence it will change everything right it will change everything so it is the pericentric is the one in which inverted segment it includes uh, it includes uh, centromere and paracentric it does not include centromere simple okay 1 2 3 4 5 so inversion will be there let's if it become 4 1 2 3 5 4 6 understood pericentric paracentric fine right bache so next is the duplication bar i character it is because of the duplication let's say one chromosome is having the sequence a b c d e so let's say e is deleted this is one uh, this is a pair of homologous chromosome so here there is the uh, duplication of one particular sequence okay there is the duplication of one particular sequence clear bache clear 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 understood sure so this it is the bar i character right where uh, the eyes are right the smaller than the they are narrower than the normal eye shape clear so what we need to remember here is this is important please note down this one is important and that is the translocation right translocation is important for your neat what do we have we have translocation right bachche two type of translocation is there simple and reciprocal simple and reciprocal sometimes we compare translocation with the crossing over actually it's not like the translocate to move let's say you have one chromosome you have another chromosome so these are non homologous chromosomes you are not allowed to consider homologous chromosomes no non homologous so a part of it let's say it is having a b right c d e it is having 1 2 3 4 so now part of it it will move from this to this chromosome and here there will be the addition of a and b it is translocation to move from one chromosome to another right to move from one chromosome to another so seg one segment of the chromosome it will break it will join to the ends of another chromosome and it should be non homologous so it is simple translocation right it is simple translocation so that it will get deleted from this side and it will join here now which is reciprocal one the example here is very important you might know about cml you might know about cml philadelphia chromosome anyone in the class cml chronic myeloid leukemia chronic myeloid leukemia do you remember it 
chronic myeloid leukemia cml right so it is because of the reciprocal translocation right it is because of what it is because of the reciprocal translocation of chromosome of the segments in between chromosome 9 and chromosome 22 right in between chromosome 9 and chromosome 22 right but so it is the philadelphia chromosome this is important for neat it is philadelphia chromosome what's that it is the philadelphia chromosome it is important for neat so if it is a reciprocal one so let's say this is one chromosome this is another chromosome so let's say this part this part of this chromosome one two is deleted it will attach here and a part of it will be deleted it will attach here so this is the reciprocal translocation right one part will move to this its part will move to this so cml is the example that's important right cml is the example that's important so rest is but substitution right gene mutation in includes substitution so where there is the substitution of base right transition means when purine is replaced by purine pyrimidine is replaced by pyrimidine transversion is when purine is replaced by pyrimidine pyrimidine is replaced by purine like sequel cell anemia in sequel cell anemia i told you gag will become gug right so basically a is replaced by u so it is the example of transversion because purine is replaced by pyrimidine okay okay purine is replaced by pyrimidine got it and but this frame shift mutation which is also known as gibberish mutation it is gibberish basically gibberish mutation even i am sleepy so that we will discuss in the molecular basis of inheritance okay that we will discuss in the molecular basis of inheritance understood so this is all about the mutation and next part is the pedigree analysis and then the chromosomal disorder and the chapter will be over so are you interested in reading it or you want me to schedule the special class for it mr papa hey at the red brain she is not interested in you she is mine okay mr papa you are not even going to get the girl you are not even going to get the mbbs seat you are not going to get even the good marks right don't worry you will be successful in life you can do some business or stuff if if you'll stay focused trust me you're not even going to get girl neither marks nor selection nothing for sure so you want me to complete here i don't mind pedigree analysis you know that here in simple words if i have to discuss we talk about the inheritance of a particular trait right we can pick up any trait and in the family itself right we will check its inheritance that what type of trait it is so it is the analysis of trait in a several of generation of family it is the pedigree analysis right right so we are going to represent it over the generation so obviously a tree will be formed isn't it a tree will be formed isn't it that is what we discuss when we talk about the pedigree analysis so before moving forward let me tell you about certain things autosomal or sex linked disorders autosomal or sex linked disorders see i'll use very simple language and yes i will schedule special class for this pedigree analysis too okay okay so you please listen to me very carefully autosomal disorders it's not only about the disorder we can trace the inheritance of any of the any of the character but mainly obviously we go for the disorder we want to check it in the family history so obviously proper you know family tree will be uh, formed here in this pedigree analysis and uh, there are certain symbols that we use okay but before starting that part focus here one is the autosomal word another is the sex link so you know that we have total 23 pairs of chromosomes 22 pairs and one pair i'm repeating this part a lot hai na? because it is important they are the autosomes fine they are the autosomes clear bache? one pair is the is of sex chromosomes that is of allosome so bache, if any gene right if we are talking about the inheritance of a gene 
if we are talking about the inheritance of a gene and that gene is located on the autosome then it will be the autosomal disorder and if you are talking about the gene and who at the gene which is located on sex chromosome it will be sex linked disorder it will be sex linked inheritance okay it will be sex linked inheritance these two words clear yes bache these two words clear sure sure so there are certain symbols that we use firstly let's start with the ncert so one question can definitely come from the symbol part itself so if it is a square that's a male if it is a circle that's a female if this is the shape sex is unspec uh, unspecified if we are coloring if we are bubbling that male part okay female part sorry so it is showing that female is affected with a disorder basically we are using it to check the disorder no so female is affected with the disorder and then bache see when there is a line this line is showing the marriage or the mating this line is showing the marriage or the mating clear bache you can see here this line is showing the marriage and the mating if this is the case so i can simply say that female is affected with a disorder male is normal and when we draw it like this we are talking about their next generation means they are the parents okay and it is the it is their first generation it is their first generation so if this is the case so we can say that they have two daughters right they have two daughters so this is how we make this pedigree charts okay these family trees so now see they are mating they got married to another man so now see so this is their third generation so it is the that is how we trace the family history so as i said the single line is showing what it single line is showing bache mating so if two double lines are there if two double lines are there it is showing consanguineous mating means mating between relatives like if cousins are getting married okay if two lines are there it is showing mating between relatives means cousins are getting married so as i said parents above children below and birth order is from left to right so mcq can come from this part birth order is from left to right right it is from left to right not from right to left right not from right right to left it is left to right and then parents with male child affected with disease and here five unaffected offspring so this is about the symbols okay so here you can see extra symbols as well bache see affected with trait if that's the sign or even so it is means carried for the trait like if it is filled like this na so means the male and the female they are the carrier carrier specially for the autosomal trait if it is a circle it clearly indicates carrier for x linked trait this is mating this is consanguineous uh, consanguineous mating I, mating i told you already right pregnancy is shown by this p and it is showing disease, uh, deceased means dead okay and see this if zygotic di zygotic twins are there because in case of di zygotic twins even the sex can be different it can be same fraternal twins if it is monozygotic then you have to draw a line in between they are going to have same sex okay they are going to have same sex so this is showing divorce or separation miscarriage is also there so these are different different signs so see the number of children as i said from right it is it will be from left to right it will be from left to right okay okay so mainly four type of disorders we need to discuss one is autosomal another is x linked right another is x linked clear bache one is autosomal another is x linked see bache this topic it requires attention right this topic it actually require a lot of attention and i really think that you all are drained right including me so what can we do is ki i can keep a special class for this individual topic because i know this is the topic that you find difficult right see now even if you talk about the disorders na like down syndrome is there klinefelter syndrome is there you know the main causes isn't it because we really need one more hour to complete this topic in detail and uh, 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 this is all ncrt so even the screen is not working so we need the proper attention for this particular topic okay so we i can keep a schedule uh, i can schedule a special class specially for the disorders and the pedigree analysis rest everything we have completed in detail so you can simply follow the ncrt for that students 
okay you can yes you can simply follow the ncrt for that you can revise it from ncrt right and uh, about these disorders about these conditions i will discuss it with you right all the conditions are written here if you will focus so in detail i will discuss it with you right in a special class fine even the mcq practice is there so this is the coupon code that you have to use even if you are going to join the special class this is the coupon code that you have to use so bache it's like one more chapter is down so not tomorrow but day after tomorrow i will keep special class on pedigree analysis and the disorders down syndrome trisomy 21 klinefelter trisomy of x chromosome additional copy of x chromosome right turner syndrome means one x chromosome is missing right that's what we know so so somewhere we have revised it sickle cell anemia i have explained in detail phenyl ketonuria i have explained in detail we need to discuss the thalassemia and the cystic fibrosis and the chromosome number is very important right so there are few i think yes so special class will be a good way to revise it right so as of now i am ending it clear bachche as of now i am ending it so let's discuss it there and i am looking for good comments if this session helped you out right and if you really like my teaching so yes you have to write at least one good message for me i deserve it so rest i will share the pdf with you all and on 30th of december we are going to finish molecular basis of inheritance fine molecular basis of inheritance so good night take care thank you so much for